spelers van Nederlandse Loterij. Bedankt voor de ruim 168 miljoen die jullie bij elkaar hebben gespeeld. Voor sport en beweging. Voor Nederland. 168 miljoen. Spelers, bedankt. Niels en Eve gaan voor een lagere energierekening. En dat begint met isoleren. Glaswol, kitten, tochtstrips, uh, ander andersom. En dicht. Oh, ja, bam. Isolatie. Je krijgt er te warm van. Deur dicht. Mijn huis duurzaam maken. Ik kan het. Gamma. Tragitol. Snelle pijnstiller bij beginnende keelpijn. Het stilt snel de pijn en doodt bacteriën en virussen die keelpijn veroorzaken. In het oranje paarse doosje. A very good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. Fans of Short Track, we're in a splendid looking T11 Stadium for the second official day of the International Invitation Cup 2021. Let's say the official kickoff of this very, very important skating season, winter sports season coming up. My name is Nelson Valkenburg. Next to me, we have uh, Justin van Zutphen for the next two days. And Justin, this is a very important set of days and a very important set of competitions. This is uh, one of the last test races before uh, they head into the uh, World Cups, which are uh, uh, as well the qualifications for uh, Beijing, the Olympics. So a uh, real test case today to see uh, who is uh, ready for uh, racing. Ready for the Olympic season. And what you definitely do not want is, uh, let's say, a false start to your Olympic season and that you're chasing your tail all the way through to uh, at least February. Um, we've had a day of competitions yesterday, mainly uh, qualifications, but also a few very, very quick races. And let's say this field that they've assembled here for the uh, International uh, Invitation Cup is definitely one of the stronger fields we've seen. Yes, the only uh, teams who are missing uh, today or this weekend are the Polish people, uh, the skaters from uh, Russia, uh, and uh, uh, the Canadians, uh, they sent just a junior team now because uh, they didn't want to travel with the full team just due to COVID. But still one of the strongest uh, 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 setups in, uh, in the last years. And uh, COVID measures here in full place. This is why uh, the uh, grandstands aren't full. No fans allowed. You definitely do not want to impede one of the uh, skaters heading into uh, possibly an Olympic dream season. Uh, so all precautions taken so that nobody really, really is exposed. Obviously, we hope normality will resume soon enough. But for now, we're very, very grateful that we've got the, the field that we've got here and the next two days, the competitions that we have here in Tiof Stadium. We're coming up to that time, that time that we're actually headed to the first of the events, and it's a full schedule today, definitely. Uh, we're starting at nine with uh, the semi-finals 1500 meter for women, the beef uh, semis, and then uh, followed by the men as well. Uh, it's going to be very interesting today with a full set of races. And yeah, then, Justin, the main question is, what is it you're looking, for, looking forward to the most? I believe today we can uh, look to the 500 meters finals, which will be uh, spectacular. Um, the final 1500 meters as well. So, uh, big day today, two finals, 1500 and 500. Tomorrow we still have the 1000 meters, but uh, uh, big day today. Yeah, and it's going to be a long day as well, because although official uh, uh, competitions start at 9, they will be finished around 5, let's say. Quarter to 5 is the scheduled time to end today. Uh, so a full day, not just uh, for you short track fans on this live stream offered by Schaatsen.nl, the KNSB, the Dutch National Skating Union and a whole host of very important sponsors, which luckily we've been able to see all uh, through this morning in the crawl with Daikin, Link & Co, Gamma Trajito, the Dutch Lottery, Ladro there, the Municipal of Heerenveen as well. Without uh, their support, the sponsors here, we wouldn't be here anyway, and we wouldn't be able to see the level of competition that we're headed into today. Final preparations, ice preparation has taken place. Um, always uh, a matter of contention, ice quality, wherever you skate, whenever you skate. And uh, definitely very, very important at the beginning of a season to actually get that feel straight away, uh, a feel for the ice. It's important to have the good feeling on the ice to take it uh, into the whole season and uh, especially to race on a good level here. We're looking at uh, the referees now, the track stewards are uh, 
busy with preparing the track. And a whole host of big names uh, in action today. Uh, it's uh, definitely a stacked field with Olympic champions, world champions, European champions, and not just for us, a great way to get reintroduced, reacquainted uh, with the big names of this sport. But it's, especially in Olympic uh, season, very important to be able to gauge where <laughs> the competition is in terms of fitness and their overall level. Well, this, this weekend we're skating in two uh, competitions. We have the, the B competition and the A competition. But even in this B competition, there are some quite good names. Uh, the Italian team is uh, pretty big. But even our Dutch skaters, we do have some regional skaters uh, here as well. We're just at the level of uh, of the national team, but if we look to the uh, to the list of competitors of uh, the men's A and the ladies A, this is uh, quite a good field, and uh, the level will be uh, be high today. Looking really forward to uh, Susanne Schulting as well. She trained this summer a lot with the men, so she will crush the ladies probably. This is her aim, definitely, uh, Olympic champion, of course, uh, Susanna Scholting. Um, and she's not the only one who already has Olympic medals uh, in her trophy cabinet. But this year, so important. And this, in, uh, this competition, very important for the Dutch skaters as well, because we're just before the start of, let's say, the World Cup season. And you need to have a high level here to make the team. It's as simple as that. This is one of the moments of well, selection. The national coach uh, Jeroen Otter and even for the other teams will look at the skaters and uh, try to make a selection of it to go to the first World Cups, uh, which, which means that if you go into the first World, Cup, first, first World Cups, it's uh, logically that you can go to the Olympics as well. We're starting off with our first competition, semi-finals in uh, the women's B competition, 1500 meter. Definitely important here to be able to, let's say, uh, make certain you get through the day with your energy intact and not throw everything into every race. Uh, it's not easy, definitely a, a, a well-trained art. And this is uh, very important also as well to get the competition kilometers, the miles under your belt. And definitely able to, uh, to get some, uh, some practice here. Whistle is blown means that we're uh, about ready to get started here. Interesting names for this uh, first race with, uh, as you say, uh, in the B-field, Val Cipina there as well. Uh, one of the skaters we're definitely looking forward to see, but many, many others, uh, including uh, the Belgian there in the middle of the screen. It's uh, a stacked field even in this first semi-final. And so, for this second official day of the International Invitation Cup, skating is underway. Good to see, and very interesting to see whether or not, well, Dutch regional skaters mixing in with international skaters. This is a huge advantage for younger skaters as well, that are right at the precipice of the national team, to be able to see where their level is. We've seen the black and orange Femke de Boer, one of the regional skaters here. It's really good for them to uh, to race with this uh, level. A little bit of a hand on the ice, one of the Italian skaters, as you'd uh, expect. Full field here, so a little bit of elbow work needed. Also in this field, uh, next to Ariana Valcipina, Elisa Confortola there. Uh, the French woman, Chloe Olivier. She's in front now. This means looking at Valcipina that uh, at least the current speed isn't too high for the field to stay together. But every, now on the outside. every acceleration is there. Eh? Yeah, and the outside Valcipina is coming up. Seven laps to go. And it's usually the first two that at least to get uh, a uh, straight, straight way into the final. So now the Italians have a good position. There's the three of them front and probably they will get the pace up higher now as you can see accelerating out of the corner now it's even uh, Valcibina taking over again and for this race the first three Valcibina still in the lead and it's possibly there are three Italians at the front which is exactly what we're seeing working together as a group team tactics important as well 
as you can see here, the pace is getting higher and higher. And the girls in the uh, second and third position covering up the gap. Yeah. Simic and the Dilk still can follow the Italians, both French girls. Small gap. I see you. Ring for the last lap, which means that at least uh, two Italians are out in front. Which uh, probably means that we've got Valcipina and Confortola there in front, and Elena Viviani has uh, probably not made it there. We'll have to wait and see for the official result. But it looked quite comfortable, all in all, for uh, Confortola and uh, Ariana Valcipina. We'll have to. I think the rest will come together. Yeah. Because of the move of uh, Tineke de Dulk onto uh, Viviani. Yeah. I guess. A little bit of a shove and a push, which is all part of the proceedings here. But still, there <laughs> there are rules here as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not a, a free for all, definitely not. And you always see uh, all of the skaters after a skate, just keeping an eye on the official results, making certain that uh, they're definitely uh, that the rules are being respected, if at all possible. And there's a large group of uh, referees here for this e international event as well, run at a very, very high standard. Very interesting second uh, semi-final as well with a whole host of Canadians. Now, this is not, let's say, the prime Canadian team, but they've sent a, uh, a group of juniors here, which is uh, if you don't want to expose your skaters to international travel and, uh, and the hazards that come with it nowadays, um, it's definitely a good idea for the development of your younger skaters to have them here. I feel a butt coming up. Yeah. yeah. We're listening to the official statement. Yeah, in the corner causing contact. She bumped into uh, Viviani. So this means that we've uh, had a penalty applied to Tineke den Dok. Yeah. The former Dutch skater. Yeah. Now skating for, for Belgium, which is, uh, uh, let's say, for this region, a very interesting move. As the second semi-final gets underway, we'll uh, review the full result of the, semi the first semi-final in the B group, as it is posted, but we'll start looking at this second semi-final. And even these are uh, Canadian juniors. We still know, uh, Nelson, that uh, Canada is one of the top countries in short track speed skating with a lot of Olympic champions so as well these juniors will uh, show a good level as well in this field uh, Gloria Ioriati who uh, was uh, at a reasonable, pa reasonable pace her uh, race yesterday 2.28.3 compared to the uh, the other orders was uh, quite, quite fast and she's taken the lead as well This field, Amaria Samodi as well, and then a whole host of uh, Canadian young women there. Number four, Ren Acorn, is the lead Canadian skater. As the speed is starting to pick up slowly, a oh, little bit of a movement there by Acorn, but she's uh, still Hungarian girls who are moving up. You can see always after like six, seven laps, the pace will get higher and it's harder to pass. Uh, the pace is higher so to be in a good position at the last laps is really important the two hungarian women uh, let's say barbara somoji and uh, as well uh, maria somodi and somodi was quite quick yesterday as well uh, the pack still together and it's still yoriati in the lead italian women looking uh, rather strong in this field leading a whole group of Canadian and Hungarian women. One of the Canadian women starting to lose a little bit of plot. That's Beatrice Delorme, number seven, on the helmet. A bit there. Easy. And Yoriati yeah. looks in control, eh? It is. Just the hands on the back. Just stepping easy out, out of the corner. Just maintain the speed. There you can see that the others are fighting for the position. She's easily skating to the first place in this race. Yeah, very impressive from uh, this uh, Gloria Ioriati. 
doesn't seem that we'll uh, be uh, needing to wait for any official statements. Look like a fairly clean second semi-final. We'll just have to wait and see. For now, the very, very strong as uh, the rink is being exited by the women here. We immediately move into the next race because it's an entirely well, action-packed filled program today and there's a very little time in between races. This is what short track is all about. It's continuously race after race after race. On the good on the on the on the on the big tournaments, skaters will skate like seven, maybe eight times a day. So with some rest of twenty, maybe thirty minutes in between. She needs to recover quickly. Which is uh, one of the major factors, let's say physically between say uh, long track skating, which is a uh, possibly two races a day, but timed, totally uh, spending all the energy you've got available. Here you have to be tactically uh, in your race plan, but also in your energy consumption. Yes. And the racing, it's all about racing. As you see now with the 1500 meters nowadays, it's seven, maybe some, uh, sometimes eight skaters at the start. So even if you're strong, sometimes not only uh, the strongest skater will, uh, will win. Short track, there, uh, there is a rule or a saying: if you want to finish first, first you have to finish. Yeah. And we will see it today. <laughs> Whether or I not guarantee. that still applies. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, interesting field here with a, a couple of youngsters as well, uh, and a very interesting uh, group of uh, local riders, uh, Dutch skaters. There, Jari van Polen is here, Chris Breider, Kasper Dauma. Yeah. Uh, included in this field, um, including the Hungarian uh, Dania Tibos. Mattia Antonio Leo and uh, is there as well, and Bencha Nogradi. Interesting group of uh, skaters here. It's cool to see the, the Dutch juniors here skating as well. And uh, well, a couple of years ago, it's the same generation, so they're skating for a long time together. A couple of years ago, I was coach. Uh, for a junior team as well, and uh, so the small boys racing uh, in the Starkless competition, which is like the pre-competition of uh, of the World Cup, and, and they're still then. <laughs> yeah, and still they are racing against each other. And uh, we've got uh, Rino van Horn in second position, the Belgian, rather large Belgian contingent for this event. Good to see. The Italian taking the lead. Antonioli leading the pack. But as you say, speed increasing lap after lap after lap. With the two laps you can see now. Oh, oh, and the fall. It's two. Chris Breider and one of the Hungarian guys. Yeah. Let's see if we can pick up who the Hungarian is who went off. This is where you can see after like six laps, they in increase the speed. You will see it all the time. You want to fight for your position, you want to have the good position, because otherwise, if you're in the back, it's so hard to pass on a, on a high speed. The Hungarian is Benson Nogradi, who went, uh, went off. And we'll have to wait and see whether or not we, and that will be after this race, we can see in a replay what actually happens. Jari van Polen in the second position, behind the Italian, Antonioli. You can really see him covering up the inside, because the Belgian, Rino van Horn, is looking Pass inside now we can see acceleration. It's coming outside around and inside. Uh, Van Polen looking, but not finding a way. You can see he's well having some trouble with his coordination, starting to feel the lactic acid there as well. <laughs> and moving backwards from second position now into fourth. First three have an automatic uh, qualifying for the final as uh, the bell sounds for the final lap. And uh, Antonioli still leading quite comfortably, taking uh, the win ahead of Rino van Horn. And uh, the remaining Hungarian there, uh, Daniel Tibos, finishing in third. It's about these positions. The first three will qualify for the A final. 
Yeah, and there's a B final as well. Uh, this event designed to give, let's say, maximum ice time to any competitor to be able to uh, get as many miles as you can and then eat the skates, get ready for the official season. Means it's a packed schedule for today. And uh, this packed schedule is continuing with the second of the semi finals. Pietro Marinelli will see in the second uh, of the semis. With a large field and a quality field also for the second of the semis. The second uh, semi final, Niels Kingma, local hero as well. He joined the national team, I believe, this summer in the uh, Font Romeu training camp. Which is a, a huge boost to your level if you can, uh, if you can see and well, actually learn a lot. The big question is, aren't you uh, possibly, if you're young, overexcited to train at the same level? That's the big danger. It's really, really nice to see that uh, Jeroen Otter, the national coach, is uh, taking these youngsters to his team to get some experience, but as well to look to the future, because of course we still do have uh, Shinki Knecht Daan Brilsma, but 30 plus. So you need to invest in the, in the future as well. And how do you rate the Dutch future at the moment, the, the new generation coming up? If you look to these boys, they, well, they are ready to step up. If you look at uh, Hugo Bosma, Niels Kingma, but just made, uh, just like Kai Huisman, just made a step from the, the juniors to the, or to the seniors, to the regional team, to the national team. Uh, the boat boys van Wout, we will see. So, yeah, still a <laughs> bright future uh, ahead. And a, gr uh, a big group, making sure that there's a lot of internal competition, which you need. See how this internal competition actually uh, pans out with uh, Piet no, Pietro Marinelli there as well. Two Belgian skaters, Ward Petre and uh, Gert Jan Groenemine. And it's the Belgians who, well, for what it actually means, take the lead. But it's a very, uh, a very easy start. Definitely not going to push each other early on. See Hugo Bosmo is taking the lead now. Two Belgians behind him. This King in fourth. And the regional skaters uh, making certain they make their mark on this uh, opening few races. Good to see. And a good chance to take. Looks like we're missing one guy on the list. It looks so as well because I we've got it's six. Tawan, Tawan Thomas, the French guy. In seventh currently. Yeah. He's not on our official entry list, but he's very, very welcome in this uh, second semi-final. Let's see if he can make his mark as slowly but surely. Pace is picked up, just uh, peeking over the shoulder to see if there's an attack. Well, there's definitely an attack. And via the outside, it is the Frenchman taking the lead. Two big strokes and he was there. You can see in, in one lap, Bart Perté was taking the lead, but then outside, the French is coming, so it's... Leaning yeah, into the corner and again, then accelerating inside, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they will speed up, they accelerate. It's still going a little bit easier than the other races. Oh, well, this is the system, obviously, that you go for the first three places. Expending as uh, uh, low an amount of energy as you can. One of the Belgians just... Come in and now up. we'll see the try inside. Hugo Bosma, Jules King was trying to go outside, but it's so hard in his speed to pass. He's trying. Nice inside move. Well done, Kingma. Marinelli. Trying to push back, you but see. still in second, yeah. Accelerating out of the corner, Gumin is in control. And slowly but surely, we're heading towards the final lap, and still it's Kingma in second. The 103. Niels Kingma. Ah, nice move by Hugo Bosma. He's it's taking the third place now from Marinelli. So the now Dutchman. they will qualify. Yes, they will. Well, that's actually very well done in this field. The two uh, youngsters there. 
completing the top three. But it's the Belgian uh, there who actually dominated. He didn't look into in trouble at all, Gertjan Fumine. And while we're just uh, pushing through these opening races, we'll have a confession to make. We're a little bit devoid of final rankings at the moment. So we're uh, trying to uh, make certain that we actually get those to be able to give you the actual final rankings. And if we do, uh, we'll also give them in Dutch for our Dutch viewers. But for now, we don't totally want to speculate and it's a little bit of uh, handwriting that we're uh, relying on. Luckily, Justin has uh, excellent handwriting that only he can read. <laughs> yeah. so. so we're all in his hands for now. But what we can say with uh, certainty is that we've had very interesting few races already with uh, well, let's say a few surprises here and there. And immediately we're starting to look at uh, the next set of races, Justin. Ranking finals, 1500 meters. Which means uh, we're starting to uh, see some interesting races here. Nicky Nordegraaf is in uh, on the ring at the moment. On the ice, Alexandra Daniel as well. The Belgian, Suze Kingma. So two local skaters, let's say regional skaters there. And the Belgian, Nicky Nordegraaf. Clean start there. Just three skaters now, just because of the, the system uh, we're working with now. It's like the all final system, but kind of uh, a knockout system as well. Um, if you don't qualify for the next round, you're kind of out of the tournament, but still to get some ice feeling and to have a good position in the classification. They have the ranking finals, same system as they work with, with the World Cups. Although there is a classification here in terms of points, uh, nationality uh, points. Yeah, Asian for country, points. yeah. Um, it's in this stage of the, the season just ev so incredibly important to get as many miles and races under the belt before the actual World Cup competition starts. And it's a, a, a small and condensed season. Eh? It's quite short and a lot of uh, important points there, moments where you can throw it all away or gain a lot. It will be interesting and uh we will see winners and yeah, some losers, people who won't make it to the Olympics. Susan Kingma, she's currently in the lead. Saw her in action yesterday, obviously as well. She's one of the lucky uh, junior skaters to, uh, to skate here. It's because she, uh, she had some good results last year as well meaning she has the opportunity to grow even further. Yeah. She was uh, yesterday in uh, race three. Been skating in Leeuwarden a lot as well. It's quite interesting to see her, uh, her development because she's still a B junior. Kingma. Definitely one to watch as the race starts to heat up slowly but surely. Nicky Nordegraaf taking the lead now. And Alexandra Daniel, the Belgian. In second position. Kingma starting to feel it. All the efforts of the early laps. And uh, has to uh, give way to Nordegraaf and Daniel. This afternoon we'll see the Belgian team. Who are training together with a uh, Dutch national, uh, national team. So it's like divided. So we've got a selection of Belgium to training in uh, Hasselt, I believe. And we have uh, a good uh, Smet, who is uh, training with the, the national team of the Netherlands. A good uh, race for Nicky Nordegraaf in the end. Finishing first. Time of 2.39.0. At the corner of my eye. Uh, beating the Belgian for this uh, first of the ranking races. Ranking finals. 
hoping that uh, the three women will vacate the ring and that three men will take their place. Three Dutchmen, incidentally, with Stijn Koops, uh, Stan Rijksen and Itze van Bentham. As you can see, all from the same team. Reaching the team of uh, the middle of the Netherlands. So we have uh, a definite, uh, definitely a few different uh, development and, and junior teams around. Uh, the entire, let's say, hierarchy of uh, the way short track skating is currently organized in the Netherlands. And all vying for those, uh, well, let's say, uh, all important national selection uh, uh, spots. Their coach is uh, Niels Kerstot, former national team short tracker. Who definitely needs no introduction. Right, second of the ranking finals on this 1500 meters, the opening of the second day of the International Invitation Cup 2021. Let's say the official kickoff of the short track season, internationally at least. And so we kick off. This will be like a time trialing. Yeah. Let's see. Stan Rijksen taking the early lead. Wonder how um, how much these guys will push each other, knowing that they probably don't want to lose to one of their stable mates. Sometimes you can use this as a a race to make it uh, make it fast to try to uh, set some personal records here. Yeah, right? or to get the speed high. That's, that's what you need as well. You can maintain a high speed in uh, in racing. Most important thing in these races that you don't want to crash. Did you don't look up for any uh, situations? You can see that probably they made some appointments on. Uh, on the racing, yep. three laps in front and then It's basically a, a team trial, making certain uh, they don't spend too long at the front of the field, taking all the, uh, all the air, all the wind resistance. For certain, the speed's there. I'd be looking to uh, dive deep under the 230. It's a Van Bentham currently leading. making um, a rather strong impression at the moment from Ben. He's a really, a really strong guy. Now you can see the chains again. I wonder what sort of time we're pushing for at the moment. I'm curious. I'm asking for a prediction, but I'm not getting it. As we again see a change at the front. With Koops, Rijksen and Van Bentham, and the field is uh, falling apart a little bit. They've started quickly, and they're paying the price for it now. <laughs> yeah, definitely uh, feeling it. Legs full of lactic acid. Coordination loses out a little bit, so the efficiency there as well. But we're heading towards the finish line. It's a Van Bentham clearly leading, winning this ranking final. And as both of our sets of eyes are trained on the, the scoreboard, we're devoid of a, a final time. We'll figure it out in due course. For the moment, we're just as we should, as I hope you guys are, enjoying some very, very interesting races early on. As we have a, a very interesting ranking final here now, with a, uh, a large contingent of uh, Frenchmen. Three Frenchmen, uh, Arthur Van Bessier, Etienne Bastier, and Tawan Thomas. Yeah, but the Tawan Thomas, he was, I believe he was, he was in the, one of the uh, semi-finals. So they bumped him up, yeah. probably uh, yeah. a... He had a... I believe he had an uh, advancement uh, yesterday. Yeah. Could be. Some last minute changes to the entry list anyway. Which is okay for these sort of events, definitely. 
totally cater to be able to give all of these skaters the most amount of uh, competition time there. After Van Bistien. And as well the uh, Italian guy is not on the, uh, on the ice. Viscardi. He was in one of the... He definitely was, yeah. yeah. Also got an advance. Very interesting to see what we can expect from uh, from this group. With uh, Philippe Dordelin on the entry list as well. 53, we see him there in our lane, in our starting lane. 49, Barre van Damme, Belgian. Arthur van Bessien next to him. And the 58 is Etienne Bastier. Well, let's see who takes <coughs> this ranking final. <laughs> Definitely not as uh, ferocious a start as we just saw in, uh, let's say, the time trial that they set. This might be a tactic race. Ben Jung Yang Hoon, the German. Taking up uh, final position, keeping an eye on all of the exploits in front of him. It's it's mostly uh, Asian style to uh, to start in front and to uh, to move on up during the race. As you can see, it's uh, going slowly now. Still looking to each other. No one wants to take the lead. Really. Just um, expending uh, the minimum amount of energy, but one of the skaters can't wait anymore, and it's one of the Belgians. So, Mara, Mara van Damme. But then again, the Canadians taking over, Dodelin. Just showing that uh, it's definitely not full out at the moment, as you would expect. Yeah, they're, building, they're building up the race uh, now. You can see, it's going a little bit faster. Great to see, but there's a little bit of contact there, just uh, slightly, nothing really to be scared of, but it's definitely in the early stages of a season, uh, good to get used to French guys fighting are again. Up. Oh, the German being uh, definitely blocked there, but nothing out of the ordinary, but he tried to make a move, couldn't make it, and now he's back at the pack again. Will be a move by the Canadian, yeah, you can see it, nice outside. Inside passing, just Get setting it up. Having uh, the strength to keep it going, and he's still up front at the moment. 53. Well, so that's Dodena. Oh, still closing the door, making certain his exits are strong. There's the German again. He's thrown in a lot of his energies in this race, trying to get to the front, and there's a Ray inside passing. Yeah, a oh, nice block from uh, the second Frenchman. As this race comes to an end, and uh, nicely won, really well done by Etienne Bastier, cleverly raced, making certain he definitely uh, was there at the right moment, and the German, he expended a lot of energy just trying to get there, and it just couldn't, and here you see, taking that last position in the opening phase definitely uh, gives you some work to do. Yeah, yeah, you can see the Canadian uh, Dudelin was moving up to the front, but then the, the lactic acid came in and uh, he could manage to maintain the speed. And then you can see the racing and uh, that's why the Frenchman could pass inside at the end. Yeah, and Dodelin was uh, bent over backwards basically after the race. But very interesting to see. So this was the last race. Just now we're going over to the uh, ice resurface again. Yeah, ice preparation as we head towards the second of a full day, second phase of this full day. Second day of the uh, International Invitation Cup, shown live on uh, the Schaatsen.nl and KNSB live stream. Uh, we'll definitely be back as soon as competition is back. For now, it's ice preparation as soon as the skaters are on the ice. So will we be behind the mic?
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, on this live stream, Schaatsen.nl, and of course the KNSB, responsible alongside a whole host of sponsors that, uh, thanks to the crawl in the lower part of the screen, is continuously uh, available, uh, that we have this live stream for the International Invitation Cup, let's say the official kickoff of the international short track season, and the first uh, part of this morning has already passed, uh, first of the ice preparation breaks is uh, well, almost almost done, which means, uh, Justin, that we're almost ready to uh, start racing again, and it's going to be fast and furious all through the day with a lot of competitions. Going to uh, the finals of the uh, 1500 meter 1B now. We just saw the uh, semi-finals. Some good racing, fast races as well. Um, just looking back into the results, because we still yeah. were looking for the uh, time of the uh, It's Van Bentham. Because it was a fast race, what they did it was a personal record. Just to mention this. Yeah, well, let's run through the uh, the uh, the results of the uh, the opening segment of today, and uh, for uh, completion's sake, we're uh, gonna run through them in Dutch and in English. Uh, the rest of the stream is obviously in English, but uh, the semi-finals in the women's uh, 1500 meter B uh, series: uh, Elisa Confortola, Ariana Valcepina, and Eva Agrinoliu. The French uh, woman, the first uh, three, there was a penalty for Tineke Den Dolk. Uh, Gloria Ioriati ran Acorn, who uh, well, nearly fell, but she still kept it going as in second. And Victoria Garo, the Canadian, the young Canadian, in uh, third, there was a penalty there for Barbara Somoji, who actually fell, so she was to blame uh, in the end for a dead fall. Uh, resultaten, dames en heren, dit stukje in het Nederlands, uh, 1500 meter dames uh, B. Halve finales met Confortola, Valcepina en Grenoyou uit de eerste van de twee halve finales. En Joriati, Eekhoorn en Garo uit de tweede door. Bij de heren hebben we dan uh, Mattia Antonioli, Rino van Horensterk uh, gereden en Daniel Tibosch. Een advance was er ook voor Bentje Nogradi die onderuit uh, geschaatst werd door blijkbaar Chris Breider. Zo werd het uh, in ieder geval uh, door de uh, leiding hier gezien. Gert-Jan Goeminnen maakte een hele sterke indruk. En Niels Kingma en Hugo Bosma ook door naar die finale. Second uh, of the results, 1500 meter men B. Semifinals met Antonioli, Van Horen en Tibosch. Goeminnen, Kingma en Bosma. En er was een advance voor Bentje Nogradi. Um, we have skaters on the ice. Uh, let's see the ranking finals if and when. There was the women's ranking final. Uh, Nika Noorde, Nikki Noordegraaf. Who uh, set a 239-1, won the ranking final there, and the men's uh, ranking final. It's a Van Benton 217-2, which uh, proved to be a personal best. Uh, it's a Van Benton heel hard gereden in the ranking finale 217-2, and Philippe Dodele, he won uh, the tweede ranking finale there. Right, back to English, back to uh, official racing, which is uh, what we're ready to do. Very interesting to see what we're heading in uh, for now. And we're off with the first uh, with the B final. Yeah, the B final. Woody, the lead. B final 1500 meters for the ladies with uh, Anna Claire Belly, the Canadian Maya Somodi, uh, Beatrice Delorme, Femke de Boer, as already mentioned, and Elena Viviani, Italian there. see what we can expect here. Please, uh, we've got the Dutch woman in the lead, Femke de Boer. Still a junior, a junior. And, uh, definitely one to watch. Personal best on this 1500 meters, 229.2 at the start of uh, the day. Let's see if she can approach that. We, uh, a good, good target to have alongside, obviously, trying to uh, finish as high up as possible in, a, again, a stacked field, although the Canadians not coming over with their A field, a lot of strong juniors, historically always in Canada. Yeah, yeah for sure. It's now the Hungarian, so Modi, who's taking the lead. Let's accelerate a little bit outside. You can see the uh, pace is getting higher. Definitely. So. 
lap by lap. Pace is getting higher, but uh, the attrition rate there as well. You can see a little bit of a lack of coordination sometimes on the exits as uh, the onset of really getting tired is there. De Boer now in fifth position. Viviani is in fourth behind the two Canadian women and, of course, the Hungarian in the lead. Maya Somori still in the lead. And there's the move by Viviani on the outside, taking yeah. both Canadian women. Very strong move. Continuing to the front of the race. Let's see if she can do it. Yes, outside passing. That's by the book. Definitely uh, well done. And Viviani's trying to push through, see if she can up the pace to a level that somebody cannot counter. But somebody's still there. The Canadian women and Femke de Boer have trouble following, well, this pace, this turn of pace in the final lap of this final, the final 1500 meters. Looks to be, Close well, finish. I, Let's see. I wanted to say the Italian, but there comes yeah. the Hungarian and it is in the end the Italian who wins. To 30. Very, very comfortable move on the outside. Yeah, she did it well, just waiting on the uh, on the back in the beginning of the race. Viviani just saving her energy just to use it at the right time because this is really hard in the 1500 meter. If you see the corners are uh, like a radius of uh, eight meters, so the pressure on the legs is, is very high. And there's no let up, definitely no let up uh, anywhere in this race. So better start easy if you have the opportunity and if your nerves hold it's not always easy definitely in world championship finals olympic finals you always see someone feeling the need to push on, on this level it's so hard to uh, to pass easily yep. you really have to uh, to work for it you really have to look for the right moment to uh, to do your pass the unofficial result is uh, in with uh, viviani Ahead of uh, uh, Somodi, definitely uh, as expected. Anna Clarbelli was third. As we uh, move towards the A final with Elisa Comfortola, Ariana Valcipina, big name, obviously a big name in uh, short tracks and skating. Again, the three Italians in the in this final. Let's see if they can. Uh, team up again like they did in the semi-final just to move up to the front just give each other like uh, covering the back and uh, Valcipina definitely well known has a whole host of international medals but mostly uh, within the Italian relay team means at least that uh, she definitely has a set of lungs in her that can uh, take her to victory here in the 1500 meter but uh, Gloria Ioriati is there, Ren Acorn is there, Victoria Caro is there, and uh, also Eva Grenoyo all have uh, raced already today. But Valcibina and definitely Comfortola, let's not forget Comfortola, looked very strong earlier this This morning. is interesting, really looking for the good position now. It's not like a tactic race starts, just like the race before. Easily now they do have the position. The two Italians at the front, making it three now with number 26, Elisa Confortola, who was the quickest this morning. And again, the position they want, the three Italians in the front. Let's see if the Canadian can move in. So, Ren Acorn. Has been able to uh, post times, definitely uh, a few seconds under the 3.30. But you're so dependent on race plans of other other riders that you're definitely not only looking at times, definitely not in a final, as it's the French uh, Eva Grenoyeau who's taken the lead. Very calm, controlling, but there's going to be a move by one of the Italians. Via the outside, it's... You got the inside on the outside as well. Ah, well done, in this case, by Ariana Valcepina. Valcepina taking the lead, but already we see the jostling for position. And it's a busy final here. Push there. Chloe Olivier in the front, trying to keep the pace. But not easy with three Italian women 
uh, there. And there's the move by one of the three. This will be fighting in the last three laps. And it's again Yoriati 26. Wants to come outside. Confortola in the lead. Yoriati on the outside. Volcipina there as well. And the pace is up again. A few skaters cannot compete. Oh and there, one of Yoriati. the Italian. Yeah. One of the Italians goes off. Didn't really look like a hard hit, but you'll know in 10 minutes or so when the <laughs> adrenaline leaves the, leaves the, leaves the body. Leaves the two Italians out in front and it's going to be an Italian 1-2 definitely there and it's Confortola and who wins we see a, a crash in the back of uh, Grenadieu the French girl in the last corner so Confortola makes a 2 out of 2 for the races uh, today for her very strong looked like Yoriati uh, just hit a hit one of the blocks or just like a technical mistake because she's just there on her own Hitting and this is hard block. as well in the last laps of this 1500 meter your legs are dead <laughs> so it's easy to uh, to make such a such a mistake yeah and it's usually the shoe that then hit the block yeah. huh? meaning that you lose the pressure on uh, on uh, the skate and even but though you're standing higher on your uh, skates than uh, for example long track skaters Still, the angle to the ice is, in the, is important. Fast time of 2.29.5, but as uh, we already said, you're so incredibly dependent on uh, how the race unfolds. It's difficult to really go for a time. As we head into the second uh, phase of this second phase, because it's time for the 1500 men's finals. First the B final and then the A final. With uh, a few Dutch, uh, young Dutchmen there as well. With uh, Kasper Dauma and Jari van Polen. But also uh, Tewan T uh, Toma. Who we didn't see obviously uh, earlier today because he got an advance from yesterday. Uh, we expected them to see him in one of the ranking finals. But moved up. Good news for him obviously. Pietro Marinelli there. Interesting to see what Marinelli can do. Huge advantages to having a big group of uh, skaters from one nation training together, obviously. You always find your training partners uh, that are over your level or preferably slightly above, so you can reach for the level. Kasper Dauma, start number 100. 101 is Jari van Polen. 80, Pietro Marinelli in the middle of the screen. We see Dan Kos, 98, Tabon Toma. 57 and uh, Wart Petre, the Belgian, 48. And let's say a leisurely start. This will be uh, <laughs> anything <laughs> else. But this only means that the final push will be quicker and more, far more exciting. As if we need any more excitement here. Slowly but surely, you'll see the pace being upped. Bunch of uh, very compact, shorter skaters. Not so much the Dutchman at the front, because uh, Kasper Dauma is definitely one of the tall guys in this field. He is, he is. Means you'll have uh, a lot of reach, but it also means that uh, trying to <laughs> maneuver your way around <laughs> is not as easy. Eh? It's hard to get into the to good position to make yourself uh, compact. Frenchman Thomas won't have that uh, sort of troubles. Still, uh, nevertheless, you can't be a good short tracker because if you look to the Frenchman uh, Le Pop, Sebastien, yeah. he's tall as well. You see this uh, tactical race. It's, it's so hard to. Um, normally, you have just like one punch in a race. You can't be giving all the time. So, you need to save energy and uh, being smart, take the good position. Don't come into uh, any fighting situations because it will uh, cost a lot of energy. Now you see Dan Koss in front.
But that's a little bit of a double-edged sword because yes, you have to conserve energy, but you cannot be languishing at the back no. because then no. the punch will not be enough to get to the front. So sometimes some skaters are just uh, guessing or gambling on like uh, crashing, even with races with eight skaters on the 1500 meter, just waiting in the back to make uh, to let the other skaters make the mistakes. Did you see now? We could expect it. Fast way, Tavanto oh. my inside, and, and there you see. Yeah. It's the crash. No room. He tried to overtake there, uh, Kasper Dauma. Dauma tried to hold his line. It was a long, long and bow and another one. The Italian yeah. is off. Pet Pietro Marinelli on the exit. Lost balance when the, tw the, uh, the weight went over the rear. And now it means that this race is totally broken up. There will be a lot to talk about, especially Stank for the referees. Kos and Kasper Dauma. And Kos is tired, he is mouth open wide, trying to get as much air in there as he can. And he wins in the end, Dan Kos. But uh, an interesting race for sure, with a few, few tumbles. Marinelli, fairly unhappy, but unscathed it uh, looks like. Uh, also, the Frenchman, Thomas, he was the one trying to make the move yeah. early on. And they see they... He, like Marinelli came inside and they're leaning to each other and it's so hard to uh, to keep up then yeah it's uh, well done by Dan Kost to keep clear of all the melee around him yeah great win for him and I think it won't be challenged his win uh, if anything um, we'll have to wait and see what happens uh, with Dauma and the rest of the field a lot happened in any case and we still are waiting for official results. So, B final done. And I think we're getting into the rhythm that uh, ju just before we start the next session's uh, races will uh, give you all the official results. Of uh, of the previous session after the uh, the ice uh, preparation, simply as uh, live results aren't coming to us uh, as live as we'd hope, but we'll figure it out. And there's a lot of work being done to make it to happen. So definitely uh, interesting to see what's going to happen in the second uh, final, the A final. Referee still watching uh, yep. the race for the incidents. Lower left of the screen. Yeah, they were uh, they were there. And there were two incidents to look at, mostly. Let's see what uh, Harald Janssen will tell uh, the announcer. So this is uh, the finals in, let's say, the B entry, which is uh, not out of a lack of respect because these skaters have done incredibly well. and. It's definitely easy to envisage them uh, doing well in the World Cups as well if they are chosen to be part of their national teams. Let's wait and listen. Lengthy deliberations. Uh, so a penalty for uh, the French guy, Tawantoma, for the lane change inside to outside on the straight. Yeah, meaning that uh, it became a little bit crowded there. <laughs> yeah. And he was his own adversary there. Okay, we've got that out of the way. That penalty has been applied to Tawantoma. And it means that we're going to uh, get ready for the A final of the uh, B group 1500 meter with uh, Ben Nogradi there as well Nogradi he got an advance from uh, the semis yep. after being uh, yep. pushed out two Belgians yep. two Dutch two Hungarians and uh, the Italian Antonioli on his own so let's see uh, what the tactics will be Niels Kingma Definitely made a, a good impression. Yeah. And even uh, Hugo Bosma did well 
with his uh, inside pass on the uh, one of the last laps. Yeah. Which made his uh, third position in the uh, semi-final and the qualification for this uh, A final. Yeah. Final time, by the way, for Dan Kos was a 2.36.0 from mm. the B final. Yeah. But very leisurely start. Let's see how this start uh, pans out. Also quite leisurely, but a little uh, bit faster. 1,500 meter meters isn't about the final looking time. Looking for each other, you see that uh, Niels King was looking for Hugo Bosma. They want to team up or just be in front. Look, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They They've made some uh, decisions together with their coach. And this is what you need sometimes as well. You, you need to have a teammate into, uh, into one of the finals to, uh, to make the racing easily, easily. Second of the Hungarians coming all the way forward. Straight away racing, you yeah. can see. Put in a little bit of energy there, Tanio Tibors to take the lead. Antonioli is there as well on the outside. Kingma and Bosma there, uh, now in third and fourth position. Then uh, Nogradi and then the two Belgian They're still skaters. waiting, yeah. Wait and see. Gumina tries to come inside now. And of all the skaters, Gumina made maybe the most um, uh, impressive uh, impression <laughs> on us. But now you can see he tries to go inside, but he came inside, but then he loses speed. So again, from the back to the front and again in the back now. With so hard. With a lot of energy uh, used up. But race is starting to get hard. Nogradi is uh, accelerating. Kept, the, kept his powder dry in the opening laps. And now you can see the both Hungarians. Well played. With and the two Dutchmen at the back. And this is the tactic of uh, the Hungarians most of the time, especially what we will see this afternoon with the uh, brothers of Liu. Perfectly team skating. One go to the outside, one on the inside, just covering up so no one can pass or only can pass on the outside. And that's the, ha that's the hardest pass to do. Yep. In third, Oi. yes. And oh. Was, oh. oh, there they all go which means we've now got one Hungarian in the lead and we've lost about five of the skaters. And there's the whistle blown by the referee due to safety because they crashed into with the, with the three yeah, the three of them, Kingma, Antonioli and uh, Gumina. Yeah, Bosma currently in second, so he kept uh, standing. But let's see what they're going to do now because this was quite a hard tumble at the beginning of the, well, the end of the lap. And then we had a second tumble at the beginning of the lap. Antonioli hit the ice. Yeah, together with the three of them. Now you can see they jumping up the uh, cushions just to get the tension of the blades. So the blades are uh, connected to the shoes with bolts. But if you have uh, if you have a crash, most of the time because of the bending, which is in the blades, uh, there's tension on. And if there's too much tension on the blades, you can't turn them anymore into the corners. So that's what the coaches do. They have like, it's like the pit stop you can see <laughs> in the Formula One doing a... Yeah, and how um, easily is it to damage your skates in a situation like this? It's, 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 it's easy, because uh, um, so what you want to have is like a good bending and you want to have like sharp sharp blades as well to, uh, to cut into the eyes, to have your, uh, your pressure good. So it's really important to have your equipment uh, on edge. L literally on edge. Yeah. A uh, race here was on edge as well. You see immediately the jacket on to keep a little yeah. bit warm because a lot of energy expended. You start sweating and then you lose body heat very, very quickly. They will uh, check the eyes. One of the track suits busy with repairing the eyes. And so probably they do will, will do a restart of the race. That's uh, particularly tough on uh, the skaters that had expended a lot of energy yeah. already. So now these laps are very important. Just trying to get the lactic acid that builds up when you put in a lot of energy and you put in a lot of uh, effort through your muscles. See here Niels Kingma, looking quite well. He's uh, crashed into the... Uh, his back is hurting, probably with the uh, three of them hitting the... Uh, Maybe took, a, took yeah. a knee to the yeah. back as well. Could be, couldn't see it from this position. You see his face is not... Uh no, he start, he's hurting a bit. And now that the adrenaline starts uh, leaving the body as well, <laughs> yeah. the level's uh, lower, suddenly you feel the pain coming up. Same for uh, Antonioli, shaking his legs. 
Trying to get a little bit of uh, extra blood circulation going there as well. But they're a tough lot, short track skaters. And they're used to uh, being asked to do more than they plan for. I think this is perhaps, uh, in terms of mentality, the biggest difference between uh, short and long track skating, where you uh, try to envisage your perfect race. I don't think there is such a thing in short well track skating. Prepare for the unexpected, exactly. as they say. Um, if you compare it to long track, you can really focus on one race, doing well, kind of time trial. And here in short track, that can happen a lot. And uh, you need to adapt uh, well, work, work quickly. And accept it. That's probably yeah. the most important thing, mentally accepting that things uh, do not go your own way. The funny thing, a lot of short trackers were sitting in the heat box, uh, like the, the preparing area, just watching the races, just taking their time, uh, just, just enjoying as well, because they know I need to be relaxed because anything can happen in the, in the race or same for the skaters who are in the next race, just waiting now. She need to be uh, trained on it as well. But most of these guys have been at it for a fair few years. I think we're going to get ice uh, um, preparation. Well, let's see. I think that will change the blocks because we have like seven um, tracks on the, uh, yep. on the ice. And one of the tracks is a little bit damaged or there is like a, a cut into yep. the ice. So that's what the track stewards are for, really uh, important uh, guys on the ice. Just to make sure the track is always uh, on the right spot. Putting it down a little bit of water as well. Yeah, to make the top layer a little bit softer for the ice to cut in too easily. So when you say, because it's good, it's especially if you're new to short track, you say that we've got several lanes on the yep. ice here, yep. um, which means different radiuses in the corner? No, 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 it's all the same radius, so eight meters, but the track will uh, uh, will be laid down from well, kind of left to right, and every time they uh, after a race, they will do a kind of ice resurface, as we can say. So they will skate on a new track. So every skater has uh, good ice to skate on. As you can see, if with seven guys skating through the corner, uh, the ice will be damaged yeah. <laughs> as well with these sharp blades. Well, we're about ready to get this race underway again, and I have a feeling we're down one, one skater. Because I one see of six the helmets. Yeah, the one of the Belgians. He's uh, it's not there anymore. And I didn't see because normally it could be that he uh, it's because uh, he caused the the accident maybe it's and take it out. He goed binnen, yeah. Or he is uh, injured because I didn't hear anything from the referee. So let's see. Uh, well, let's wait for the uh, results. We'll and, be and let's just hope hope he uh, actually is okay. That's the most important thing. The penalty is uh, of uh, a lesser importance. You can so imagine now that they're going to take their time, eh? Yeah, yeah. Because they were fairly racing <laughs> to the end of the race when uh, the referee stopped it. Listening to uh, the announcement, trying to figure out if uh, Gumina has a penalty or is perhaps pulled out after that crash. We had a, a large crash and uh, an interesting uh, race up to then for this uh, A final in the men's B1500. And it's the Belgian, uh, the remaining Belgian, Rino van Horen, who is in the lead. But they're taking their time and why not? Because they've already expended a lot of energy. They were halfway, over halfway through the <laughs> final. Yeah. Just short after each other, first in the corner, the three skaters, Kingma, Gumina and uh, Antonioni, who crashed, and then on the straight as well. Here we go. Now Antonioni is taking the lead, just trying to uh, get some pace into the race. 71 is uh, Benchino Gradi, who was at the front. Aye. And again, contact. Tried to make the move, the Belgian, but couldn't find his way past Antonioni. No room there for Rino van Horen. And again, the two Hungarian skaters move to the front. Teamwork again. You see the second skater of the Hungarians just looking uh, out of the corner. He's basically the, the rear gunner now. Yeah, he is. And he will have to be relied uh, upon not to move too early. Because if he loses his nerve, the whole team plan fails. Antonio on the outside, 
Trying to make the move. He was one of the skaters who took a tumble. Cannot find his way past. No, no Grady is... Uh, there he is, on the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Outside in, move. King Ma as well in the back, moving. Just to passing uh, Van Horen. He's trying to move up in the field. But now the Le Italian takes the lead. Mattia Antonioli. The final lap. Ay, and the crest of King Ma. Oh, and now he to has go to inside. Be, uh, he needs to be careful there. Antonioli, he still leads. And there's the Dutchman on the inside of the two Hungarians. It's Bosma in second. Antonioli, he wins this A final. And let's uh, wait and see who was third, which of the Hungarian skaters was third. I have a feeling it's Benchen Nogradi, but we'll have to see. Yeah. Yeah. Nogradi before yeah. the unofficial result, of course. But a good move by uh, Bosma. Yeah. Well done. They can see, first it started off with the, uh, the move of uh, Niels Kingma. Could make it, so he came into the inside the blocks and then it well, kind of opened the door for Hugo Bosma. You need to be smart as well as short record to take this small gap you have or the mistake of the other skaters to jump into it. And a big smile on his face for Hugo Bosma. That was a cleverly run race. Well done to him taking second in this uh, uh, A final of the men's uh, B1500. Uh, a lot to talk about, a lot to think about because uh, we've had a, a fair few tumbles and great results as well. Uh, it means that we have some results to uh, walk through. We'll do them first in Dutch and then in, uh, in English with uh, the starting the A final. We gaan eens even naar de uitslagen, dames en heren, van uh, deze finales. Gloria Ioriati, zij uh, zat er goed bij in de finale, A-finale met Elisa Comfortola. Het was uh, sowieso wel heel erg spannend hoor, bij de dames. Goed om te zien. En dat is ook uh, precies wat je wil zien. Elena Viviani, zij won de B-finale. Elisa Comfortola won de A-finale. En daar uh, zagen we ook uh, Femke de Boer op de vijfde plaats. Het was uh, allemaal vrij close, maar ook overzichtelijk bij de dames. En dat was in ieder geval goed om te zien. Bij de heren was het een iets wat ander verhaal. Daan Kos, hij won zojuist de B-finale bij uh, de mannen. Goed geschaatst, Caspar Daumar daar tweede. En uh, zojuist hebben we dan gezien... Dat uh, daar uh, Mata Antonioli de beste was in de A-finale voor de Nederlander Hugo Bosma en Bense Nogradi. Right. right. In just Dutch, the yeah. results. Just heard that Nogradi got a penalty. And now we've seen the results as well. That uh, Gertje Gomine, the yellow card, probably two penalties in one race. Just saw it on the screen. So uh, that's why he, uh, he left the track. It's a rule as well in short track. If you make two penalties in one race, it will be a, a yellow card. Forced to leave. Right. Yeah. We'll leave the 1500 meters uh, for now. Ice preparation uh, ready uh, to go means that we'll be back a few minutes before the next race on this uh, live uh, live stream.
ook op terug, dames en heren. Oh, ik zit in het Nederlands, maar het is in het Engels. Uh, welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for the International Invitation Cup 2021. A uh, duolingual. Uh, we'll do it in Dutch and English where possible. Uh, 500 meters, it's going to be fast and furious here um, for these uh, opening semi-finals. This is going to be fun. We've got the gentlemen already lined up. And a few They're gentlemen off. who've and just already off. raced. So you see, this is your track. Just 20 minutes ago, they were still racing. Niels Kingma, Hugo Bosma. Slight mistake, but Kingma started away easily. Pretty fast, this is his, his thing, 500 meter. So he's had two falls about 15 minutes ago. Yeah. He's already on the ice and he's very, very fast. We've got Tavan Toma there as well. He's already taken a tumble as well in the 1500 meters, but still in the lead. Currently, it's still Niels Kingma. Can he hold on with the Belgian Wart Petre behind him as well as Philippe Dodelin? Dodelin to the third position and it's about the first three who qualify for the final semi-final looking looking strong well done kingma well done after all that happened yeah. in uh, the 1500 two falls and uh, uh, definitely a little bit of um, a dejection there as he and, he and his back was hurting eh, after the first fall he, skate, he skated like 2500 meters yeah and he um, Solid racing, very solid, really well done by uh, Niels Kingma. Let's see, uh, obviously not even close to his personal best, but you can definitely not expect that after the tumble he took and mm -hmm. uh, the painful uh, grimace on his face. He was hurting, his lower back was hurting, but this was very strong. As uh, we immediately get ready for the next race with uh, Ben Schnogradi, he got a penalty um, uh, in the previous uh, 1500 Final. and as well as uh, Gertjan Goemine this is why probably Goemine was uh, well he got the yellow card two penalties so he couldn't really participate anyway but he's uh, at least kept a lot of energy for these 500 meter races very interesting to see with also Daniel Tibors and Arthur van Bessier and Mattia Antonioli and now the big question I have is okay you do the 1500 meters or in his case as well 2500 meters <laughs> yeah 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 and you've got 10 minutes 10 minutes how do you get your heart rate down and the acid out of your legs most, most of the skaters will do like a little jog or maybe just on the bike just spinning easily but then you, you need to continue you don't have time to uh, to do really warm up or cool down just be in this vibe and uh, most of the time they give their equipment to their uh, to the technical man of the team just to check it um, preparing for the next race and the only easy thing on the 500 meter is you need to go full pool just from start off just go just go to the to the first block try to be his first uh, in the corner and mentally it's probably yeah. easy uh, this is also the reason why most of these skaters aren't let's say well they're all very fit super muscular but they cannot have the huge leg muscles that you see in long track skating mm -hmm. because if those get uh, uh, done uh, lactic acid there, you'll never get back in 10 minutes. Yeah. So you need to be fast, you need to be nimble, you need to be ready for this second uh, of the 500 meters fall start. So a little bit more time there to uh, get ready. Are we missing someone from the start list for this race? Because I see four skaters here. And I have a feeling we're missing one of the Hungarians. Hungarians yes. It's Nogradi, then it's, no, it's Nogradi. Well yeah, it's Nogradi. It's missing. Yeah. Yeah. So Daniel Tibors, who did take a tumble uh, in the 1500 met meters, is here. Nogradi got a penalty. Possibly um, so dejected that he isn't here. Well, four skaters. And let's see what happens. First in the corner from position one. Fairly tall. Long reach with his legs. And two, three meters ahead. You can see he's building up speed because the two steps into the corner. Now he uh, reached the his top speed. And now it's trying to maintain it. Which means he's just balancing through the corner. Trying to maintain his speed and his lead. He's still out in front. It's the Frenchman who is in trouble here. Tibos is closing the gap. Let's see, can he do something? But it's about the first three who are going through to the semi final. So. And they'll know. And Van Bessien is uh, too far back to do anything. So, a fairly uh, easy race here. Well, let's say easy. It's uh, at least uh, easy to read because the first three, not a lot of, con uh, well, not a lot of contact. And Arthur Van Bessien couldn't manage to uh, keep with them. You can see that uh, the skaters know that 
which position are uh, qualifying for the next uh, heat. But the most important thing in uh, 500 meter is that you want to have a good starting position. So that's why they do race sometimes in, even if they are in the qualifying position. As we get ready immediately for the next race. This was uh, not too difficult to read. The next one with uh, Daan Kos there as well. And Jari van Polen, the two Dutchmen. As well as Adrian de Wachter. And Robert Kurtzbergs, the Latvian. Fast Latvian guy. As well as uh, Ben Jung Yang Hoon. Right, we see uh, the referee, all smiles here. It's a beautiful day, uh, beautiful competition so far. And let's not forget that later today, it's the big guns that will see the big names. Um, although all of these skaters are vying to become one of those big names in, yes. the, in the long run. Even the, the, the B competition is, uh, is pretty big. And fairly strong. In terms of, of the Dutchmen that we see here, they've qualified for this International Invitation Cup through uh, their competitions last year as well, yep. their level. How big of an advantage is it for them to be racing here against this competition going forward? This is, this is really important to have a, a high level racing to, uh, to get better and to uh, experience oh, racing on this level. This is what you need. I Immediately, yeah. neutralization. Yeah, you can see if they... Uh, contact in the first corner just right before the, the apex the top block and one of the skaters is crashing just due to a collision then uh, the starter will sh shoot again and it will be a restart and again we see like the German uh, and the Belgium guy just getting attention of the blades very interesting here Well, a slight neutralization. It's not been a great day for a few of the Belgian uh, skaters. Although uh, Gertjan Goeminen made a, a, a very strong impression just now. We'll see what uh, Adrian de Wachteren, who's had some attention to his skates, to his blades, what he can do in this field. He's waiting for the German guy. He's still sitting. Uh, and the referee is uh, checking on him. Takes a while. They do have a, a spare set of blades uh, next to the eye, so if the blade is uh, really damaged, they can switch. Looks like he did. Yeah, probably he uh, did switch blade. Uh, the German guy. Yeah. He's already uh, raced the Belgian as well in Courmayeur. Yeah, racing in the Courmayeur Cup. Yeah, one of the other big races in the in the preseason. And these are the races you want to do, like the Courmayeur Cup, or the, the Invitation Cup, just to be prepared when uh, you know, when the season really starts. And the start here for this third race yeah. in the 500 meters. Kuzberg, fast guy, immediately up to speed. Uh, very explosive. Within and one half lap, they uh, they're at top speed. And what is their top speed here? Well, it might be 50, 60. This is really, really fast. It is uh, the fastest self-propelled sport without any uh, gears, like uh, cycling. Yeah, Skating is the fastest self-propelled sport. And there the fall for the German. On the blocks, he was on the blocks. And so uh, Ben Jung, he is not having a great day. Let's keep it like that. Uh, as the Belgian is looking, looking over his shoulder. And the Hakkos is coming in the outside. Oh, Great well finish. done. Let's see if he can take the second place. I think, uh, well, it's definitely Robert Kurzbergs who uh, won this one. But I think you're right. I think Dan Kos might have stolen this, and it looks like it, uh, by eight one hundredths of a second. Yeah. Dipping under the 43 seconds here, Dan Kos. This is really important as well, the finish. You can have your telescopic leg, as we call it, like Shinky has. Yeah. He's really uh, mastering this. 
Which you can see that from out of the corner, you can still manage to keep position, even though you think you're you so we losing. No, still, the finish is at the finish. And the, the, the training really on it too, to have the right move on the right time to uh, get this telescope leg out. It looked very strong. It's still an unofficial result, obviously, as we had a, a bit of a tumble early on, but it looked all fairly straightforward yep. afterwards. And Dan Kos is having a good day so far. Yeah. Definitely a uh, good day. We already had uh, Niels Kingma winning his uh, race with Philippe Dordelin uh, in second. Uh, Gertjan Goemine, the Belgian, won the second race with uh, Daniel Tibosch and Mattia Antonioli. And now we're waiting for official results, but we're all expecting Robert Kreuzbergs and Dan Kos and Adrian de Wachtere to be there. Not the fastest times uh, so far, but still heading up to the final. And Dan Kos, uh, three tenths away from his personal best. So. All in all, not so bad, especially given the fact that he's already put in a lot of energy today. Yeah. But overall, 42 low. It's, a, it's an okay time for, uh, for the gentleman. Yeah. Time for s uh, semi-finals here for the women. B competition, 500 meters, with uh, a whole host of Italian talent in this first one, with Elisa Confortola, who's also having a good day so yeah. far. She was quick yesterday as well. Elena Viviani, uh, Victoria Garo, one of the young Canadian women here, Alexandra Daniel, the Belgian, and Gloria Ioriati, who was one of uh, the skaters who took a tumble. First two uh, will qualify to the final. Which means expect a little <coughs> bit of fighting here and uh, a bit of a, <laughs> a sneaky start there on the inside for Confortola. Have a personal best of 44-4 from two years ago, Winter Youth Olympics in Lausanne. <coughs> She's, uh, she'll be looking to improve on that during this season, maybe not at the start of the season, but good start for the Italian women here. Now see who actually is able to take the lead. It's Viviani, Viviani but trying to. Yeah, it's uh, with 33. It's uh, Viviani still in the lead now. There was a push to take the lead from her, but no can do. And Caro comes forward. Oh, a little bit of a touch and almost. It's Yoriati who is <laughs> taking over to the second place just because of uh, the, the Canadian. Yeah, and very comfortable for Viviani here. She's looking strong, Elena Viviani, although it's closing in, closing in towards the end of this race, 500 Just meters. finish. Oh. The two uh, Italians behind Viviani were vying for second. Garo was there as well. Daniel didn't really, uh, wasn't really part of the proceedings up front, but uh, unofficially it's uh, Viviani for Ioriati and Confortola. One hundredth of a second <laughs> difference really between the two Italians in second and third. Viviani should have this. It all looked uh, fairly regular and no uh, real real pushes here or there. There was one push yeah. uh, by Garo. Let's see what the referee is uh, doing. And that was on, if I saw it right, on Confortola. So she might get an advance, but we'll have to wait and see. As you can see, Viviani was uh, not maintaining the speed in the in the last lap, so the whole pack could come back again, and uh, then you can see it's a really close finish. But she kept her uh, cool, yeah. kept her composure, waiting for the second of the semi-finals. Although we uh, are yet to have an official official result. One thing is for certain. Elena Viviani looked very strong, very comfortable here. We have the second group of skaters already ready, with Ariana Valcepina, Barbara Somoji, Femke de Boer is there, Ren Acorn and Beatrice Delorme, the two Canadian women there. And we're off with Valcepina on the inside lane, taking the lead, Femke de Boer in second. Great start for her. Third is the Hungarian uh, lady, Barbara Somoji. And the two Canadian women have some work to do. Although De Boer cannot stay with Valcepina. 
Volchepina in the lead there, the door is opened and she gets a little bit of a nudge from Somoji. So the boer is falling back, back in the pack. Although Valcipina still leads, she has a comfortable lead. Heading into what possibly could be the final for her, for Valcipina. Bell tolls. And Valcipina is uh, ready for this final corner. Behind, there's a strong fight. And still Femke de Boer is coming up. It's uh, the second place for the yep. Hungarian. And Valcipina dipping below 45 seconds. 45-9 for Valcipina. So the first two, Valcipina and, uh, and Somoji. Somoji. Although Somoji did uh, uh, give uh, De Boer a nice nudge, there might be a look, but I don't think so, considering what we saw before with Garou. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit the same situation. Yeah, Femke De Boer got into the corner a little bit too wide. That's why uh, Dungarin could pass inside. Half a second of her personal best for Femke de Boer in uh, a race that was definitely compromised by <laughs> the race plan around it. So she won't be totally happy as we go to the ranking finals with uh, Suze Kingma, Eva Grunoyou and Nikki Noordegraaf. It's so good to know yesterday they already skated one day to qualify for uh, the semi-finals so if the skaters who didn't qualify are now in the ranking finals which is good so your tournament keeps going yeah getting uh, back into uh, the rhythm of things see if Kingma and uh, Nordegraaf can actually work together Grenouille the French uh, lady there spoke to uh, Alexis Sodegas, French coach, and he was uh, quite happy about his uh, skaters, although the uh, relay wasn't uh, too good. Early days for all of them in this season, but before you know it, it's February, as we see Grenouille taking the lead. Behind her, it's the two Dutch women. It's uh, Nikki Noorga who's closing the gap now. You can see she's building speed easily. She's uh, Long reach, long legs, yeah, yeah. and making a move, yeah, making a move pass. on the inside, yes. But is she through? She is. Well done for her, and Grenouille is trying to get back at her. Strong skating here. Kingma in third. Bell tolls, and Grenouille tries, but the door is firmly shut. So, making a very strong impression here. Noordegraaf, and what is the time? In the end, 47-5 for her. Wins this ranking final with a particularly good move. Yeah, good start. And looking for a space to uh, to pass. She was uh, first in thir third position from outside side, Nikki Noordegraaf. Then good inside pass by uh, Suze Kingma. She moved to second and then uh, at the right moment just passed the French girl. So this ranking final done and dusted, and a very good impression by the young Dutchman, a Dutch woman, as we uh, head to the second of the ranking finals on this 500 meter with uh, on the ice uh, Tineke Den Dolk, Chloe Olivier, and Clara Belli, the Canadian, and uh, Maris Samodi. Uh, Tineke Den Dolk started the day with a penalty. Yeah. As we mentioned earlier, the former. Dutch skater. She moved um, two years ago to uh, to Belgium to skate for the Belgian team. I believe uh, three years ago, one of the last races in Dutch, she uh, became European champion relay with the ladies. A bit of a blow to the Dutch team uh, in uh, with the future prospects, but uh, has her reasons and finding a little bit of uh, let's say some calm in Belgium. Yeah. Almost circumstances. It's quite cutthroat, the Dutch uh, system, with a lot of talent there. And a lot of pressure. Start number two on the helmet, Tineke den Dolk. Mara Somodi, 22, on the inside lane. 
Who has Please the best start? It's the Canadian who got Olivier off uh, really quickly. Chloe Olivier takes the lead. No, it's Anna Clara Belli. Excuse me, and uh, Olivier is in second. The, uh, the French woman. Then Doak is in fourth. And how are you going to move move up? I see. Ah, the Hungarian. So much overspeed. Oh. <laughs> Couldn't pass inside, but couldn't hold it couldn't hold it this is this is such ideal. a high speed to keep the corners uh, tight it's hard and ideal here for the canadian bell tolls for belly although olivier is still there is she trying make yeah pass yes off? yes very cleanly done very cleanly done and then yeah then dog second second so he can see like the hungarian uh, hungarian somodi has a lot of overspeed, just jumps inside, just right before the corner. But then if you come tight in the corner, you need to keep it tight. It's so hard, the pressure on your legs is really high. You can't so you can see, she falls back, she comes outside, everyone is passing inside. So yeah. smart racing is really important as well. And probably fastest, if you would be alone on track, is to turn the corner into a V yeah. uh, and apex it on the inside. Although if you do that, you open the door. Yeah. And you see what happens when you open the door slightly. Results? Just uh, quickly on screen, good to see the results. Uh, yeah. uh, and as this uh, day progresses, uh, so to just uh, do the times because more and more is going to be very interesting today. Um, although we're enjoying ourselves massively in this morning, the big guns are out this afternoon. It's good to see a uh, top class short track uh, again after a, a season of only go with some World Cup racing, but it's good to, uh, to be back. Uh, new season and it has impact impacted uh, a lot of athletes in different ways you see it across different sports a lot of athletes struggle to get back into a rhythm after uh, 2020 uh, or the winter of 2020 and 2021 in the case of, uh, of the speed skater and the, and the short uh, track skaters so important to get ice underneath you and back into uh, the rhythm of competing again and it's not just that, uh, travel is difficult, everybody's uh, routines have changed. Time for a ranking final with uh, Itze van Bentem, Etienne Bastier, the Frenchman, Stan Rijks is there, Marco Giordano and Pietro Marinelli, who uh, had not the best morning, mm -hmm. Marinelli. Van Bentem made quite a good impression. Let's see what we can expect there. Let's get this party started with Itze van Bentem. Bentem. Yeah, and good Rijks start. In, in the second position. And this is what you want, eh? Can they play the Hungarian game now? Yeah. Van oh, Bentem, personal best, 43-4. Let's keep an eye on that as well, as he still leads, and he made a massive move early in the in the day already. What's Marinelli? He's a smart skater. But a gap already made by uh, Itze van Bentem. So let's see, now Marinelli's moving. Moving up to the second position. Not a lot of time to make a ah. ground and Rijks falls. Yeah, looks like his blade wasn't completely uh, on edge. But still the lead for Van Bentham made this race hard from the outset. The only way to skate a 500 meter, you cannot take any prisoners. And he wins it. And the time 43.7 for him, just above his personal best, um, which he said earlier, yeah, yesterday. Yeah. But uh, making a very good impression here, again, race-wise, from Bentham. Yeah. Yeah. And here we see the confirmation, 43.3. So uh, they've, uh, they've seen that he just improved on his personal best by a 10. Official uh, results coming in. That's well done by the young Dutchman, who's still a junior. He had free air from, uh, from out of the start, first position. And then you can see if you don't uh, are involved in fighting, in the racing, it's, uh, it's easier to uh, skate a fast time. So to keep the speed high. Definitely a very good impression again by Van Bentham. Let's be honest, he's having a very good day so far. Right, second uh, race here for Rino van Horen, Kasper Dauma, Chris Breider and uh, Barra van Damme. So it's a, let's say, an interland between uh, interland competition between the Netherlands and, and Belgium. Belgium. Yeah. Chris Breider, who earlier uh, crashed in his uh, 1500 meter uh, 
race. Let's see if we can uh, recover now to show something on this uh, 500 meter. Also a junior. Yeah. But he's been on the edge of breaking the 43 second mark earlier this year already. Yeah. yeah. During um, club competitions. So let's see what he can do. Kasper Dauma, start number 100, made quite the impression early on the 1500 meter. Here, Breider. We've already seen uh, Rino van Horen today as well as Varre van Damme. A couple of weeks ago here in Heerenveen, there was a competition held between all the uh, regional teams, the KNSB teams, RTCs. Regional training centers. Yeah. So already fast skating. As you can see, all the skaters are uh, eager. So are we, as we are done with the start, and who gets the lead? It's one of the Belgian skaters. Breider to the second position. Spadalma in third. Tucks in neatly in the slipstream of uh, the Belgian. Yeah. Makes himself really compact going into the corner. Keeping the center of gravity low. Too tight on the blocks, you can see, because he's hitting all the time the apex, but now Van Horn is making a miss. Yeah, yeah, missed, yeah. One, missed one missed one stroke. And now it's the Dutchman in the lead and he's being oh joined. It's oh it's close. Oh he missed him. He's coming back from the outside. No, yeah, it's Kasper Dalma trying to go on the inside. Takes the second position. Wonder what happened. As you can there. see, yeah. It I wonder what happened with Chris Breider because he, yeah, he totally lost the rhythm there. It's 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 the pressure on the legs to keep it tight. You want to defend as well and want to try to be in front. Got so much energy. Yeah, the lactic acid four. in the legs. And the speed is so high, uh, Nelson, so uh, any small tactical mistake is this, uh, make the difference here. Is this, uh, 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 by virtue of him taking the turns a little bit too tight, too much pressure, maybe having to hold it a little bit as well? Sometimes a little bit too early on the, on the, on the blocks, you could see him uh, hitting the, uh, the apex block. It means that he's turning a little bit too early. 43-4, the fastest time. Right, we uh, keep on going uh, with semi-finals. Which is uh, right around the corner here already. Semi-finals for the 500 meters B, the men. With uh, Daniel Tibosch. Let's listen in. And here we have a penalty for Chris Breider. He's a lane change. Uh, and was straight leaning in on yep. his uh, on, yeah. <laughs> on his countrymen. Uh, we definitely saw that. This is going to be quite interesting because we've got Dan Kos, we've got Robert Kreutzberg, we've got uh, Antonioli all in the same uh, semi-final. Dodelin is there as well. This could be uh, quite interesting. Here we see um, uh, with 53, uh, we see Philippe Dodelin, one of the young Canadian here. Although he's not a junior. So you see again after a few <laughs> minutes they need to skate uh, skate again. Just made uh, just had a quarterfinals. Shaking his head, Dodela. Here we go. First of the semi-finals. Best two skaters qualify for the final. And we're off and away. And who gets the lead? It's the Hungarian. It's uh, Daniel Tibos. Fighting from uh, the Italian and the Latvian guy. Cruz Bears, it's uh, Dan Kos. Pretty solid in second. See what he can do. This is different to his quarterfinal when he was chasing Cruz Bears. Everybody was chasing Cruz Bears. He was now in third. Kos in Inside. second. Oh, Closes nice. the door really yeah, yeah. nicely. Have to be Dodelin moving up to third position. This is good. Great move. Into can the last lap. Can he keep second? It's still uh, Tibosch in the lead. Kos is second. Again, you see he is quite clever in his racing and this is very well done. Impressive. Nicely done by Dan Kos. And we said it earlier, he's in great form. Just was looking at the uh, lap times you can see on our uh, 
that screen here, eight sevens, eight six. It's quite normal now for a lap skating. Eight seconds and six. 42.6 is uh, just a few hundreds above his personal best. He won't care about it because he's through to the final here. We could see solid skating because he had a, an attack from uh, Kuzbergs in the back, but he managed to, uh, to block him, to keep him away in the legal way, of course. Yeah, but he was quite clear in his yeah, move. Yeah. There was nothing to be gained there for Kuzbergs, who's a little bit dejected. We can see him here on uh, the infield. Not happy with his skating. But uh, very positive there from uh, Dankos. As we get another, uh, well, it's almost a Belgian championship uh, round in the next <laughs> semi final with uh, three Belgians here Gertjan Goedemine, uh, Adrian de Wachteren, Bart Petre. Yep, uh, we've seen them all three uh, multiple times already today, as we've done with Niels Kingma. Looks like we have like uh, a revision of Xosetushi uh, Taman Thomas here on the. He was, was he probably in advance? Is that possible? With, well, yeah, he was second in his race, Tavan Thomas behind Niels Kingma. So, so uh, just an, an omission on the uh, <laughs> on the entry list here. Good to see Thomas, who's had, uh, let's just say, a topsy turvy day so far. Young Frenchman, very compact, short yeah. guy, built for this. See this a lot in uh, the French skaters, that they are quite compact. It's a five, so... Not no, easy for Kingma to... Uh, not easy no, for Kingma no. to progress here, but not impossible. Normally he's quite fast starter, so let's see if he can uh, outstar the Gumbine. <laughs> and he uh, does, he <laughs> does, certainly. <laughs> Even Tawas Tawan Toma. He takes the lead, Kingma takes the lead for Thomas. The three Belgians are trying to keep pace with them. And he's going for this, Kingma. He's had a fall, he's had some strong skating as well today. And he's in the lead of this second uh, semi final. Thomas behind him. But the third guy is closing in. It's one of the Belgians. Yeah. It's Gumbine. And now let's see. Still close up. It's still uh, Kingma. Bell tolls for him. Thomas in second. Gumbine on Thomas the outside. Can't do it. This yeah, is a bit of a mistake by Kingma, but still in front, you can see still in the speed. Uh, At the end, Sully, solid. Very well done by Kingma, very well done. His start was uh, the foundation yeah. for the rest of his race, but he kept his composure really, really well. We have the first place. Now he can start fast, but you know, uh, he did, uh, he did 2,500 meters in his... <laughs> And the 42.3, strong time for him as well. Uh, Thomas, 42.4. So they are through to uh, the final as well. So we've got two young Dutchmen there uh, yep. to uh, to cheer on in terms of uh, uh, the Dutchmen here. It's a nice atmosphere. Okay, we've got no people on the, uh, no spectators on the grandstands. COVID regulations here. It's very important for the invitational, uh, the International Invitation Cup to give all these skaters the best start of their official season as they can. And that's uh, definitely the priority. And what a start we've had today. Time for ice preparation. It means that we have some time uh, to look forward to uh, more top level uh, skating. And, uh, we've got a few, few great races to come today because we're here up until five o'clock. For now, uh, let's uh, go for ice preparation. When we're back, we're gonna run through some results and uh, get our breath back before the finals. 500 meters, it's gonna be fun.
spelers van Nederlandse Loterij. Bedankt voor de ruim 168 miljoen die jullie bij elkaar hebben gespeeld. Voor sport en beweging. Voor Nederland. 168 miljoen. Spelers, bedankt. Niels en Eve gaan voor een lagere energierekening. En dat begint met isoleren. Glaswol, kitten, toch strips, uh, andere andersom. En dicht. Oh, ja, bam. Isolatie. Je krijgt het er warm van. Yo, deur dicht. Mijn huis duurzaam maken. Ik kan het. Gamma.
welcome back.
as was going for it, just to uh, step inside. And, uh, side to side, they entered the corner. Uh, Gumin and, and uh, Kruisbest. Well, let's see what Gumin is still on the ice. Yeah, we're not seeing it on the stream, but we are able to see it that Gumin is on the ice and that uh, the medics are with him. It was quite a, a hard fall and he went in skate first. Yeah. Normally, most of the short trackers, when they crash into, crash into, uh, let's see. Most most of the time, they st they step up easily and uh, they continue skating. So that's what you learn as well in short track. If you crash, just stand up as fast as possible, skate it off, basically. <laughs> yeah. But he isn't, and let's hope he's okay because the last thing we want is uh, any skater being uh, being hurt. It is uh, quite a contact sport. There's quite a lot of, uh, of risk being taken. Yeah. And this is, especially in the 500 meters, something that can happen. There's a, um, uh, a wheelchair being readied for him. Could be something with his uh, ankle. Yeah. It was a hard hit. The sound it made into the Borning yeah. was uh, quite impressive in a negative way. And as we say, we definitely hope Gumine, who's had a difficult day culminating in this fall. Let's hope he is okay. He is being wheeled literally off the track. Could be the safety track. as well. The shoes they, uh, they are wearing, the short one. It's quite his stiff. It's his left leg yeah. and he's keeping it upright, yeah. which leads me to believe it's not the ankle. Let's see. Could be ankle or maybe uh, shin. He's hurt himself definitely. Look at the face of Gertje uh, Gumina. And let's hope he's okay. Yeah. Let's hope uh, he'll be fine. Um, and if not, he'll be fine quite quickly again. Um, but this is all in the game of, uh, of short track. Robert Kutzbergs, he won. Uh, unofficial result because they're actually still looking at it. Um, considering the tumble uh, Gertjan Fumine took, it's uh, not that strange that we're still waiting. Then Images then are back. We have a uh, yes, yellow yes. card uh, for uh, dangerous behavior for the number 53, uh, Philip Dodelam. Yellow card for Philip Dodelam. Yeah, he was the third one trying to take advantage of the situation. Yeah, eh? exactly. So in the last corner he came uh, kind of inside. That's why uh, Gumine crashed. I'm happy to report we have our uh, our screens back. So on top of the fact that we're really with our noses on top of the ice, we now also have our screens back. And hopefully you've been uh, continuing to follow the International Invitation Cup. Um, mostly in English, we'll do this in English mostly uh, throughout the day, but here and there, especially with the big results, we'll try to uh, uh, sum up what's happening in, in Dutch as well when the results come. But happily, uh, most of the Dutch fans speak uh, pretty good English. And this International Invitation Cup has drawn such an internationally strong field. It's reflected in the commentary. Even in this B competition, <laughs> the field is already strong. So <laughs> still <laughs> still coming up the uh, the A competition. Jos Kingma, Tavan Toma, Daniel Tibors and Dan Kos. Dan Kos putting in some extra work to get uh, everything in order. Getting some uh, some tension on the muscles there. It's good to see Kingma here in the uh, TA final after his uh, 1500 meters well double, fall. <laughs> double. <laughs> double fall, double 1500. So, uh, and then in, uh, well, I believe in within 20 minutes, like two race racing two times 500 meter and solid. Let's yeah. see what he can do in this final. And let's not forget, say an hour ago, he was clutching his yeah. lower back yeah. after the fall. He didn't look all that comfortable, but. Um, uh, short track skaters are made of sterner stuff. And unless uh, the there's something serious, you'll get uh, right back of the horse figuratively. Speaking, time for Sander, of, uh, Niels Kingma to be called up for the start. Alongside Tawan Toma, we might have the two fastest starters next to each other. As uh, you should have in this 500 yeah. meters. In uh, third starting position, Daniel Tibosch and Dan Kos, the second young Dutchman in this field. I am eager to see what we can expect and what we'll get from, um, from this. Could be anything. It could be very fast.
and we're off and away. And who gets the lead? It's, it's Kingma. Kingma. Oh, he had to fight for it though. And Tibor tries to take advantage. A few extra steps to get a little bit of extra speed into the corner. And Kingma leads. Tibor second. Thomas in third. He made the move for the lead and he gets pushed back to the third. Tibor can chase now to Kingma. Different lines, but still have to watch the Taman Tomas behind him. Now he's closing up the gap. Now he's trying for it, yeah. T-Bosch. Into the gap, but no, but the really door's Really good defense. Good defense by Kingma. Last lap, let's see what he can do. Darkos uh, goes into third, past Toma, but doesn't get the exit he wants. Last lap, and now he has to be strong, stay strong and win, and he does. Kingma takes uh, the win. Extremely well raced, uh, race execution uh, very strong today. He was strong at the start as well because Tamant Thomas started really quickly, quickly but he could uh, manage to stay inside him, King Ma inside of Tamant Thomas. That's why Tamant uh, Taman Thomas fell back to uh, position three. And this is important as well in the start to make the good decision. Sometimes you need to, uh, yeah, to, to give your position away. In this case, Tamant Thomas could have done better to take the second position. Don't fight with Kingma, just go behind him. Yeah, but if you don't try, you it's don't get it. That's uh, uh, that's uh, exactly what just happened. Let's uh, take these results and we'll do it in Dutch. Uh, Robert Kusbergs has the B final in the 500 meter B divisie heeft gewonnen en Niels Kingma toch wel heel knap als alles uh, helemaal uh, goed gekeurd wordt en daar lijkt het op heeft hij de A-finale gewonnen na een super start en een goede move ook om uh, Daniel Tibors de pas af te snijden. We hebben echt hele goede finales gezien ook bij de dames Valcipina, Ariana Valcipina die uh, wist te winnen. Uh, een, hele, een hele mooie afstand zojuist ja, en dan hebben we nu Weer een moment van ijspreparatie. Dan gaan we langzaam maar zeker naar uh, um, ja, de relays. Een hele fraaie relay fase. Um, just uh, in Dutch, we'll move back to English as we go to ice preparation as well. And we get ready. We leave the 500 meter behind for now. And uh, we get ready for some relay action. And stay with us on this live stream, the schaatsen.nl en KNSB live stream. And we'll be back as soon as the skaters are back on the ice. Spelers van Nederlandse Loterijen, bedankt voor de ruim 168 miljoen die jullie bij elkaar hebben gespeeld. Voor sport en beweging, voor Nederland. 168 miljoen. Spelers, bedankt.
Welcome back here in the live stream of the KNSB International Invitation Cup in Tialf Herenveen. 
um, let's say the official kickoff of the short track season for a lot of top skaters and we've seen a lot of top races already on this uh, the second day of competitions yesterday qualifying uh, ra qualifying races opening uh, uh, salvos on a lot of uh, events and we're heading into a portion of the day that's uh, dominated by relays and that's going to be very interesting um, we've seen 1500 meters we've seen 500 meters justin but now it's relays now it's team now it's uh, up to the mixed relays we're going uh, to look at and this is a uh, uh, oh, new event on uh, what well, kind of new event a couple of years we are doing the mixed relays now but first time on the olympics as well just getting uh well it was really interesting just because it's really short 18 18 laps two ladies two men the timing of uh, the overtake is going to be very, very interesting, the relays, because you'll have to push and you'll have to figure out a team that is uh, balanced enough yes. to make certain that uh, that everybody is able to shine. There's no sense in putting two very heavy men there. You don't want to have a, a weak weakness in your chain. Everyone needs to be, uh, be spot on. Yeah, so for this first race, we'll see uh, Hungary, uh, Hungary B in this case, because uh, Hungary puts in uh, two teams, large, large, uh, short, uh, short track uh, skating nation, with uh, Sara Bashai, uh, Rebecca Sileci Nemeth, uh, Peter Jaspasati, and uh, John Henry Kruger, interesting name, we'll come to him in a bit. Uh, Italy C, which means uh, we'll see a lot more of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Italy C, Joriati, Valcepina, Antonioli, and uh, Giordano. And the Netherlands in action here with Selma Poutsman and Michel Velzeboer, Dylan Hogewerf and Melle van het Wout. Although we've got the three teams here together, it's going to be yeah. very interesting. You see this in a lot of different sports that mixed uh, team events. Uh, you see this in athletics as well as well as in swimming. So what I have to do first is just skating two and a half laps, and then the second time when I come in, it's two laps. So this is the situation which uh, by the rules. First skating two and a half lap, all the skaters, and then two laps. So the order is kind of arranged by the rules. Yeah, and the Netherlands currently in third. Let's see if they can change this. Could you see now the skaters of the uh, the A competition? So this is the first time they step on the ice today. Uh, not for everybody. Not that's for everybody, the case. of uh, course. Gloria Iorati and Ariana Valci. Well, the entire Italian team has already skated, and there we see a move by the Dutch team. Melle van Wout is moving up to second position. Selma Poutsma and Michel Velzeboer. We've seen them already. Now Melle van Wout trying to go on the outside there. With now John Henry Kruger. That's one of the leading lights for the uh, Hungarian and, uh, men. In the second position, Dylan Hogewerf, uh, the, uh, the, yeah, the Dutch champion. Let's see if he can make a move. We're halfway through this race. It is short, it's sweet, it's very intense. Kruger, former American skater, yeah. changed nation uh, nationalities, is uh, uh, did his job. Out of Sky. Uh, She's in front now. Oh. Good move Slipping. on the outside. See if there's a, an opening there for Felsible. the Netherlands. Can do it. Not yet, but definitely strong. And the push. They go to Bautzma and... Uh, oh. A little bit of a miss there, uh, there for Bautzma and she moves back to third. Missed one of her strokes. She kept upright. That's the most important thing. And now pushing the men. Let's see what Van Wout can do. Oh, very good. Van good Wout, one. two seconds. And Poutsma definitely put in a lot of energy to push him off there. Three laps to go. And it's very Final close. exchange. Let's see what Dylan Hoogweff can do. Melle van Wout is delivering me to you. And oh, he tried on the inside, but again, Kruger closes off that door, that opening. So still hungry in the lead, ahead of the Netherlands. Italy is starting to feel that they've raced already. Hogeweb is trying for the inside. Now he's going. Ah, oh, phenomenal. Fantastic. Can he hold it? No, Oy. no. it's uh, Hungary that wins ahead of the Netherlands, but a real good try there from Hogeweb. He got past, but he couldn't hold the corner. Couldn't keep the door closed. So Selma Pausma, Michel Velzeboer, Dylan Hogeweb, and uh, Melle van Wout, they finish second. Great skate by uh, the Hungarian team. 
you can see from uh, the way the Italians manifested themselves at the start of the race compared to the end that they already have done a lot today, this Italian team. Because that is the case, this was the team that already raced a lot. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll uh, move on straight away. 41 there, that's uh, Michelle Velsevoor had a good skate. Selma Poutsma as well. Although I think it was Poutsma who nearly fell. And uh, fell back to third at least. Uh, but kept it going, which is the most important thing in any relay situation. Next up, Hungary A. And uh, that entry list, those names, it's time for the big guns. Yes, especially with, <laughs> with uh, the current race, with two Dutch teams. Uh, three Dutch three teams. Dutch teams. Ex excuse me, three Dutch teams and Hungary A. This is going to be fun. Both brothers Liu on the, on the track. As well as uh, Sarah Bakshai and Petra Yasapati. Uh, for Netherlands C, Rianne de Vries, Yara van Kerkhoff, Daan Briosma, Jens van der Dwout. Netherlands A, Xandra Velzeboer, Anne Floor Otter, Itzak de Laat, Sven Roes. And Netherlands B, Georgie Dalrymple. Susanne Schulting is here. Kai Huisman and Shinky Knecht. Well, try to figure out which team is the strongest here. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm, for I'm waiting this for an answer. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is I'm hard to for say. An this is really hard to say. This is going to be fun. Well, Netherlands CRA, quite good. Dalrymple starting, Velzeboer starting, De Vries starting, and uh, Bakshai. But starting. in Netherlands B we have Schulting and Knecht. Yeah, it's difficult to beat, eh? As we start off here, very interesting to see Bakshai into the lead ahead of De Vries. Maybe a little bit of a move there by Velzeboer. Ooh, quite a move in green. There, Rianne De Vries. In blue, it's Velzeboer. This is helpful for us, these colors. And, and Bakshai giving over to Yasapati, 21. Although I believe they've made a change mm -hmm. there. So Yasapati was starting. Yeah. Now we see, oh, Kerikov <laughs> against Schulting and Schulting is passing inside, going to the lead. Wow. Yeah, well, she's uh, giving over to Kai Huisman now. She's uh, she's the boss here and leads. Kai in, in the lead now. Kai Huisman, he'll uh, pass over to Shinky Knecht, but Netherlands in the lead. Netherlands A, no, excuse me, Netherlands Xiaowang B. Xiaowang Liu is now passing inside. Two hands on his back, quite easy. And passing over to his brother. It's uh, Itzak de Laat behind Shinky, Shinky Knecht now. Itzak de Laat from the blue team of the Netherlands. Closing the gap. With Sander Liu. Is there a move from Knecht? No. He looked, but he couldn't find. Removing the exchange are really relay. important as well, as you can see. If you have a good push from the other... Whoa. Whoa. Nearly, uh, Nearly fell miss. over. And her skate shooting away from her, which means that there is a gap now with the Hungarian team. Yasapati leading. And I think no uh, Bashai, definitely no Bashai, because she just skated in the opening race, so we have a different uh, makeup of this team, of the Hungarian team, doesn't really matter for the end result, because and it's the team. going inside, so strong. Making it, it look easy, and the move there. Now it will be interesting, because the Orange team is in, uh, in front, and uh, Shinki is the guy to finish. So there, Kai Huisman. Can Kai Huisman deliver Shinky in the front? So then it will be a nice race uh, between the Liu. Yeah, he's closing the gap. Uh, still in the lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shinky Knecht in the lead ahead of Sandro Liu. But then easy pass by Liu. Very, well, let's say efficient, efficient skating there by the Hungarian. Shinky Knecht will have to try it in a final push. Can he make a move? Doesn't look like it. No. So it is uh, Hungarian. A, Hungary A, uh, Netherlands uh, A, Netherlands B, B. A, and Netherlands A there. Um, Netherlands A in third position and the fourth position was for the Netherlands C. This was interesting. This was very interesting and close in the end between uh, Hungary A and As you mentioned B. before, the, 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 the team need to be balanced and now you can see that uh, Kai, Kai Huisman, the youngster, still growing into the team. 
doing well, but it's so hard. You, you need to have a good exchange. So between Huisman and Shinki uh, uh, wasn't the best exchange. So it was easier for the Liu brothers to uh, to pass. But if you're gonna try this and uh, well um, test this and get better at it in race conditions, this is the moment to do it. Yeah. With the mixed relay here. So investing there, not being too harsh on uh, Huisman, definitely not. Skated a good race, but the Hungarian team just a little bit, uh, a little bit better. Although Susanna Schulting made really a good impression here. Have a look at uh, Shinki Knecht is now going to Otterham. Shinki hates it when he can't really race because the last exchange wasn't really well. And Liu could pass him easily just because of the the difference in speed. And, uh, this is this is what Shinki uh, detests. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and he wants to win so. Uh, so so bad. Well, it's a mark of a true champion. Um, yeah, what we really can say is that the Liu brothers are strong. They've come strong out of the summer. Uh, as well as Susanna Schulting, she looks in fine form. This summer, uh, Susanna trained a lot with the, with the men of the team. And you can see that this uh, makes her so much better. And she's tempo tough, as they say, because yeah. last week she did um, a long track event here uh, and raced 1500 meters in a personal record, really strong time as well. So she can take some beating here and uh, looking strong for later in the day. Um, races come fast, they flow fast, and uh, it means that we're already heading into a new ice preparation sequence. Means that we'll be back as soon as the skaters are back on ice. Uh, we have to catch our breath after all these interesting teams in uh, the relay, the mixed relay, uh, starting off this second part of yep. the day.
Welcome back here in the International Invitation Cup, Tiof, here in Veen. Uh, a lovely day for short track skating and a lovely way to be able to show it to you all via the Straatsen.nl and KNSB uh, stream, live stream. And we'll do it, we're doing it in English mostly simply because we've got an international field and an international following for this one. Um, but we're headed into a very interesting uh, afternoon with a lot of top skaters world best skaters here uh, as well as uh, very interesting uh, new numbers or numbers that are coming up including the relay for the women that's coming up next and uh, just alongside of me um, yes this is an interesting one because we're seeing two Dutch teams in the opening uh, race um, difficult to see this is a test for uh, uh, the coach Jeroen Alter to yeah. see uh, yeah, what works and what doesn't and give everybody a little bit of a, a push ahead of this Olympic season. He's really trying to find out what uh, what will be the best uh, setup uh, for uh, for his team, and uh, even still in this uh, this time, he's he's, he's trying to uh, to make a selection for the World Cups uh, as well. So even the relay is important for this selection. Not only the individual distances, but as well the relay is important to be part of the team, yep. uh, which we will take to uh, to the World Cups. And the nature of this event is to give everybody as much ice time as they can. And so in this first race, we'll see a combined team of the French and the Hungarian skaters uh, with Grenoyou, Olivier, Somodi and Somoji, just to give these uh, skaters some more uh, time to get used to the ice again, but also uh, uh, work on a lot of stuff ahead of this Olympic uh, season. Hungary also has a dedicated team in the second race with uh, Bashkai and Yasapati. Sileci in Nemet, but uh, yeah, we'll keep our eyes firmly on the Dutch team, especially with a lot of uh, top skaters there, as well as the Italian uh, team, uh, interestingly called the B team, but Confortola, Joriati, Valcipina and Viviani uh, could be very interesting, although Ariana Fontana is here as well in uh, the Italy A team, I think a similar situation to the Dutch team, yeah. trying to figure out what works best. Yeah. Fontana, Olympic champion, obviously, 500 meters. After the uh, the relay woman, we will uh, continue with the relay men as well. Don't have the start list yet from uh, from that one. But, uh, probably uh, the coaches will mix up the teams uh, as well to find out uh, what will be the best uh, setup. Part of the uh, let's say prep work for this season is uh, figuring out if you've got. Uh, the ideal situation in the relays, an important medal to win in uh, European World Championships and of course the Olympics in Beijing later this season, early next year, which is uh, firmly set in the agendas of all these skaters. This is why we're here, to ge give everybody uh, the correct start of the Olympic season in this International Invitation Cup. It's a lovely, lovely venue to skate in, although it would have been better, obviously, if we had uh, a couple of thousand um, happy short track speed skating fans. Uh, not the case, simply because the organization really wanted to give all the skaters the, uh, let's say, the safest way to start their season. And 
in the meantime, our start list for uh, the relays for the gentlemen have come in as well for the men. And uh, the Hungarian team is strong, <laughs> a lot of strong teams. We'll get to that after the women's events. Uh, but Justin is already going through them here as well. It is going to be interesting. We're in the final stages of this uh, uh, ice preparation. And then it's time to get uh, these relays started. Semi-finals. So it's going to be very interesting. So I have an A final and a B final just to give everybody more ice time. It's uh, this semi-final. The first two teams will uh, qualify for the uh, for the A final. See them all ready, eager to go. Looking at uh, Samra Velzerboer, 39 there. With 23, Barbara Somoji in the uh, combined team. And we're about ready to go. And most of these uh, skaters have been on the ice a lot already today. Although, uh, for others, especially the skaters that usually uh, will race in the A divisions, uh, these are th basically the opening salvos of the day. Yeah. Well, not too bad to open with the relay. It's a good warm up uh, to start of the day. Yeah. See Dol Rimpel there, as well as uh, Yara van Kerkhoff, Olympic medalist. As well. But very positive to see that. Uh, that we've got such a strong lineup, such a strong field here for this weekend. Susanne Schulting. Also, uh, she's got a game phase on, and she looked very strong in a mixed relay earlier. Yeah, let's see what she can do uh, in this race in the green team. Team Green there for Netherlands A, Netherlands B is in the red. You've got the combined efforts of France and Hungary, and you've got the Canadian team here with uh, Bachon, Garo, who's already had a penalty today, Belly, and Arisha Miaokchi. A little bit of uh, wait. Yeah, probably. Ah, some of the French ladies needed to check the blades. You. Yeah, in the green team of the Netherlands, we have uh, Susanne Schulting and Jarek van Kerkhoff, the two uh, experienced racing uh, skaters, combined with Dal Rimpel and Velzeboer, uh, upcoming uh, skaters. And this is what you see eh, in these races, combining experience with uh, youthful talent, giving them the experience they need to be easily added to the team in, in times of need. Yeah, and this is the red team of the Netherlands with uh, Selma Poutsma starting to... First position, giving over to uh, Xandra Velsboer in red, in the red jersey, and uh, we have Schulting in yeah. second. So the two Dutch teams currently leading. A very strong, strong uh, generation in the women's skating. And in red, still in the lead. This means uh, that Anna it's... Floor Otter. Yeah, Floor Otter on the floor with number 40. So far, so good for all these teams. Start number eight, we see coming up, Victorio Garro. So that's the, that's the Canadian team in the orange. But very good performance so far from the red team from Netherlands B. Looking over the shoulder, underneath the, uh, the arm, basically. See where uh, the competitor was. In the red team: Xandra, uh, Velsboer, Selma, Pouts, Marianne de Vries. Normally in the in the, well, in the A team. And not to see this as a, some sort of a demotion, but you need a good group, and not just four skaters to get through the season. Uh, still, red leads. Netherlands B. 18 laps to go. Anna Flo Otter, the lead. Gidal Rimpel behind her. Oh. A little bit of a difficult changeover, but yeah. all went well. Michel Velzeboer in green, but they're not shaking off the competition here. Need to be with uh, by 
to get through to the A final, you need to be amongst the top two teams. Yeah, the combined team of France and Hungary is uh, really still well. joining the race, following up. United Nations racing, let's yeah. say. Like that, and still Netherlands be in the lead. Well, let's see what uh, Susanne Schulting will do now. Will she still wait? Or will it be time to uh, move up to the first position? She still will wait uh, this round. Yeah, she's uh, keeping her powder dry. Well, as normally it were. around like 12, uh, 12 to 8 laps, you want to be in front and to, uh, to get the pace up higher and to, uh, to finish it off in the first position. Yeah, outside or move. Or at least to bring your uh, finished rider in a good position. Outside move. Again, Georgie is trying to deliver uh, move Michelle, there. but oh. Rianne, still, uh, Rianne de Vries still blocking uh, Michelle Velzeboer. She had to back out of it, eh? Velzeboer. The younger sister, uh, younger sister of Xandra, very talented. Well, main aim should be obviously to get both teams t uh, through to the A final, but you can't really guess on it. You have to be certain of what you're doing here. And How what are we going to see? Yeah, what yeah, are we going to see? Speeding up now, you can see, because the Hungarian and uh, France team is dropping. And what will Schulting do? She's, she's, she's looking. Yeah, there yeah. she's going, yeah, there she's she going. Yeah. Oh. You and can see set, uh, setting it up. Now the exchange is important to Georgie. Yeah, Georgie Dalrymple had a bit of a, a wobble in the mix relay, but she's looking very strong here. One of the new generation of skaters. And what are the five well laps to go? Dutch short track skating is so incredibly fortunate in terms of uh, the selection as it is. All top class uh, athletes, world yeah. class. And still, Netherlands A ahead of Let's Netherlands see. B. This will be interesting now going to the Move last there. two laps. Yeah, Selma is trying to go inside. No, no room. So. Again, so well, normally Schulting won't lose this. Velzeboer uh, can really race. There's a little bit of ego here riding on it. A little bit of prestige. It's going to be the two Dutch teams if oh, there is a missed Georgie opportunity. Didn't. What happened there? Uh, in Let's the end see if Nen this will. It's a penalty, possibly. Yeah. yeah, and look at Schulting. Shaking her head, Dalrymple seemed to have lost the plot in terms <laughs> yeah. of where they were in the race. Tried to move in for an, uh, an over, to over a changeover, but in the end it wasn't necessary, it was the finish. And now it's going to be interesting to see what is going to happen here. Could Netherlands A be taken out of the equation altogether? Because Might be possible if she uh, blocked uh, one of the other skaters or just involved uh, the racing. I'm not sure what the ref will do if he say, okay, this is an uh, well, incident. But and this is part of, uh, let's say, the uh, the opening phase of a season. Yeah. And Just all the processes need to be well hammered in. It's better to do it now than in the Olympic final. Yes, where uh, they may not be as forgiving. Well, <laughs> normally, as you can hear after the, well, the final final three laps are uh, going, uh, you hear the... The shot, gun shot, gun fire of the starter. That means that there's only one exchange allowed. The only thing is, is that Schulting never touched Dalrymple, which is the most important thing in this one. Well, the ref, uh, Giel Bisma, is most of the time a video referee in uh, international uh, races as well. It's uh, now uh, checking on. It is going to be interesting. Have they figuratively shot themselves in the foot. Two Italian teams in the next races, in the next race, as well as uh, the French team and the Hungarian team. Sort of similar dynamic, sort of similar to what we just had with the Netherlands. See the uh, Italy A team looks looks strong, and they're looking. The uh, judges are looking. The referees at what just occurred. So, what's the verdict? Yeah, the verdict is that they have uh, gotten a penalty. I couldn't really hear the uh, 
the explanation. Explanation of the uh, announcer. Means that Probably they that they stepped into the lane, yeah. skating lane. That means that they won't be in action to in the final. A final, yeah. yeah. So false start here for the second of the semis. Italy A with Cynthia Masi uh, Masito, yeah. Ariana Sigel, Martina Valcepina and Ariana Fontana. Confortola and Joriati, Valcepina and Viviani in the second Italian team, Team B in blue. We've got uh, the French team of Gwendoline Dodet, Tiffany Marchand, Aurélie, Aurélie Levic, and Aurélie Monvoisin. And the Hungarian team of uh, Sarah Bashkai, Petra Yazapati, Konya, and Silechi Nemet. Oh, oh. yeah, the collision. And that sounded like we need to now look at some skates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately go to the side. See yeah. both Italian, uh, France and Italian are uh, going to the side. You have a look to this uh, France team. This is normally your, uh, their well, A setup, their team. Dodet, Uo Marchand, Levesque, and Montvoisin. And now the work starts to get uh, everything in order, technically, again. As you called it earlier, the pit stop. Yeah. Waiting to uh, to get started here again. So Aurélie Levesque, who uh, checked on her blades, tension is gone now uh, probably on the on the blades, so she can uh, start again, take her place. Sofia Konya starting for the Hungarian team, number 21, on the outside. Interesting start so there. Cipinadi. He's going to the first position. A lot of effort put in in that start. Now we can see who are the skaters to finish. It's uh, Fontana for uh, Italy A to, uh, to do the finish. We've got With, uh, Joriatti in uh, second place. Yeah, exactly. And she's done a lot already today, Gloria Joriatti. So it's quite an interesting mix of fresh skaters and uh, well-spent athletes. Close racing already. Just finding their position. See the Hungarians are moving up. Oh, in the crest on the inside. Yeah, 26. One of the Hungarians. Let's see no, if they uh, touched. Yeah, and Comfortola is the one who went uh, yeah. to the ice. Elisa Comfortola. But does it look like still in the race because they just delivered the exchange? Yeah. And if you miss it, if you miss the switch over. It's particularly hard on uh, the skaters already on the ice, already in the lane. Uh, Fontana looking solid. As you'd expect from top, Fontana. Top class uh, short track racer. Who's been here forever, it seems. <laughs> yeah. I believe at age 16, uh, she was already skating World Cups. Now one of her uh, nemeses we haven't seen for a while, Elise Christie. Yeah, missing as well. Uh, pretty skaters. Yeah. Don't know exactly why they aren't here. I remember Elise Christie, although she came out of the Olympics uh, mm -hmm. injured. Uh, she had a, a tough Olympics. She announced that she was going to switch over to long track. Never really uh, happened, it yeah. seemed. And we haven't seen her since, I feel. Or at least not on uh, the correct level. Level is great from the Italian team so far. With uh, Martina Valcepina taking the lead, she's now take she's now been um, supplanted by Ariana Fontana. Montvoisin, second position for France. Looking very comfortable. Yeah, taking it it's easy. Not too bad. Now you can see France. here now in the third position, uh, Elisa Confortola, that she uh, has had a morning of racing. The other two skaters in front are uh, skating easily. Whoa. She's working. <laughs> Not great for a changeover if you lose speed like that for the Hungarian team. But still all to play for. With uh, a possibility to get two Italian teams through to the A final. Although the French are looking particularly strong as well. Aurélie Levoque there on the ice. Levoque in second, yes. It's Konya who is closing the gap for the Hungarian again. Not delivering. Uh, 
Ja ze Patty. Going to be very interesting to see as this final relay six laps. ends. Yeah. Yeah. We're now you need to be in the good position. And there we have for at least a few meters an Italian one two. Still it's team red. And Ariana Sigel in the lead, although she's being pressured. Change over there to Masito. Oh, hey, and again the miss it of the Hungarians, so they are now out of racing, you can see. So focus on the both Italian teams and France. It's heading to the last three laps. See the gunfire. There it is. So one changeover allowed from now. Now. Oh. Yeah, Fontana will be delivered in first position. The way she likes it, the way yeah. she needs to do. Wide entry, trying to get yeah, as much she speed. Knew, she knew she had uh, the space to do it, and as you can see, she takes the speed, and creates the gap. It's an Italian one-two, because behind Fontana, oh, we see the second team now. Although it's not done, yeah. it yeah. is now. You only the, uh, yeah, good luck. Uh, in the end, and uh, well looking Mozart. strong, yeah. eh, Fontana. Looking very strong, very relaxed as well. Let's see what you can do uh, more uh, today. Great relay, and happy Italians. Yeah. And we're still, uh, we still have two to go for the men. Confirmation, the Italian teams, although this, I don't know. Don't don't yeah, let's see. Well, it, it is correct compared to the unofficial result we're getting as well. So France may have just pipped them on the, s on the finish. We're not straight on the line here from our position, so sometimes it's hard to see uh, if they outfinish each other. And straight through for the men. Right, two Dutch teams in uh, this first race, and two Dutch teams in the second race. Coach Rune Otter has brought everybody along that he wants to see. Yeah, interesting to, uh, to see the, the Netherlands D, and the green jerseys. We have Hessel van Berg and Hugo Bosma, Daan Kos, and Niels Kingma. The youngsters uh, who have raised called them. Lot. Yeah. It's good to have them uh, on the ISIS team. And then the Netherlands C, all kind of combined team, because we have uh, Sebastian Lepap uh, in it together with uh, Brunsman and uh, Amons, both uh, national team uh, skaters, and uh, Teun Boer, who is uh, joining uh, the army of Dave Steeg, the regional team, RTC North. It's so incredibly important that these regional training centers in every country that you have a constant flow of new talent coming up. Just looking at uh, Niels Kingma and uh, looking for very him, happy. You have, but believe me, you can skate against uh, the Liu brothers. Yeah, Just and and Le Pop. and Le Pop and all top class uh, short trackers. And uh, this is the best learning school for these well youngsters uh, there is. If you can stand next to them uh, at the start. If you can skate behind him as well to learn to see. Yeah, so incredibly valuable, apart from the fact that they want to try and uh, make the final, obviously. In the Hungarian team, we've got Jessa Pati, Kruger, and uh, the Liu brothers. That's a strong team. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be the favorite for this one. Although the Belgian team with Desmet, De Wachteren, Petre, and Van Horen has raced a lot today. False start. We'll try again. In this International Invitation Cup. We've had some tremendous racing already. Official start of the short track season. Looking at uh, the numbers two already on the inside. The guys who will uh, finish the race. So for the Hungarians it will be uh, Xiaowang Liu. 
for the youngsters it will be uh, number 104 Hessel van Berkem and uh, the, C the C team of the Netherlands Jasper Brunsman. So the guys who are skating now and uh, of course for the Belgians Stijn de Smet who will join the uh, afternoon sessions individual as well. Five kilometers in total for this relay. Yeah, what we'll see is like uh, the first half of the race will be controlled mostly and well, around 18 laps. Normally you want to be in front to uh, to accelerate a little and to be in a good position. This is how the World Cup races normally normally goes. But now the setups are a little bit different, so we'll see maybe uh, some unexpected racing uh, we will see. Yeah, but if you push now, you'll pay for it later for yeah. sure. Although all of these athletes are very good at um, active regeneration, let's say. <laughs> yeah. Getting their uh, their uh, breath back, getting their strength back. But probably we'll see like a difference in uh, physical strength as well to uh, to maintain the speed on, on the top level. You need to be uh, well, well trained. Although all skaters are well trained, but still experience is important as well. Training years. Knowing where your limits are. Yeah. And incredible how long the Liu brothers have been uh, at the top of Hungarian skating, let alone uh, world skating. They've been there or thereabouts forever, it seems. Yeah. And still they've got some years in them. Starting to look around them how to make some money. Uh, you see a lot of uh, ads in Hungary. Yeah. They're doing a lot. Uh, they've earned it. Definitely. They've uh, been part of this Hungarian transformation. With uh, now also John Henry Kruger, part of that. Former American skater. Must have been painful for the American team. Yeah. Hessel van Berkem in uh, second position. One third of the race done. And you see them speeding up. Still the Hungarian team in the lead. Is that Dan Kos in second? Yeah, and uh, Friso Emons in, uh, in the third position. Giving over to uh, Hugo Bosma, I see, and uh, Teun Boer. Can you imagine lining up together with Sebastian Lepave? Yeah. I mean, he won't make them any wiser but they can, they can learn so much from him. Also in race preparation, dealing with, uh, with anything that comes your way. The pop on the ice now. So again, Liu in front. The laps come thick and fast. I'm looking forward to the, to the final laps of this race is uh, if uh, Jasper Brunsman can uh, make something happen. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh, I mean, you can have good racing with uh, one of the Liu brothers. If there's half a gap, you're going to go for it now, yeah. racing with the Liu brothers. Although you don't want to be the one that inflicts injury, you have to do it in a tidy way. You have to go for it. If you have the strength left, and that's going to be the most important thing. Do they have the strength left? See a little bit uh, the angles in the knees coming up. Yeah. You can see how easily now a little bit acceleration easy. The Hungarians still with the hands on the back are skating. Just the nice lines. Less easy perhaps, but still looking very strong, Niels Kingman. Yeah. Although there's a move there. Yeah, Brunsman's going inside. And this will be hard now as well. 18 laps and the ice is breaking and breaking more. You still have to cut into the same line. So you need to have pressure on your, uh, on your legs as well to keep cut through your own line. Yeah, Belgian team is moving up. The two Dutch teams have been fighting each other and that gives an easy opportunity to the Hungarian team to just pace away a little bit. Now you need to expend a lot of energy to catch, if you can, one of the Liu brothers. Teun Boer is closing the gap now. Let's see if they can stick up now or will the Hungarians uh, accelerate a little bit more. 15 laps to go. Looks like they will do uh, easy skating. Here you see Le Pop is following easily because he's just World Cup level uh, as well. Very interesting combination here. Still the Hungarians in the lead as they have been for the entire race. We're in the final third of this uh, opening semi-final of the men's relay. Five kilometers. 
Yeah, yeah, Sopati. Hungarian, yeah. Hungarian team, uh, very, very strong. Although, he's being pressured a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Fizuemon's going inside by Yazapati. Well, this nicely is a good done. move. Let's see if he can give over now. Yes. You gotta love it. You gotta love it that he tries and that they're going for it. They're not over. He's giving now. Teun Boer is giving now. You can see he's accelerating. Just to throw a spanner in the works. Let's see if he can pay. deliver Le Pap. Ah, Le Pap ahead. They're not gonna pass him that easily. Le Pap normally, although this looks strong. Uh, oh. Just oh, touching. Side skates. to side, and this is where Kingma tries to go inside of Le Pap. Beautiful race. Beautiful race. Ah. The exchange with the green team, they lost a couple of meters now. Yeah, so it's uh, two teams against each other up front. Can Brunsma follow up? He's looking strong Frieza though. need to pass now because Yasapati is the weakest link in the team of the Hungarians. There he, he goes. Does. There he does. That's knowledge, that's understanding. Well coached as well from the side. So the Netherlands in the lead. That's a bit of a surprise. With uh, Netherlands C. And Leo's passing again. Just very easily, but holding their own, really holding their own. We hear the gunshots. So one final exchange will come. Brunsman will fight against Liu. The gap is already made. Le Pap cannot close it down, obviously not. But a very, very good skate from Netherlands C. Very good. Although the Hungarian team cannot be beaten here. They look very strong. And as we see in the back, it's the Belgium team passing the green team. So and here to finish. It is Hungary ahead of the Netherlands, of Netherlands C. Then it's Belgium, and then it's Netherlands D. A lovely relay. Really nicely done. They tried. They yeah, really, really tried. At a good moment, because Friso Amons was passing uh, Yazopati at the right moment, uh, at least to, uh, to make a chance uh, of winning this race. But then at the end, if you look to the, the l difference of, uh, of class, of level, between uh, Liu and in this case uh, 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 Jasper Brunsman. He's uh, recovering from a knee injury as well. And yeah, then you can say the Liu brothers are a, a step up. <laughs> yeah. But it would give you a lot of comfort the, to know that you're already at that, at that level. Uh, and I do like the fact that they try. Yeah. You have to try. And they pinpointed the, leak, the weakest link. Yeah. And they went for it. Although then I wasn't totally convinced by Le Pap in the end as well. Looked a bit... Uh, it, it was impossible for him to close, to, close to close the gap. to close the gap to Liu. Yeah, it's... The world class. You need to be yeah. super world class. Yeah, that's the problem, man. Eh? You cannot um, have one weak link, especially if it comes to an Olympic final. This is interesting as well, the, the next race, because the Netherlands A and B team, this is bo both these eight skaters, uh, well, are, are, are ready to join the... Uh, the A force. It is going to be interesting. Shinky normally, uh, was yeah. not happy eh? no. after the mix relay. Normally, we have the uh, well, Shinky, the both brothers van Wout, Itzak de Laat, and Daan Briosma as regular setup, but still a strong Hogewerf and uh, Sven Roes uh, to join uh, to join as well. Oh. Yeah, we saw K. A. Huisman. In the mix uh, relay as well, he was probably a little bit the weakest link there. Yeah, the normally the, the 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 way of racing that Chinky uh, gets a good push from uh, from Dan or one of the other skates, and you're used to it because you train a lot on it. Uh, now you're not used to it, so uh, you could see it that the push wasn't really uh, there on spot. Yeah, uh, oh, and you can see uh, from the previous race that if there is a gap against world class uh, competitors, it doesn't really matter how good you are. Uh, then you're going to spend all your energy closing it instead of overtaking. Had a bit of a conversation <laughs> with Jeroen Otter. Shinky gonna ask him what's, uh, what's the plan. <laughs> or just fooling around. Sometimes he needs it to be relaxed. I we see him laughing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how fortunate we all are to have Shinky with us on the ice. Considering his... Uh, yeah, this is the guy he is. <laughs> He, he, can, he can race, he can really race. And uh, lucky to see him, uh, happy to see him on his level uh, back again after his uh, injury on, uh, on the fire injury. Yeah, the burns, like this, the, burns. the burns. And they can see he's, uh, he's a real, uh, real racer. And the, the brothers of Van Wout joining forces, yeah, the upcoming, really upcoming guys.
it's a lot of uh, analysis that Jeroen Otto will have to do at the end of today and tomorrow. Because well, not he only will have to make some decisions and yeah. he's not the only one. No, a complete staff behind him, embedded scientist, data, data analysis and so on and so on. But at the end, he's yes. the one who's making the decisions. Yeah. He's, the, uh, he's got uh, the final say, one would assume. And the Invitation Cup, very important in that decision. Uh, who's going with the team to the World Cups? Start of the second semi-final. Two Dutch teams, an Italian, and two uh, Italian teams, let's not forget. As we can see now, uh, Shinky and uh, Itzak will uh, finish off their uh, the race. And it's interesting because Shinky was normally the one who was finishing the races, but after his injury, uh, Itzak stepped up to, uh, to finish his race and did pretty well. So now maybe this will be uh, a race in a race to see who will be the best finisher. Yeah, and there's a lot of ri uh, ego riding on it, obviously. And as Jeroen Otterhol says, there are no guarantees, so no one is uh, secure the spot. So you need to be, you need to be the best. You need to be good. So it means that he's almost embracing the American system. If you have to fight for your place, always. He's always pushing uh, all the skaters to the limit. First five laps done, and a very comfortable uh, first five laps. Nothing really happening, though. It's the two Italian teams up front. In green. It's uh, Italy B, yeah. and Italy A is in orange. Just looking at uh, the changeovers. Still in green, Italy B in the lead. Is that our friend uh, Antonio Antonioli again? Seems so. See Shinky still skating different lines to uh, come out of the corner, or well to have to have, a, to have different possibilities to come out of the corner, tight or wide. So yeah. It's called the deep track racing. What he does, he's like a master in it to get the, into the corner deep and then steer in on his right. So it basically means just push in and try to hold it. Yeah. Which is a let's call it a dive bomb, <laughs> uh, but you do have to maintain your line in the end be strong enough to exit the corner keep enough speed there we have a little bit of a movement there a little bit of a movement from team red that's uh, Jens van het Wout who's now in second it's the first third of this race is done Shinky Knecht takes over keeping most of his powder dry still first two move up to the A final first two teams And even in the exchange, you need to be smart. As the Dutch it's take the lead. Good move there. Yeah, it's all about timing, eh? Exchanging. Yeah. yeah. Communication. And on the inside, you have to know where everyone is in the race. Sometimes you need to have like eyes in <laughs> the back of the head. Yeah, especially in the beginning of the season when it's not all automatic especially here when you're not in basically the team you're expected to race with during the year but it was moving up as well and now the italian b team is in the fourth position still shinky knecht in the lead let's say seven laps ago the red team netherlands a took the lead but the italians staying with them Slowly but surely, we see uh, Italy B struggling to stay with them. And watch this guy in third position, Sven Roos. This is the master of. Uh, <laughs> well, he won't get tired at the end. He can still push, push, push. So he has a high tolerance. Yeah. Doesn't uh, fill up with lactic acid. Nimbly bin built. He's uh, quite light. Which is not always the easiest for team uh, for coaches to match to the heavier set uh, skaters. You have to figure it out so that you go from heavy to light for yeah. your uh, for your for the push and for the finish. Yeah, that's why it's like the lad last year is a is, the, is a finisher as well. 
to deliver the, the last razor on the, on the top speed. Now you can see 18 laps and the pace is on now. Still the Netherlands in the lead. Netherlands Melle A. Van Wout. But there's going to be a move from Netherlands B. It's Team Blue. News. He looked, he couldn't find the room yet. Who do we have uh, for the Italian team? It's uh, Tommaso Dotti, currently in second. Kai Huisman in third, the new uh, newcomer in the in the Dutch team. New arrival. Let's see what he's learned. And here <laughs> he's giving over to Dan Brusma, the most experienced guy yeah. <laughs> in the team, in probably the, in, in, probably in this whole <laughs> in, in this whole race. But the speed is increasing yep. slowly but surely. We're heading towards uh, the final. Let's say third, we're already there, with Shinky Knecht leading. Who's going to make a move? Who's able to make a move? There is a chance here, but no. See, they will wait, they will look for the good moment. Melle van Sven Roos. Yeah, van Bout pushing, yeah. and there's the move. Sven Roos inside. You could see him going outside, setting up for the attack. A and he had the, he had the room to do it, because yeah. Melle van het Wout had sort of a, a sprint off of the, the change. Just enough room for him to... Uh, to get behind his teammate, basically. His stable mate, the Dutch team, first and second now. Nine Italians to go. trying to keep with them. A lot of interest. Ooh. Wide in. Quick out for This is the a blue good team. exchange for the blue team. You could see that Itzak is light, pushed inside. But Shinky is, yeah, this is good. <laughs> good <laughs> racing. Well, this is what you want to see. Three, four changes of position. And, and now he's going, Sven Roos. You could see accelerating. Bam. Lovely, lovely Taking style. Taking a gap. Yeah. Giving over to Kai Huisman. Can he maintain the speed? Now it's important to build up to the last exchange to keep the speed in. And there's a problem for Team Red because Italy is passed. Yeah. Italy Dylan is passed. Overwerf. Final Shotgun. lap. And now Dan. Brilsma will deliver. Itzak de Laat. Let's see what Schinke can do. Well, he needs to do something, otherwise uh, Netherlands A is out of it. Here's the move. He's passed into second. Netherlands B leads. Itzak de Laat, Schinke Knecht in second. He will not be really happy. And there's the oh. move from Italy. Wow. Is it too Siegel. late? Siegel versus This is a telescopic Knecht. leg as well. Oh. They're out of it. Netherlands A is out of it. Netherlands B wins. And it's Italy A that... Springs a surprise. Splendid pass by uh, Seagal at the end. I believe he did it at the Worlds last year as well, one of the World Cups. Don't underestimate him. Let's talk about a real skating family, the Seagal it family. <laughs> yeah, it is. But Itzak de Laat, and especially, and you, it probably was Sven Rus, I'm not entirely certain, but Itzak de Laat got set up really nicely with yeah, 10 by laps Dan to go. First, oh. Yeah, by 10 laps ago, it was a Sven Rus who was accelerating and then uh, could give over to uh, Kai Huisman and then yeah the uh, old guy but well someone who is really important in the relay Dan Briosma who's maintaining speed and uh, makes sure that uh, the number two the finisher will be delivered in a good position yeah, that's what he's really excellent at absolutely we're gonna switch to Dutch for a little bit just to uh, round up what we've seen in this morning and especially during the relays ja, dames en heren, in het Nederlands heel eventjes een uh, mixed bag, zullen we maar zeggen, voor het Nederlandse team. Een, uh, een penalty voor uh, een van de Nederlandse teams, het team van onder andere Suzanne Schulting ja. in de relays. Want uh, het was Georgie Dalrymple die op het moment dat het niet meer mocht de baan in kwam voor een wissel die niet nodig was. Uh, dus uh, ook al hadden ze gewonnen, ze zullen niet in de A-finale gaan verschijnen. En voor het Nederlandse team, uh, Nederland A bij de heren... Toch een verrassing hoor. Shinky Knecht uh, liet zich verschalken ja. op het allerlaatst uh, door Sigel. Misschien niet helemaal verwacht, maar het is wel gebeurd. En we zien dan ook dat Shinky Knecht niet tevreden is. Nou, dat is in ieder geval de opmaat voor vanmiddag. Als we nog veel meer short track wedstrijden hebben. En dat allemaal na een uh, wat langer onderbreking. Want het is tijd voor lunch. En we'll switch back to English for this uh, final part. It's time for a spot of lunch, as they say. And we'll be back in just about an hour's time to have a lot more top skaters during this uh, International Invitation Cup live here on Schaatsen.nl and the KNSB.
spelers van Nederlandse Loterij. Bedankt voor de ruim 168 miljoen die jullie bij elkaar hebben gespeeld. Voor sport en beweging. Voor Nederland. 168 miljoen. Spelers, bedankt. Niels en Eve gaan voor een lagere energierekening. En dat begint met isoleren. Glaswol, kitten, toch strips, uh, andere andersom. En dicht. Zo, oh, ja, bam. Isolatie. Je krijgt er te warm van. Deur dicht. Mijn huis duurzaam maken. Ik kan het. Gamma. Tragitol. Snelle pijnstiller bij beginnende keelpijn. Het stilt snel de pijn en doodt bacteriën en virussen die keelpijn veroorzaken. In het oranje paarse doosje.
more like so, so Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for this afternoon session of the International Invitation Cup short track in Heerenveen in the Netherlands. T11, where the official kickoff, let's call it that, of the uh, short track season is underway. Second competition day today, but the first day that we're live on the stream via schaatsen.nl or the KNSB. And uh, welcome back. We've had some uh, terrific lunch. I hope you have had as well. And we're ready, almost ready, um, to get this uh, second half of the day started and this is going to be quite epic because uh, the field that is here including many many olympic medalists uh, means that we've got some quality short track uh, coming up justin yeah we'll start with the uh, a competition uh, this afternoon and uh, well right before the break we saw the relays and the mixed relays so some of these a skaters we have already seen on the ice but uh, now the competition will uh, start and uh, as we can see on the schedule, it's uh, we start off 40, 15 on the meter again, the semi-finals. Yeah, looking forward, uh, Nelson, to uh, to see what these skaters can do after uh, the first day uh, yesterday. And, uh, yeah, and I think we can conclude from this morning's uh, races that the overall level, in even in the B division, and that sounds uh, harsher than I mean it, and, uh, but the, the overall level that we've seen today has been quite high. Uh, a great starting off point for the rest of the season, that's for sure. And uh, let's see what we get in this afternoon when a lot of the big names are in action. Starting, as we say, with the 1500 meter uh, women's A division, obviously. We start uh, with the final there, the finals with uh, a, a whole host of uh, big names. Getting ready for uh, their races. Well, we'll start off with uh, the A, the women's A 1500 semifinals. Let's uh, not go to the finals before. Uh, we are ready to do so with Sandra Velzeboer and Tiffany Huo Marchand. Michelle Velzeboer, so we've got uh, family rivalry as well. Petra Jaspersati, Ariana Fontana, Rianne de Vries, and Anne Sophie Bachon. This is uh, a quite uh, a quality lineup, although we've got five names on screen. We may have seven on track. We'll uh, wait and see. Probably if we look to the heat box now, we'll, we'll see seven skaters uh, preparing to come on the ice. It's normally that we have seven skaters in the race of a 1500 meter. As we see on our LED screen here uh, on track, we got seven uh, skaters on the list. Yes, definitely. And uh, we're about ready to get uh, get this afternoon started. And tomorrow, let's not forget, is another day of competitions. Thousand meters. Yes, and a proper day of uh, short track competition uh, already today with uh, scrapes, bruises. Uh, some uh, high-level skating and uh, people that have to had had dust themselves off and get back uh, back on it again. It's a proper short track day. Yeah, and even a uh, 2500 meter 1500. So we've seen it all, it seems, but we uh, we are ready to get this uh, afternoon started. Whistle is blown. So, uh, get ready for the start. And for this race, uh, the three. The top three progresses to the final uh, with the possibility of uh, seven in total. And as we are handed our starting list, I think, Justin, we're ready to go. Yeah. As you mentioned, yeah, the first uh, three will qualify plus one time fastest or when there is an advanc advancement, there will be the <coughs> seventh skater into the final A. Yep. Good start for Michelle Velzeboer and uh, the 39 there, Sandra Velzeboer, so that's interesting. Although the 1500 meter is definitely not the distance where you want to go all out in the, first few, <laughs> yeah, in the first few meters. Otherwise, uh, 
they can have uh, some oxygen ready at the end of the race if you go for all out at the start of it. You need to be smart with your energy. Let's have a look. It's interesting, the both uh, Felsenboer sisters. Some even say that uh, Michelle, the youngest one, is uh, even better uh, than her older sister who is in the national team. And that's exactly the right dynamic you want, because <laughs> yeah. that means that both of them are eager to beat the other. For now, it's uh, Fontana who's moving to the front, and we'll see Rianne de Vries following up. Move outside. Uh, Hungarian is a party. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, how they will approach this race, all of them, because it's such a, a stacked field again. It won't be that easy to be in the and top the three. Fall, and the fall for the Canadian. You can see immediately moving, looking for a good position in the first, uh, first few laps. You can see now constantly passing inside, outside, looking for the good position. Because now Yasapati is uh, accelerating a little to uh, get the pace up. Yep, we see uh, the French woman Marchand in second, then Fontana in third. Eight time Olympic uh, medalist and one time Olympic champion. That came three, four years ago almost. And she's looking for more and more silverware. But first, she'll have to get through this one, through this halfway semi final race, halfway down. We're actually heading into the final Falsabu stages. Trying, trying to go outside. Now she's moving up. Let's see if she can do this. Boxing in Fontana a little bit behind uh, the two Dutch women. And let's see if there's an opportunity to do a little bit there more she comes. here. Oh, looks strong now. Can she now to see if uh, Felsbuk can continue this. This looks strong and very smooth, although behind her it's a lot, a lot of fighting. Fontana via the outside making the move there. Not completing it totally, but still looking strong. First and Trying to go forward, here is the finish. First three positions count, and then we see Felsenboer. Yep. Quite strong performance, because she was going outside, and it cost like one and a half lap to, uh, to get to the front position, so it cost a lot of energy as well. But she managed it, and even in the last lap she could uh, manage to, uh, to be in front, as it looks like. Holding off Ariana Fontana, although this result will have to, uh, for now, take with a little bit of a grain of salt, because we've been uh, surprised by it. Before we're waiting for the uh, unofficial results, 32, 39, 20, that's what we're getting. So, yeah, Fontana, Velsenboer, yep. and Jasapati. Close, <laughs> close. Very close, two uh, one thousandths of a second uh, between Fontana and Velsenboer. But definitely looking strong, Velsenboer, against Fontana, who uh, had a lot of trouble getting through the field, but in the end, when she got there, she, uh, she looked comfortable enough. Yeah, you can doubt if this is the best uh, way to uh, to pass always on the outside, but if you're strong enough and you can manage it, why not? Yeah, definitely uh, a little bit risk averse yeah. if you go uh, uh, along the outside all, all of the time, but can pay off for you. Uh, second of the semi-finals with Susanne Schulting on the ice. Today uh, we've seen her in the relays, but this is the first individual number we'll see Schulting in. Um, very interested to see what she can do. This is on paper possibly the slightly weaker of the two semis, but we'll have to wait and see. The only Dutch woman in this uh, s second semi-final, although a whole host of Italians, uh, Cynthia Masciotti, Maschietto, uh, Ariana Sigel, who made quite the impact uh, during the relay. She looked really, really strong. Uh, we see Petra Vankova, the Czech uh, skater that we haven't seen because she wasn't part of any relay. Mm -hmm. uh, Aurélie Monvoisin, she has been part of a relay. And so has Sofia Konya and Rebecca Sileggi Nemeth. Seven skaters <coughs> as well in the second semi-final with Susanne Schulting, the clear favorite. Though she's boxed in at the start, that shouldn't be a real problem for uh, yeah, one of the bosses of the field at the moment. Yeah. Immediately in front, uh, Susanne, don't want to... Uh Look for any danger uh, situations. Just try to be in front and stay out of the well, any hazards. Vankova up front so far. Petra Vankova as we wait and see to see what uh, Schulting can do. As mentioned before, Schulting uh, was training a lot with the men this uh, this summer. Just to have like a better competition because yeah, she, she's way stronger than uh, most of her uh, teammates, uh, women teammates. See that Vankova, she's 
strong. You can see by the way she's built that she can uh, she can uh, put some power to the ice. The question is, does she have the endurance compared to, say, Schulting? Franco has already raced in Dresden this year, in the Invitation Cup there. And still leads ahead of Susanna Schulting. On the outside, we see the French woman coming up. That's uh, Montvoisin. What Schulting doesn't want is to be boxed in unable to react but she looks totally in control six laps, laps to go you will see that in a few laps uh, Susanna will uh, make her move and uh, make sure she's uh, in free space very interested to see what sort of a step she's made w with all her trainings Vankova uh, still building yeah, it's impressive what she's doing Petra Vankova leading from the front can she hold Schulting off, but in the end, that's not all she's worried about. She's trying to get to the A final, regardless of what Schulting does. Now it comes, now comes Schulting, outside easily pass. No question eh, that she was going to pass, and now Vankova starts to get boxed in herself. Yeah. She got a little bit of a nudge. She is done, it seems. Vankova made this race rather it's hard. Machito, who's uh, gaining position two. And the French woman in third as the bell tolls for Susanna Schulting. Easy, easy, easy. Easy. This is proper racing. Yeah, this is uh, conserving your energy. And I think this is the right way to do it for the rest of the season as well. Uh, she can't do it in every race. She'll have to test herself completely. But she has to be very careful with her energy during this year. Because she's going to race a lot. It's unclear if she's also going to do a lot of long track racing. Uh, but possibly she'll try to do the double in Beijing if she can on two disciplines. And looks looks really strong. But don't forget, we still have to fight. Uh, she still has to fight the, uh, the the Asian girls as well. Yes, and, uh, as well as the top uh, uh, Canadians. Yeah, let's not forget they are not here. Um, but that was the second of the semi-finals, and Susanna Schulting looked incredibly strong. Sandra Velzebur looked strong as well. We have something to look forward to uh, in that clash uh, with uh, Fontana as well. That 1500 meter final is going to be a lot of fun. So Mashita and uh, Chilisa Nemet, the Hungarian girl, is uh, going to the uh, to the final, the fin A final. A final as well. Then it depends if we have any advancements. Then there will be time fastest who will uh, turn a seventh skater into the final. Uh, wait and see. That's basically Let's what we have to do. Yeah. as we get ready for the men's semis. Again, with a whole host of different nations. Good to see for this International Invitation Cup that it is truly international. That there's a lot of talent, a lot of European talent, so in any case, but a good Canadian team here as well. A lot of youngsters. Yeah, one of the names in the in the men's semi-finals we're missing is Sven Roos, one of the strongest Dutch uh, 1500 meter racing racers, but he, uh, he had a yellow card yesterday due to a uh, well, silly uh, um, passing well, accident. So that's why he got the yellow card. An so opportunistic move yeah, and a very op <laughs> optimistic move. We'll yeah. keep it at that. But if you don't go for a gap, you there's no sense in racing. Um, we have a few Dutchmen on the ice as we see uh, Itzak de Laat and Dylan Hogewerf getting ready. Uh, John Henry Kruger and um, Sander Charlinieu. Teun Boer is on the entry list and uh, Jérôme Courmange so we will wait and see who gets through here but this is a stacked field this is a uh, very interesting to see who is going to be amongst the top three and go straight into the A final and who is uh, dependent on advancements or time fastest yeah let's see what the Hungarian uh, guys will do if they will team up again like they normally do it's not something so normally the Liu brothers will always do it but probably in the final today if they will make it wait and see as we get this second <coughs> set of semis underway opening for well it's like the lad but very leisurely no sense in throwing with uh, any uh, sort of energy it's a long weekend a lot of racing exactly what they need all these skaters this phase of the season heading into uh, well the World Cup's uh, cycle and for a lot of these skaters showing well here means you've got a shot at uh, being um, in amongst the team. It's Itzik Relaat uh, who's in front just uh, controlling the race looking behind him who's coming. And I must say Itzik Relaat made a uh, very good impression in the relay. Eh? Yeah he's really strong 
looked but confident. Last year, yeah, he, he became really strong. Still needs to find his, uh, his winning mentality. Yeah, belief is a, a difficult thing, a thing to train. One of the most talented skaters and technically was smooth, smoother than well, most of the skaters, but still, yeah, you need to win. That's the thing as well in, uh, in short track. Dylan Hogewerf, he leads. Itzak te laat. As we see Tambour in fourth position. The two Hungarian skaters in the back, although we start to see them moving up yeah. forward. We still have the two Dutchmen in orange in the lead. And Courtemange, the Canadian, is now losing the position against Liu, third position. Now we'll get a far better sense of where the Dutchmen are against uh, Liu compared to relays where it's difficult to judge. Courmange on the outside. Let's see what the Dutch can do. Can they work together? Now Liu is passing a hoge wave inside. And it's like the Laat is uh, pushing up the tempo. Yes, but not uh, quickly enough to uh, make it even more difficult uh, for Liu. And here three into one. Yeah, Kruger. Oh. That is a little bit of a risk, and there's uh, De Boer, and uh, well, that nearly was a collision. Um, Dylan Hogewerf is in trouble here. It's Liu who just uh, overtakes uh, De Laat, and even John Henry Kruger now, still in uh, the first three positions. But final lap here in this first semi final. Oh, uh, Hogewerf is coming back, let's see. Can you do something? De Laat looks a struggling, little bit struggling, struggling for the finish. And no change there, it seemed. Sander Liu looked incredibly strong, very easy. And the fact that Kruger found it so easy to move forward as well says enough about the state of the Hungarian team. Yeah. Solid racing. Very interesting. Yeah, it seemed that he took the lot at the end of the laps, uh, could maintain the speed, was really uh, fighting to, uh, to keep up with the Hungarians, and even had to look back to uh, Dylan Hogerwerf, who was uh, closing the gap. And, uh, coming in to, to maybe take the third position, but uh, he managed it to uh, to move on to the final. And that's important as well to race this final to get his experience. 23-9, fourth time. Let's uh, keep that in mind mm -hmm. for uh, possible time fastest uh, place into the uh, EA final. Although, uh, well, 23-6 on Six this. For yeah. Half, yeah. So, uh, um, that we get a little bit of a, a faster time still. Let's keep uh, in mind that now these guys, a couple of these guys, are well served by making the second semi final a bit faster. They know well uh, that the uh, oh, have now skated uh, the 23.6. Most of the time, yes, some skaters do. We have some skaters who are thinking maybe go for the, f for the fastest time. Oh, I don't think so. I think we will be uh, just racing for the first three positions. And uh, in total, four Dutchmen amongst the seven that are starting the second semi-final. Schenke Knecht is there. There we see him. Uh, Friso Emons, Kai Huisman, and uh, as well uh, Jens van het Wout. Watch him. Yeah, yeah, he made a very good impression early on. He looks to have made another step. And we want to see that uh, underlined going to be important heading into uh, the Olympics that that um, relay team for instance is as strong as it possibly can be the Italian there as well is Tommaso Dotti as we are ready for the second semi-final the German in the middle of the field Adriana Lutke Adrian Lutke tall guy like most Germans <laughs> it's a uh, Huisman, Kai Huisman, who's taking the lead right before uh, Shinki Knecht. Let's see what he can do, because he didn't have uh, the most luck in the, in the relays. Uh, he must have been really unhappy after that second uh, race, because he was the one who was overtaken. That must have hurt a little bit for Knecht, who's still trying to figure out how what sort of a skater he is after the accident. Yeah, but don't underestimate him. He will be uh, he will be there when it needs to be. Nice move. He's a on pure the racer. Friso Amons easily glides to the uh, to the front. Then one who's leaving in the back uh, is uh, staying in the back is Jens van Wout. The three Dutchmen are in uh, in front now. That we in uh, Berzins is uh, coming up now. Race is already hard. 
Frenchmen don't want to be uh, surprised by either a countryman or one of the three other skaters here. Changes up front. Let's see who actually gets this right, because it's a fast one, a relatively fast one so far. And a lot of people here, a lot of skaters, vying for the top three positions. You can see Friso Amons all the time looking over his shoulder. Someone's coming, he's covering up the back. Lutke now in seventh, Dotto in sixth, Dotti. Knecht is in fifth. A little bit struggling. He's not having the strongest of days so far. Still but one push, go. one push changes everything. But the race pace increases slowly but surely. Oh, Lutke nearly went off. But who's going to make a push? Who is able? Friso looking, uh, Friso Emel looking strong. Now Shinky wants to do it outside. Oh, difficult though, difficult as the bell tolls. Final lap in, Berzins in second, the Latvian in a very uh, orange touch. And this is, this is pure Shinky racing, he sees the outside. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, second or third? Oh, probably second, I think. This is smart racing by Shinky. You can see you go in the, uh, the last lap. He sees that Van Wout is uh, bumping up uh, Berzins and he immediately reacts to go to the outside so he can still accelerate and uh, come outside and uh, try to outfinish. And you see he outfinishes them in second place. So this means Van Wout to 19, yeah, probably will Far be his faster. Fourth sk uh, f yeah, fastest skater, fourth fastest skater. But the fastest here was uh, Friso Amons. Made uh, quite, uh, quite an early move to the front and uh, then defended really well. Although, Two Even thousandths <laughs> of a second, Knecht does make it. This is the telescopic leg yeah. of, yeah. of Knecht. Well, it worked, and uh, he made his life quite difficult for himself um, early on in the race. He had to work hard for this, but he does manage to get there in the end, and that's the most important thing for uh, for Schinke Knecht. So probably for uh, Jens van Wout will mean 219 faster than uh, Hogewerf, who skated uh, 223, so probably qualifies for the uh, A final. Yeah. Let's wait for the official result, because we're seeing Gial Bisma, referee now, standing next to the uh, judges' table. Not that I can recall that we've seen anything untoward, but you never know. Uh, we have another whole host of skaters on the ice, and that's obviously for the next race, the ranking finals in the A division, 1500 meter for women with, uh, amongst others, uh, Georgie Dalrymple here, as well as Jaro van Kerkhoff. Is there something to be announced? Let's wait and uh, listen. Difficult to say so far, because it's not totally obvious if something uh, happened that wasn't right. Kerkhoff there. Attention, this last race is a penalty. A penalty for skater number 81. Reinhard On the floor, Otter. A penalty S2 for interstate lane change from inside to outside, and thereby causing contact. And there is an advance in the race. Can't really hear. 81. Magazines. So he was second. Uh, third. We'll wait and see. I think that's uh, basically it as we get ready for this uh, ranking final. With three Dutch women there, as well as Aurélie Levesque. Um, Kina Jacobs is there, Gwendoline Dodet, as well as uh, Sarah Luca Bakshai, and uh, the Canadian Mnyak Chi. Normally, 1500 meter, quite a heavy race for Van Kerkhoff who's uh, been uh, specializing for years in now in the shorter distances. The 500,000 meter yeah. for better distances. Although, she'll need to ha be uh, be able to hang tough if she's needed in, in, a, in a relay. Important uh, part of the chain, yeah. And for her second part of the 1,000 meter. Yeah. So this is uh, investing for Jaro van Kerkhoff, apart from the fact that she'll always try to compete for overall uh, all-round titles. Two French women on the outside, making a move together, 
and compromising a little bit the Canadian there. So far, so good for the French, the French team, though the uh, three Dutch women still have yet to make their move. Daudet is taking over now from Levesque. In fifth, it's Otter. Yeah. So she's the daughter of a national coach, Jeroen Otter. But that only means you have to definitely work twice as hard to be able to get to the team. <laughs> probably, probably. Five more left to go the two French women trying to working. keep the pace. Yeah, working together to keep the pace up to make sure they can stay in, uh, in the front position. Quite a difficult day uh, yesterday and today for Georgie Dalrymple and again oh, nearly, nearly lost it in her move over the German. Doesn't make, she doesn't she doesn't look as secure as she did at the end of oh last year. One of the French, yep. it's, uh, Levesque. Means that the French train is broken and that suddenly Otto is in the lead and there goes another one. Hungarian. It means the that sky. they're falling like flies and here and this is, is Otto on the floor uh, in front now. Can she hold on? Oh, this is hard. Dull uh, is coming in but she's still there and she's going to make it. Well done. This is always a good feeling uh, as a regional uh, rider to uh, to win from uh, skaters from the national team. Yeah, beating the national team skaters. Yeah. Georgie Dalrymple was boxed up in the final two laps. Finishes in fourth. In second, it's uh, uh, Jaro van Kerkhoff, if we've just uh, seen it right. But the victory was there for uh, Otter in 229.9. For Anne Floor Otter. Which is uh, it's good enough for now, and she wins the ranking final. Let well done to her. As we get ready for ranking finals, two of them in the men's uh, 1500 meters with Hessel van Berkem. Dan Brilsma is there as well. And a little bit uh, of a, well, of a surprise that we have uh, Xiaoyong Liu in a ranking final. Yeah, normally you would expect he, uh, he would be in uh, one of the, the A or the B final. But not the case. We've seen a fair few uh, young skaters today, especially from uh, Canada and the Netherlands. Uh, is there anything you've seen so far that particularly has piqued your interest. Uh, we saw, we've seen Kingma perform uh, really well this morning, but there are a lot of them that are uh, definitely showing there's quite a bit of future uh, for uh, a lot of uh, short track nations. Yeah, yesterday, uh, Xiao Wang Liu just didn't qualify for, uh, for this, uh, for this, for this semi-final, so that's why he came into this ranking final. Blowing the cobwebs away, probably. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready for uh, the first of two ranking finals. The 1500 meters here. <coughs> Obviously, an easy start here. Although I do love that the first two no, seconds looks like it's a 500 meters, just to make a good show of it. You can't wait at the start line. Sometimes some skaters will you know, wait just to be in the back, but just gives you more to do. Yep. In the end, uh, Liu in the lead. Normally Jasper Brunsman will be a 500 meter specialist as well, but let's see uh, what he can do in this race. And with 10 more left to go, Dan what can he do? For now, it's the Canadian in the lead. One of the two. Uh, yeah. One of a group of Canadians, uh, as we've discussed earlier. Not of, let's say, the A, a team in the Canadian squad, but good enough to warrant uh, sending over. Yeah, as we mentioned earlier, this is Canada is one of the biggest uh, countries in short track so even if they send like the the b team or a junior team <laughs> you still will have competition uh, from them and even maybe even more because they're so eager to uh, to race and to uh, to win and to show yeah that they belong uh, in amongst uh, the big names as you can see here he's taking he's taking the lead it's uh, felix Roussel now overtake by uh, liu 
And it looks so subtle and so cool uh, and collected as he takes the lead here. Behind him, there's a lot going on and a lot of fighting for position. Four more laps to go. Four laps to go. Now you will see that Liu will uh, accelerate. You can see he takes the gap already. And this is power. Eh? This is yeah. clear power. This Shouldn't be in a ranking final. Simple. S smart racing as well. Just waiting the first laps and then uh, going for it. Now Hess van Berkham trying to pass Brunsman on the inside. Whoa. What can Brunsman do on the outside now? Yeah, put in a lot of effort to get clear of Still that Schubert, mayhem. Yeah, he's taking over. And he's there, he's there with Liu on the outside. Can he make another move? He's trying, but he can't. Can he? Oh, oh. Just he can't. It's uh, literally a couple of inches. Probably Brilsma won't get more uh, opportunities in, in his career easily to beat uh, the U. So we have Liu and Brilsma there. Behind there was a lot happening. Eh? Very chaotic ranking final this one. Although they all stayed upright, which is uh, good to see after an earlier crash. It uh, left one of the Belgian competitors uh, uh, being hauled off in a wheelchair. Let's hope he's okay. Get ready for the second of the ranking finals. Including uh, in that and field, the Sebastian Le Pap, who's uh, currently getting warm and ready for this uh, for his race. The Frenchman who's working at a bakery next to his uh, top sport career. Uh, whatever works. Whatever uh, needs to be done to make it pay, eh? It is. Not every country uh, does have enough money or easy money to uh, to pay everything and to have uh, like a, a top athlete program. So and on the other hand, it doesn't necessarily uh, mean he can't compete. It means that he needs extra motivation to get all of his hours on ice in. And it uh, still works because he's still in the uh, world top. So. Yeah, still in top shape, Le Pap. Although he is in a ranking final here. Yeah, uh, we've seen him before today uh, in uh, the relay as part of a combined French and, uh, and Dutch team. And he made a, a good, good showing of it. Looked good, although he couldn't really make a dent in the lead of uh, Liu. Liu, yeah. Seven skaters for this one. <coughs> Canadian up front. The only one Canadian here, so it's Samuel Green with 54 on the helmet. And Gary uh, taking I the lead. Uh, Lisa yes Sapati, Peter. Peter yes Sapati, who is uh, on the cusp of being uh, a logical part of relay teams, although he still has to uh, show. Show that he's part of it. Yeah, but he was the weaker, uh, weaker link in the in the relay team. Uh, Friso Amons could pass him in the in this mixed uh, in, of in the in the men's relay. And not just once, eh? He was overtaken twice. Yeah. For now, he leads, but not a very fast race so far. Canadian behind him, and then a trio of Italians. Speckenhauser in the third position. With Singel there as well, and uh, Cassinelli. Canadian now taking the lead, Sam Green. And now it's the Italian. Speckenhauser is overtaking, it's trying to keep, uh, keep up the speed. A lot taller than the Canadian, that's for sure. Making pace. Le Pap at the back, still with Quentin Verkok. Yeah. Verkok in uh, seventh position. Still Samuel Green making all the running with the three Italians and a an Hungarian behind him. Four laps to go. See that the pace is increasing. Can Samuel Green keep this up? Still I doubt it. Let's see what he can do. You see that he's losing a little bit of punch coming out of the corner, but he's still in front, Sam Green. Still there. And see in the back there is now racing, so being in front is important as well. What can they do against Sam Green? Well, he's now been overtaken. Cassinelli. 
but he tries to overtake again. Now, now it's done. Yeah, two attempts Oy. and, and, the, and the a fall. heavy with Le Pap. Yeah, and Le, Pap Le Pap was was the one who was uh, taken by Green. Green went first, and then at the end, Sigel <laughs> overtakes in the last lap. Oi! And another, another crash. Fall. So that's Yasapati who's there with the Fakok. Yeah. Yeah. So only the Italians get through unscathed. So <laughs> yeah, what what it looks like. <laughs> An easy race with the green for a long time uh, in front, which ends in like uh, three Italians who is who are finishing and the, <laughs> the rest was crashing. Yeah, but can you then say that Sam Green is then so incredibly um, spent that he's just he's lost coordination mm -hmm. a little bit, yeah, cannot yeah, yeah. react. Yeah, normally in the beginning of the race, if you're strong and you lean uh, against each other, you can hold it. But if the the lactic is in your legs and yeah. Uh, you're tired, then it's hard to uh, to stand up straight. Yeah. Well, with all these crashes, it's a good thing we're headed into ice preparation yeah. because uh, a lot is happening. We're headed into finals time for the 1500 meters for the men and women. Ja, dames en heren, zo meteen na de uh, ja, korte onderbreking voor ijspreparatie zijn we terug met finale. Susanne Schulting maakte echt een uitstekende indruk en dat deed evenzo Shinky Knecht. Goed om te zien. En uh, kunnen we naar uitkijken zo meteen uh, bij de finales. Er wordt hard gereden, hard gevochten hier bij de International Invitation Cup. Ijspreparatie en dan zo meteen als de schaatsers op het ijs zijn, zijn wij dat uh, ook weer terug met het uh, commentaar. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, as soon as the uh, skaters get back on the ice, so will we. We will get back uh, on air. And uh, then it's time to get ready for the 1500 meter finals after okay, ice preparation. First place, Pietro Sigel. Second place, Andrea Castinelli. Third place for Lucas Pettenhauser. Three Italians, one, two, three. And fourth place, Peter Yazapati from Hungary. Fifth place, Clinton Bergok. Sixth place, Sebastian Lepaven. Seventh, Samuel.
ladies and gentlemen, I pronounce to you the B final for ladies, 1500 meters in the starting line. And Tiffany. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for this International Invitation Cup 2021. We're uh, well into the second day of competition here in Hereveen in Tiolf. And it's ready, uh, we're ready, and the skaters are ready for uh, the finals of 1500 meter A division. We'll start with the B final, and then it's time for the A final, and that's quite the final eh, in the ladies competition with Fontana, with uh, Schulting, with uh, Monvoise. It's going to be very, very interesting. And Justin, um, this is going to give us a a clear indication how quick and how well Suzanne Schulting has come out of this summer compared to uh, a yeah, top uh, against Fontana, a, yeah. a top line contender. Yeah, looking forward to it. Let's see what uh, what she can do. She looks super strong uh, in the the races before. But first, the uh, the B final, uh, Nelson. Yes, and in this uh, B final, we'll uh, see a few interesting names. Definitely Marchand, uh, the Frenchman, uh, the French woman there, as well as Michelle Velsebour. Um, very quick, but a little bit unlucky in the semi-final. Still here in the B-final, she'll try to make her mark, as does Anne-Sophie Bachon. And Ariana Siegel is there, and Petra Vankova. Let's see how Vankova has recovered after her ordeal, because she went out very fast in semi-finals and paid the price almost immediately. Yeah. Now in, uh, in front, it's the Hungarian uh, girl. Sofia Konya. Yeah, Konya, the only Hungarian in this uh, first of the two finals. But let's wait and see who actually takes the initiative. We'll see Michelle Velsebour in second. Currently in second, not in the Dutch national selection. But she's close. She's close in terms of level. Yeah, she uh, almost equals her, uh, her sister, Xandra. She's uh, upcoming, two years younger. So uh, still a road ahead to, uh, to come to that level. But uh, nevertheless, a big talent in the Netherlands uh, for the girls. Behind her it's uh, Bachon, the Canadian, looking to see if there's an opportunity to gain a position early without losing too much energy. Razors start uh, very easily now, tactical, they're looking to each other. In the uh, semi-final of Vankova, they, uh, she, she, take <laughs> she took a chance to, uh, to get in front and to make, uh, make the race. Now she's waiting. Let's see. Now she's trying to move outside to come to the front. She threw Will it work? She threw with her energy and yeah. here she does it again. She's incredibly strong, Vankova. And she takes the lead ahead of the Hungarian, ahead of Konya. And where is Velsbourg? She's in third, back in yeah. third. Had to battle for third there with Bachon. Bachon in fourth. But now the big question is, Vankova, can she keep this up? Because if she powers through, they won't be overtaking her, that's for sure. Yeah, we could see it in the semi-final that she couldn't do it with three laps to go. It was too hard for her. Now it's four laps to go. She accelerates now, try to Shake get the rest of the pack, pack under pressure. And Velsebour yeah, trying she's to make the move. Yep. There's the move. move. Solid, solid. On the outside, Hugo Marchand. Trying, trying to uh, to come up, and she does so via the outside. Vonkova, she's starting to collapse a little bit, so Velsebour has to pass. Vonkova tried to close the door on her, doesn't work, and it's a French woman against the Dutch woman. She's trying to close the gap. Oh, and the fall of uh, Vonkova. Yeah. Let's see if uh, Michelle Velsebour can still do something at the finish line. Now she's uh, entering the last corner, going outside, trying to uh, pass on the inside. No, it's the outside. Yeah, maybe, close, but I don't close think so. Finish. I doubt she's made it, uh, Velsebour. Not that easy after Vankova went off. So not a lot of room to try and overtake. But in the end, well, well done. A good uh, fought-out race with Marchand making the move of the race on the outside. But that's the B final for let's, you. Uh, let's wait for the, uh, for the photo finish because... Uh, it was close. A few races before, we could see even with the Knecht that he could outfinish uh, the skaters on the line. So we'll have to wait and see here uh, for uh, Michel Velsebour. See what happened there. We'll pull up Velsebour. Hmm, we'll wait to see. It sounds like, looks like there's a, a little bit of an issue with her transponder there because uh, no other issues were there for her. A big smile on the face. She's happy with her performance there. Uh, now it's time for the A final. You want Marchand yeah. and Velsebour? Well, it's fourth, <laughs> it's 1,000. Close again. Really close again. Yeah. 
time for the first A-final. Dames en heren, tijd voor de eerste A-finale. Susanne Schulting, Rianne de Vries, zij zitten erbij. En dat geldt ook voor Sandra Velzenboer en Ariana Fontana, Olympisch kampioen. Fontana op de 500 meter. Het gaat heel, heel spannend worden. Switch back to English for you with uh, Susanne Schulting versus Ariana Fontana with Sandra Velzeboer, Petra Jassafati and Rianne de Vries here in this A final 1500 meters. This is one to watch this race because it's a clear indication between Fontana and Schulting who has the upper hand early in the season. Yeah, this is the first big test for Susanne Schulting to see if she can uh, win as easy as she does uh, as she did in the uh, semi finals as well. Let's see if she can. Uh, control the race, she does uh, mostly. Fontana made uh, so far quite a good impression on us all, but Schoten has a, an ease in her moves. Doesn't really seem to take a lot out of her to actually try to overtake. Maybe it's different with Fontana. We've seen uh, Velzeboer, we've got uh, the Hungarian Ejazapati there as well. Big smile on the face of uh, Schulting knows that the real focus point comes now ahead of the start, although it's only 1500 meters. Not the 500, she can take it a little bit easy in the start. She won't let Fontana go, I would imagine. A final, 1500 meters. On paper, it's a battle between Fontana and Schulting. Is that the case? A battle of the Olympic champions as we see the start all clear and Schulting decides to uh, nestle herself at the front. Easy start for Fontana. Yeah, both skaters, uh, Schulting and Fontana, does have uh, some uh, teammates in the race. We see Velzeboer in front of uh, Schulting. Maybe she can uh, help out Susanne to take the win in this uh, A final. The big question is does Schulting need it? Does she need any help to fight uh, Fontana? Her, uh, her level, her confidence level seems sky high at the moment. Although she was really unhappy with the disqualification in the relay. Not her fault, by the way. But she's strong here in third. Very easy start for this A final. And Fontana in the back of the field, just keeping her powder dry, waiting for her moment. This is a position uh, that she uh, likes uh, to be in. Uh, Fontana, she can really move up from the back where you can see Schulting just trying to be in front to uh, being out of the difficult situations. Jasapati trying to move forward, Schulting reacts immediately, although she now needs to pass uh, the French woman. Yeah, Montvoisin, currently in second, had the fastest of the starts. She doesn't want to get boxed in when Fontana makes her move. And as you can see, Fontana is just leaving a little bit space for herself to make up her move and immediately to, to accelerate and to pass everyone. Oh, just close. look at her, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very, very close up front, although Schulting starts to impress a little bit more. She's taken it easy early on, although she nestled herself up front. What's Fontana? Yeah, on the outside. Comes, yeah. Five laps to go. A little bit of a touch there. Now she's Schulting. in the position she, wants to, position she wants to be. Up front, it's a close fight, although Schulting is in second. Still a few laps to go, Sandra Velzeboer leads, but is that pace high enough for Velzeboer to shake the rest off? I don't think so, Schulting hasn't made a move yet, has been very economical in terms of her energy, so has Fontana, so we're up for a very interesting final here. We're heading into the last two laps now, Velzeboer is accelerating, but Schulting takes over now on the outside quite easily, now let's see what Fontana can do. Uh, nothing, nothing. No Schulting, Schulting two, three strokes and she's well ahead. Bell tolls for the final lap, Fontana in second, although Velzeboer. with Velzeboer. Velzeboer tries to battle back, an easy this victory. Is quality racing, quality racing by Susanne Schulting. Incredible, so strong she is. Yeah, and it uh, doesn't seem to take a lot out of her. Dames en heren, wat een race van Susanne Schulting. Haar moment geweldig afgewacht en dan voorbij gegaan aan haar teamgenoten. En Ariane Fontana niet de minste achter haar gelaten, vier, vijf lengtes. Ja, de A-finale gewonnen door Susanne Schulting. Well, that was something. That was something, <laughs> just <laughs> Quite a race, but... Well, a little bit, maybe a little bit disappointing for Fontana. Yeah, she yeah. could keep up with Susanne, but Schulting is so strong. You could see it here, very economically, uh, while skating the first 10 laps, doing nothing. Yeah, well, all of those training uh, hours with the men seem to pay, uh, to pay off there for Schulting. 
it'll be very interesting to see if she can uh, if she can attain a new higher level. She was already so good the last two three years, and she keep this up. But one thing is for certain, Justin, she seems to understand where her limits are and uh, how to train and, fur and increase the ceiling. She doesn't seem overtrained, over flustered. Pressure doesn't seem to get to her so far. So far, but still the beginning of the season, yeah. we're still Invitation Cup now. Nothing to win here, only maybe a little bit pre-selection for the national team. But still, everything is on uh, in the first four World Cups to at least get positions, tickets for the uh, Olympics and then even the individual position. As we move towards the gentlemen, the men's finals here, 1500 meters. We'll start with the B final with Tommaso Dotti, Adrian Lutke, Dylan Hogewerf and Teun Boer for the Netherlands and Jérôme Courtemanche, the Canadian there as well. Tommaso Dotti made, uh, well, he wasn't the strongest. I expected him to be a little bit better. Dylan Hogewerf and Teun Boer. Well, a little bit out uh, to prove yeah. themselves, I guess. Hogeweg didn't make it. Uh, he was fourth in his race, but due to the uh, penalty uh, given by uh, Berzins in the, in the other semi-final, uh, the time fastest didn't count anymore. So with a fourth position, you're out. You just do the B-final. That's why uh, Dylan Hogeweg is in this uh, B-final. And that's the particular part in short track is that you end up in positions and finals where you think, well, physically, I should be in the A-final. Should be at that level, but race craft is as important, if not more, than uh, physical prowess. For Teun Boer, it's really important to race uh, this B final and not to be in the ranking final, so uh, it is good for him to, uh, to stand in this final. Yeah, Teun Boer in the dark blue and orange, second to last, not part of the Dutch national selection. As we see in front of him, we see uh, Lutke and Dotti and Courte Manche in the grey, the Canadian grey. Race has a start of uh, quite easy. Tactical, now Koutemange is uh, moving up. Let's see Teunboer, yep. strong guy. Making a nice move on the outside, straight into the lead. And with two, three uh, strokes, that was it. Uh, that was all he needed, a little bit of a push. Just goes to show that the level, well, not so much the level, but the pace in this race isn't that high yet. Seven laps to go, and now you see the pace will increase. Dotti and Courtemanche. First moves won't be made. Still, it's Boer. Then Dotti. Courtemanche. Lutke. Could defend quite easily. Now he's starting building. Building his speed. Let's see if he can uh, keep them behind, uh, behind him. It's a strong uh, racer, uh, Teun Boer. And a good move to nestle himself up front to try and control this B final. With Dotti behind him, trying to make a move, knowing that Courtemans, Lucke, and of course ook Dylan Hogewerf are behind. And when is Hogewerf going to try something? But it's very passive at the moment from he's him. Uh, well, he's a couple of meters behind. And Boo is really fighting for it now. Yeah, he's and keeping the door shut. Yeah, and that makes that the uh, position 2-3, yeah, in yeah. the fall. This is what, what's going to happen if you uh, be in the second position fighting. Could, uh, well, Courtemans in uh, trouble. As well as Dotti, uh, Dotti still in second, but Coutemange and Lutke were the ones who went off. And Boer really defended hard, um, wasn't going to get past that easily. So you have the accordion effect, and Boer wins this uh, B final. B final. Yeah, really good. You could see that Boer, Boer was a little bit slowing down, and that was the reason why all the uh, skaters in two th of second, third, and fourth position were bumping up each other, and uh, which remains in a uh, in a crash. In the end, it uh, ended up uh, with two skaters. Nevertheless, in a good race by uh, Teun Boer. He's won it, so he's done a good job anyway. Dylan Hogeverf looked very passive in that. Uh, not totally understand why, but we'll figure it out uh, as this day progresses. Yeah, dames en heren. Dames en heren, tijd voor de A-finale 1500 meter met daarbij natuurlijk Friso Emons en Jens van het Woud en Itzak de Laat en Kai Huisman. En Shinky Knecht, vijf Nederlanders bij de beste zeven. Maar ja, daar zit dan ook Shaolin Sander Liu, een uh, absolute wereldtopper. En ook John Henry Kruger is super sterk. Die uh, tweede finale 1500 meter gaan we nu naar kijken. So it's time for the 1500 meters A final for the men, including uh, five Dutchmen and two Hungarians. Uh, it's uh, more of an interland, uh, but the international character of this event 
gives you a lot of top skaters. And for the Dutch, it means five Dutchmen, including Shinky Knecht and Itzak de Laat. But for the Hungarians, it's Shaolin Sander Liu. This is going to be interesting because I think uh, Shinky Knecht is far from happy with his performances today. Although he looked incredibly strong in that f uh, final flurry in the semi-finals. That finish was really good. It was his uh, typical uh, telescopic leg, as we call it. But uh, yet you can say it, uh, Nelson, who can win? Anyone can win in this race. Liu looks really strong, but as well, Amon's in his semi-final was really strong at the end. Good pace. Um, Shinky with his uh, finishing uh, opportunities and uh, Ita Galad always good, but still need his uh, winning mentality. Kai Huisman, good for him that he is in his uh, A final, deserved it uh, with his racing. So let's see what uh, what will happen. Riso Amons could be uh, perhaps uh, the wild card in this one, uh, maybe with a little bit of a gamble, trying to get to the front early and then closing the door. But it's going to be very very interesting. Curious if the Hungarians will team up again, like they do normally. Normally, the both of the Liu brothers will do it always, and uh, they do f they do have a good feeling together. But still, uh, John Henry <laughs> Henry Kruger is a, is a full Hungarian now, so uh, probably they will uh, try to take the lead and uh, make the Dutchman uh, really difficult. I wonder how well he speaks Hungarian. It's probably one of the most difficult languages to learn. John Henry Kruger, former American skater in this field. Time to uh, get acquainted with the skaters in this A final 1500 meter for the men. Place your bets, please. It's gonna be very, very interesting. Shinky Knecht versus uh, Shaolin Sander Liu. Maybe the dark horse of this race, then Jens van Wout. And then really a lucky uh, semi-final. He finished in, uh, in fourth, but then of the penalty, Berzins, I think the second he came yeah. third, so oh. a bit lucky in this final. Nothing to lose, that's for sure. And a lot of orange, sea of orange in this field. On the inside it is uh, Shiki Knecht. We're still trying to figure out, as is he, how good he is at the moment. What, uh, what sort of level is his level? One thing's for certain, he isn't uh, satisfied until he's as good as he was before the accident and the injuries that he had. Seven skaters, five of them Dutchmen. Two are representatives of the country of Hungary. There's a lot on the line here because you need to impress to get into the National <coughs> World Cup team. Very leisurely, leisurely start here for uh, Schinke Knecht, although he nestles himself up front, which may be a better situation for him. He's been trying to fight back all day. Hasn't really worked out for him. This is really typical, you can see the Hungarians already together, even in the back or in the front, they always look for each other. So probably they will move up in a couple of uh, laps together to the front to try to dominate this race. For now they uh, put Kai Huisman uh, in front. There come the there Hungarians. They come. Yeah. It's like clockwork, the two Hungarians are there and you saw Schinke Knecht seeing and hoping he could break them up. Although it's not just the Hungarians making a move. This is what uh, the Dutchmen need to do. They need to, to be in between the both Hungarian skaters to make it a hard race. Or at least to be in control of this race. So Amons leads it. Itzak de Laat. And there is Shinky Knecht as well. And a very interesting uh, little move there by uh, Itzak de Laat. He's looking strong today. Trying to reassert himself at the top of the pile, obviously. Shinky Knecht, that's going to be a very interesting battle this year. Itzak de Laat and Shinky Knecht within that Dutch team. Don't forget Jens van Wout. He's like chilling in the back now, now passing uh, John Henry Kruger to move on up. The pace is getting up. Itzak de Laat's moving outside, trying to make it a little bit harder race. Friso Eamon's in second. Shinky Knecht now passed by uh, Liu. Fourth position for Shinky. And now five laps, four laps to go. So it's going to be very interesting who has the better end, who has the better shot towards the finish. Amons is there, Itzak de Laat is there, and Shinky Knecht is being bossed around by his teammates Ka a little Kai bit. Kai Huisman. Kai Huisman, who uh, is a little bit fortunate to be here, but he is here. So a difficult race for Shinky Knecht. A very good race up front, and the pace moves up. There's Liu, Liu into second. Liu is trying to get past Amons, and this is what I sort of expected. Amons to be the wild card in this fight. Yes. There comes Liu. Liu passing inside. Oh, 
Het is een crash bij Van Wout. New leads. New leads for Amons. And there is Shinky Knecht on the outside. Can't make it stick yet. To the outside. There is the move we need. But he is way, way in the back. And there the Dutchman not helping each other. Very interesting move. And is there a bell whistle? Yes. Is there a neutralization? Probably it went wrong with the uh, scoreboard. Very interesting because there's a lot of disgruntled uh, <laughs> racers here. Are we gonna go? One for of it? the rest was sitting on the uh, on the boarding to do the counting of the laps, and uh, one of the lap counters that didn't ring the bell. Oh, so we're a little bit late. Yeah, ja, dames en heren, uh, a mogelijk uh, uh, nieuwe situatie dat de bel te laat gegeven is. En zo niet uh, helemaal niet gegeven. En dat er wel gefinished is zonder dat de schaatsers door hadden. Dat we daadwerkelijk al bij de finish waren met Sander uh, Xiaoyong Niu aan de leiding. En we moeten dus even gaan uh, kijken wat er gebeurt. Er is te laat gebeld, krijgen we inderdaad door. Dus uh, wat u zag klopte, de uh, graphics klopte, maar voor de schaatsers niet. En zij kunnen niet de livestream volgen als ze aan het schaatsen zijn. En Shinky Knecht dus absoluut niet blij. Want een laatste push was niet mogelijk. Finished hier vermoedelijk als tweede. Met een laatste move. Moeten we even afwachten. Tweede of derde. Daar lijkt het op uh, uit te draaien. Maar de zegen op een hele vreemde manier is er voor de Hongaar Liu. Nou, dan hebben we echt alles gezien. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. A very interesting uh, situation here. It seems that uh, the bell for the final lap hasn't been rung. So none of the skaters really understood that we're in the final throws of this 1500 meter A final. Uh, meaning that uh, uh, Sa Shaolin Sander Liu didn't have to contend with a final push from, say, Shinky Knecht or Friso Amons. Uh, a lot will be said about this race. Very interesting also the dynamic within the Dutch team. All five of them were really hands-on fighting, uh, mostly against each other. So uh, enough to talk about later. Ja, zo hebben we toch echt alles gezien uh, vandaag, dames en heren. We gaan naar een korte onderbreking, want ijsreparatie nodig, preparatie. En dan zijn we zo weer terug. After ice, uh, the ice has been prepared, we'll be back with a lot more action. 500 meters, for instance, are up next. There's a lot to talk about, <laughs> especially with this 1500 meter A final. We'll be back after the ice preparation. And we take a small break for the preparation of the eyes. We'll be back in about uh, 10 minutes. And we continue with the quarterfinals of 500 meters for ladies. And quarterfinals of 500 meters for men. So in 10 minutes, let's say about 15, 10, we'll be back. Spelers van Nederlandse Loterij, bedankt voor de ruim 168 miljoen die jullie bij elkaar hebben gespeeld. Voor sport en beweging, voor Nederland. 168 miljoen. Spelers, bedankt. Niels en Eve gaan voor een lagere energierekening. En dat begint met isoleren. Glaswol, kitten, tochtstrips, uh, andere andersom. En dicht. Oh, ja, bam. Isolatie, je krijgt het er warm van. Deurdicht? Mijn huis duurzaam maken? Ik kan het. Gamma. Tragitol. Snelle pijnstiller bij beginnende keelpijn. Het stilt snel de pijn en doodt bacteriën en virussen die keelpijn veroorzaken. In het oranje paarse doosje.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for this uh, second part of the afternoon International Invitation Cup short track program with the 500 meters. Time to really, really pull on, uh, put on the afterburners and really go for the ultimate sprint. And we are going to start with uh, the semi final, well, the quarterfinals. Let's uh, be a, a little bit uh, not too hasty. Uh, quarterfinals for the 500 meters for women A division. And Justin, this is going to be quite something because the level of the skaters is high. A lot of skaters are trying to um, improve on what they've done today so far. There's a lot to be gained here. Yes, and after this 1500 meters, it's uh, immediately 500 meters of full pull from out of the start. In this first race, Yara van Kerkhoff, Martina Valcepina. And Sophie Bachon, Sandra Velzeboer, who's just come off the ice, and Michelle Velzeboer. This is going to be an interesting one, although it's Valcepina who leads early in this race. And there's not a lot of time to make this up. There's a huge gap opening up behind the Italian as there's a big, big move there from Bachon. And uh, Sandra Velzeboer is moving up quickly now to Jaren van Kerkhoff. Yeah. Let's see what she can do. Strong skater on the 500 meter, uh, Xandra Velsenboer. As is Yara van Kerkhoff, who obviously has an Olympic medal in the discipline. First three, three will qualify. And this means that they can now just don't take too much, too, too many risks. But in the end, it, uh, it all pays off. A very strong start it's, by Valcibina. It's Val really Chibina. important to, uh, to have a good uh, finish uh, place because it's it will make your uh, starting position for the next race. So if you finish higher in the, in the race, your starting position will be better in the next race, which is really important in the 500 meters. As you can see, mostly the skaters on the position uh, one and two, uh, starting position one and two are getting uh, first in the corner. Well, Chepina van Kerkhoff, Velzerboer. Uh, in this case, uh, number 39, Sandra Velzerboer and Michelle Velzerboer, just uh, a little bit uh, too late. She couldn't really contend with the pace mid-race. And just at the end, she uh, she gets back there. There she is. But very interesting. Great start by Valcepina, by the way. Yeah, so quickly from uh, position two, out started uh, Jara van Kerkhoff, who could uh, follow. Uh, well, in the beginning, a few meters uh, behind, but then could close the gap. And uh, after a difficult start for Xandra Velzeboer, she had to pass the Canadian uh, Bachon, who could climb up to the third position with. Uh, Means a qualification for the semi-final. Still in the race to uh, go to the A-final. Yes, uh, the camera has been following Ariana Fontana, and for good reason, because if anybody knows how to skate the 500 meters, it's the Italian. It's, it's her. Olympic champion. Fought uh, all the way to the finish line three years ago with Ming, Ming Yong Choi. Fantastic race. Fontana in blue. <coughs> Alongside her, Rihanna de Vries, uh, Petra Yasapati, on the floor, Otter. Not part of the national selection, but has been quick today. It's been uh, making some uh, inroads. Just a party in the front, quick start, but then uh, immediately Fontana is uh, closing the gap. It's going to be interesting because although we've seen Fontana be very quick today, you haven't seen her making many, many moves. And if she tries something, it's usually on the outside. Not today, not on this 500 meters. Nice move. Great inside passing by uh, by Fontana. Yeah, correct, uh, Nelson. Uh, not many passes. Uh, by uh, by Fontana, but if uh, if it's not necessary, you don't have to do it. Yeah, in fourth, it's a little bit of a battle for Rihanna de Vries, although she goes on the outside into third position. She makes it. She gets there in the end, passing Jasa Pati, or no, is it uh, Konya. the other uh, Konya? Konya. Yeah. yeah, Jasa Pati in second. Second. Fontana in first, but uh, interesting, interesting 500 meter here from uh, Ariana Fontana. 44. 1. 43. <laughs> 0.447. Yeah, yeah the, the initial times we get are um, interesting. Although it's time to head towards the third of the three quarterfinals. With Susanne Schulting, Aurélie Monvoisin, Georgie Dalrymple, uh, Ariana Siegel, and Aurélie Levec. And let's say Dalrymple needs a good race here. Yeah, the relay of Dalrymple wasn't uh, <laughs> quite good. Well, the relay Maybe itself was really good, although uh, there was a mistake. A little bit of uh, a moment, mo momentary lapse of um, concentration, thinking that there was another change coming, another relay coming, but no. And uh, the team got disqualified because of it. Uh, Susanne Schulting, she just won the 1500 meters, what is it, 20 minutes ago? 
if that. But she looks so incredibly strong. I think she's aiming for uh, all the wins on the uh, on all the distances this weekend. Hey, it's better to have good goals. Uh, for the number 37 there, Susanne Schulting in the number one position. For five skaters, because the French woman was out of sight, Aurélie Levesque. It's a really good start by Dalrymple. Yeah. Going to the second place, just following Schulting now. It's the only thing she has to do now, try to keep up with Schulting. Well, nobody is keeping up with Schulting <laughs> today. Look at the power, look at the might that she puts on the ice. It's five, six lengths compared to Dalrymple. Dalrymple will be challenged. Challenged by, by Levesque. Uh, Monvoisin, Inc. That's correct. She tries it on the outside, Monvoisin. But Dalrymple just a little bit wide, opens the door, Monvoisin up to second. But Schulting, imperious form, incredible. Keep in mind the first three are qualifying for the semi-final, so Dalrymple still in position. Miles ahead, miles ahead, Nelson. And let's wait for the official time, because this might be incredibly quick. Incredibly quick, and the little nod of the head, she knows, she knows she's in good, in good shape. Very strong, 42-4 time uh, for Susanne Schulting. Incredible. Incredible day for her so far. And the little nod of the head. The knowledge that the pace is there. And she knows she's strong. Yeah, she got that uh, last week from a, a long track training race where she betted her 1500 meter uh, record, her personal best. Um, definitely uh, early on in the season and I believe that if she goes for two disciplines she's able to qualify in two disciplines that's for sure the big question for her and her coach is what do I do to be at my best in the races that count the most in Beijing yeah yeah and is it smart to uh, to do two disciplines in uh, one uh, Olympics but because she already has an Olympic title this she takes the pressure yeah. a little bit off yeah, and go for that. real yeah. glory I believe one of the other short trackers uh, back in the days, uh, Harald Silovs, yes. tried uh, as well. Although Silovs was never of this quality, let's mm. be very fair. Silovs, yeah. he had m amazing years, but uh, they were never during the Olympics. Although, having said that, he does have an Olympic uh, diploma, top six, uh, Silovs. So, uh, definitely nothing to scoff at for Silovs. But what we're seeing here from uh, Schulting is another step up from what we saw earlier. Time for the men. Quarterfinals, four races in total uh, with a bunch of big names. Incredibly uh, so, a fantastic field here. Xiaoling Yu in uh, this first race. Sebastian Lepap there as well. Jens van het Wout, the only Dutchman there in the middle of the field. And he has a good start, although it's Liu who leads. That's not so strange. Now he has to hang on, stay with them. Can he stay with them? That's the big question. The first two qualify automatically. And then the two best. Super fast start by Liu. But Jens van Wout's keeping up quite good. You can see the big gap between him and the rest of the field. Now Le Pap's taking over. The German. Le one last minute move. But Le Pap needs to try and catch uh, van, Look at Wout. van Wout. He's closing the gap. He's closing the gap to Liu. And that gives him a lot of confidence. Had a mega start, a mega opening phase here. Coming through the final corner. It's going to be Liu, obviously. But Van Wout, very, very impressive. Great start by uh, by Van Wout. Really good that he could uh, outstart uh, the German Lutke and could follow uh, easily Liu. Yeah, this will give him uh, confidence for the next racing. A definite. And he's through to the semi-finals normally, directly. Uh, normally, Melle Van Wout is more the specialist on uh, his brother. He's coming on the ice now, specialist on the 500 meter. But uh, this guy, Jens Van Wout, is getting still better young, and better. Better and better. He, 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 if he can make it to the Olympics, it would be nice. But okay, he, he's thinking. I think he's more aiming on uh, Milan. Yeah, definitely. But if you can, you will. <laughs> right. That's the first of four races here. The next one includes uh, Melle uh, van het Wout, Isaac de Laat, and Hessel van Berkham, as well as Andrea Cassinelli and Quintin Verkop, who's already had a uh, a penalty today. And a, a major incident, a big crash. 1500s. But really good time, just set by uh, Jens van Wout. Yeah, 
Let's see how uh, it's a glad uh, he's recovered from the 1500 meter. Yeah, oh, he's quite uh, he, um, slightly built. I wonder how much lactic acid actually uh, takes hold of him. The main question is will he be bold at the start? Or will he be pushed out to the back of the pack? He looked incredible in the he relay. He can see the different positions from Wout during the crossover start. And a false start. But the other skaters do uh, like the traditional start. What is the advantage uh, of it one compared to the other? It just depends. It's, it's, it depends on the person. What do you feel good with to start? You, you have to practice your start. and uh, There's not really a rule how to start. Whatever works for you. Yeah. But it is important in this 500 meter. Here we see the lineup again. Takes a little bit longer. Melvin about, and we're there. So he turns his hip into the corner, as it were. Uh, Melle van Wout, but he has the best start of them all. So he leads with Isaac de Laat behind him in uh, with the yellow goggles, easy to see. We see Ferre Koch there in third. Then uh, the Italian, uh, Cassinelli. And a little bit behind Hessel van Berkham. Now it starts to get interesting because van Wout is struggling to stay in front of the rest of the pack. Let's see if Isaac de Laat can uh, move on up or can uh, have Ferre Koch behind him. Yeah, good blocking by Isaac de Laat. Now let's see, heading into the last corner. Yeah. Oh, it's crowded. It's crowded, but they have it under control. The two Dutchmen finish first and second with third in uh, this race for the Frenchman. If I saw that correctly, I think so. But uh, interesting race. Melle van Wout and Isaac de Laat seem to have a good understanding of what they needed to do in this one. Yeah, they just need to qualify in this uh, quarterfinal. It's uh, the only thing to do and uh, yeah, good start. Quite easy, the speed came for uh, Melle van Wout. Looks like uh, easy, they really have to work for it. But and he's still very young as well. Huh? It's still his thing. It's good, he's a good uh, 500 meter skater, van Wout. But he started to look a little bit vulnerable in the final lap. Yeah. As we get ready with uh, the next group with Jasper Brunsman, 84. We've uh, seen him get ready. Sven Roos is here as well as is uh, Reinis Berzins, who had a penalty earlier today. Yeah, yeah in the semi-final of the 1500. That was the reason why uh, Jens van Wout uh, could come up to the final, uh, A final, and even uh, Kai Huisman with an advancement. But, uh, now let's see what he can do uh, can do now. And uh, as well, Jasper Brunsman, which is a former really good 500 meter skater, had a really bad knee uh, injury, but recovering now and uh, still not on 100% level. Still looking for uh, for the last uh, bit, but this is what he can do, race on a 500 meter. And the ideal tournament for him then, to get a little bit of confidence in the knee back, make the next step, maybe not one of the obvious names uh, to look forward to, to placement for Beijing, but it's so important that the entire group, the entire generation keeps moving forward. As we are ready for this third of the quarter finals with John Henry Kruger, the Hungarian completely on the right here. Pietro Sigel in the middle. Sven Roos totally to the left. It's Kruger from first place, starting position to the first place, and then uh, Jasper Brunsman can follow him. Well, he small made gap, but now closing the gap. Had a little bit of instability moving into the corner, the first corner there for Brunsman. Now he's on top speed, looking good with the Italian Sigel behind him. When and is the move coming inside, from Roos? Yeah. There is the move from Roos. It's a two oh, touch. Oh, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> this is interesting. And Sigel. Going into the last lap, Sigel is oh. all over the place. But it was Kruger who was uh, part of the acrobatic team in this 500 meter. The two Dutchmen had nothing to do with it. Oy. And in the end, it is Roos who uh, ekes out second, I think, over Brunsman. But there may be an advancement for Pietro Sigel. What a race. It started oh. off with the, the move of uh, Kruger. That he, uh, yeah, he missed the outcome of the of the corner, which made him stand up straight. And then uh, yeah, well, it all started uh, a bumping. Loss of, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A loss of tempo, and yeah. suddenly they're all bunched up together. 
Kruger, Roos, Brunsman. Biggest victim, Sigel, because he was just moving up uh, to position uh, position two. Now, does he have a case for an advancement? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. It was uh, unlucky, but not intentional what Kruger did. <laughs> We're looking at, uh, at the ref, because he's uh, now discussing... Uh, Very interesting. That's this. Was an advancement for uh, yep. Pietro Sigel. So no penalty, but just an advancement. And that seems to be the right choice because uh, we cannot say John Henry Kruger chose to do this. It just happened. Yep. And Sigel was an innocent bystander in, in that. And this choice uh, disadvantages no one no negative impact on anyone. So, final quarterfinals. Shaolin Sander Liu, Shinky Knecht, Dylan Hogewerf, Teun Boer and Felice Rossell. It's a fun one. Let's see what Dylan Hogewerf really can do, because he's the 500 meter specialist here uh, normally in the Netherlands and uh, oh, didn't show off uh, yet. Maybe this will be his, his moment uh, to show what he can do, because even he he is the current Dutch champion, but still need to prove himself uh, to Jeroen Otto, to the coach. My big question is, and that's probably his big question, is how good is Schenke Knecht today? He has a lot of, uh, he's had a lot of moments that he looks really good. But it hasn't really come together today, whether or not there's a, a bell not ringing or something else. Uh, the relay uh, changeover not happening well enough, nicely timed. He'll want to end the day on a high, that's for sure. Schinke Knecht, second from the right. <coughs> Shaolin Sander Liu on the inside was uh, very quick in qualifying. Eh? Yeah, really quick. St really strong skater on every distance all round. The guy uh, you have to watch, or one of the guys you have to watch the whole season. I'm also interested to see what Tempur can do. Although it will be... Uh, quite difficult for him <laughs> in this field to get to the best the three straight into uh, semi-finals but not it's impossible it's good for him to uh, to stand there at least it's uh, it says that he uh, qualified on the first day really well well <coughs> we're off and let's see what happens then with Liu who leads Liu who takes the lead not the best start uh, for Shinki Knecht it seems and that means that Dylan Hogewerf is now in second you could see that Dylan was uh, better at the start and uh, Shinkin could overtake easily in the corner. Now Liu is taking up the speed and you can see a little gap between Shinkin Knecht and uh, Dylan Hogewerf. Let's see, now he's closing the gap. Now you have to watch Shinkin because you know in his last lap he can do anything. Dylan is watching him. Shinkin is going for the outside. Liu is a little bit slowing down. Ah. The telescopic leg will come Whoa. again, really. Second, but still, the Hungarian is just a little bit more comfortable mid race. Yeah. He, uh, Knecht, is relying a lot on his finish. It's and he doesn't have the power to manhandle the rest of the race, it seems. But you see that Knecht is losing uh, too much at the start, the first laps, to, uh, to come to his top speed. But when he is at his top speed, he can do anything. But it's always a little bit late in this race. Is he, if he can close the gap earlier, be in the in the back of the, the skaters in front, then he has more chance to do anything. Well, this is an interesting one and sub 41 seconds for Liu. Hogewerf and Knecht is all very, very close. Eh? This is proper I think fast. Four, 40 wasn't skated yesterday, so this is uh, fast and hopefully they will get faster in the final as well see more of these times yeah definitely uh, there are a bunch of races still to come uh, including two semi-finals uh, for oh, the semi-finals for uh, the 500 meters then the ranking finals and then after another uh, uh, ice uh, preparation break we'll have the 500 meter finals but before that it's time to go on an, uh, an ice preparation break before we head towards the semi-finals this was it for the quartfinale het finale zit erop, in ieder geval Nederlanders uh, grotendeels ongeschonden door. En na de ijspreparatie zijn we weer terug.
Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, International Invitation Cup Day 2 of the competition and uh, we're heading towards, well, uh, what could be the highlight of this afternoon, 500 meter finals, but it's not uh, that time just yet, it's time for semi-finals, semi-finals and ranking finals uh, for this 500 meter, it's going to be interesting to see if, for instance, Susanna Schulting is keeps up uh, her level of dominance, because uh, so far, so good for Schulting early in the season, obviously. And still in the first semi-final, uh, Suzanne is there, but no really big, big competition because I think the big competition will come from Fontana. Well, don't uh, don't underestimate Xandra Velsboer, but... Uh, yeah, and she has a point to prove, obviously. Uh, everybody's talking within the Dutch uh, uh, short track scene about Susanna Schulting, but there's so much happening behind uh, the marquee name, uh, the, the big names that everybody expects to be at the front. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens in these two semi-finals, which means um, that the best two uh, best advance, two yeah, yeah, advance to the final. Yeah. For both of the races, first two races of the women and then uh, the two races of the men, semi-finals. Exciting, uh, Nelson, this, uh, this racing. High level uh, of racing, uh, especially. Yeah, I think we're quite spoiled today in terms of the level and the entertainment value and just all the things that make short track uh, skating so interesting. It's all there, every uh, little wrinkle and nothing goes to plan completely. Uh, unless you're Susanna Schulting today, although even in the relay it was, uh, wasn't all uh, sunshine for her. Uh, nothing to do with her, but you can still lose. She looks incredibly, incredibly strong. But in this first semi-final we see uh, Petra Jessapati as well, Jara van Kerkhoff, uh, Sandra Velzeboer and Rianne de Vries. Although we're going to start with ranking finals. So wow. we don't think so because on the ice we see uh <laughs> Schulting. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, wait and see uh, today. Uh, we have a bunch of ranking finals uh, later on anyway. Um, a five in total. Very short races, obviously. And uh, 500 meters, the ultimate sprint. And even though it's an ultimate sprint, you can uh, still uh, throw it all away by uh, pushing too hard in the beginning. You'll have to be clever about it. Right, Susanne Schulting on the right hand side of our screen. Petra Jessapati, the Hungarian in uh, second position. Van Kerkhoff, Pelzerboer and De Vries. Four Dutch women. A lot of orange on ice here. <laughs> no, the one who's <laughs> staying at the line is Schulting. Well, they're all primed now. But every race you could see Susanna's face, always concentrated, focused. Every race she wants to win. It's a mentality uh, a top athlete needs to have. Yeah, and also it's not just wanting to win, but believing you should win. It's, it sounds arrogant, but that's not the case. <coughs> We're off for this first semi-final. So on the right hand side it's Schulting who takes the lead. Good start for her. Jasapati manages to hang on to second. And there's the whole phalanx of Dutch woman behind her. But Schulting looking very, very strong. Who comes up to third there? Yeah, it's Xander Velsboer who moves up to the third position, passing Jara van Kerkhoff and now looking for the gap to uh, pass uh, Jasapati because she needs to position two to uh, go through to, this, to the final of A. Yeah, and there Schulting is still uh, very much in the lead. There's a little bit of pushing and turning and will she make the corner or not? For Kerkhoff is the one who actually profits from that and he's in, she's in second at the moment. In third it's Velzeboer and then in fourth it's now Rianne de Vries. There's the victory for Schulting, easy for her. But there was a lot of pushing and shoving and pulling uh, between Jasapati and uh, Velzeboer. Sandra Velzeboer, yeah. and then the experience of Yara van Kerkhoff comes through. Eh? And this is short track as well, sometimes you need this little bit of luck uh, in racing uh, to continue to an uh, A final. Let's see what will happen uh, between uh, Xandra Velsboer and Jasapati. The referees are now coming to the side to uh, watch the video. It was replay. not one uh, bit of contact, mm -hmm. it was uh, considerable contact. Trying to pick up what they're saying. Half a second 
difference between Schoting and the rest of the field. Still deliberations there. Well, no mention of any uh, advances or penalties, so we'll leave that for that. For later, Ariana Fontana, Aurélie Monvoisin, Martina Valcipina, Georgie Dalrymple and Michelle Velzeboer. Oh, and there, there's going to be a restart. It was uh, Monvoisin who uh, lost her footing. Taking Dalrymple with her, but it went, uh, well, definitely far off top speed, so I think. Ladies and gentlemen, in the last race, there was a penalty for skater number 20, penalty S1. So in the straight, it's maintained from outside to inside, and they're causing contact. And there is an advance for the relay final for skater number 39, Sandra Felsenburg. Interesting, it's uh, the penalty in the last race for uh, Petra Yazapati. And uh, the advancement for uh, Felsenburg, so it means that uh, Yazapati was uh, changing uh, her lane. Her lane. And considerable contact there. It means that three Dutch women uh, went through to the A final already. As we see here, the first uh, start was blown off by the fall in the first corner. You could see that uh, Valcipina had a really good start in position three. Cause immediately cause she could follow uh, Fontana. Let's look at if uh, she can do it again, outstart uh, the French girl. Yeah, and this Valcipina start ensured that Montvoisin was in trouble. Yeah. And she was the one who hit the ice. <laughs> We're off again, and this time who has the better start? Again, the two Italian women yeah. up front in the first two positions. Dalrymple will have to fight. A fight hard to get uh, in amongst them. Montvoisin in third, Dalrymple in fourth, and then Velzeboer in fifth. But ahead it is Ariana Fontana, the reigning Olympic champion, with Aurélie Montvoisin now making the move. Oof, yeah, good Great move. move. Oh, Spinas puts out. Let's see what would will affect the rest of the race. Montvoisin following yeah. Fontana, is building uh, speed now. Yeah, and she's gonna try. Uh, it was Dalrymple who lost speed in that incident. I think Dalrymple was caught up with uh, their uh, Valcepina, and Monforsa doesn't need to do anything drastic here to move into the A final. And uh, a little bit of deception there for Dalrymple, who, without uh, it seemed any fault of her own, was caught up in that incident. interesting race again yeah no replay uh, here unfortunately but was uh, happening uh, well it was the move from uh, Montvoisin uh, yeah uh, that sure. put uh, Valcipina uh, it hung her out to dry and then she encountered a speeding um, a Dalrymple so very very interesting there Dalrymple in third but she looked a little bit dejected there uh, definitely trying to get uh, anything better and there's again some uh, deliberations uh, with uh, the referees Yet again, Gjald Bisma, who is uh, checking uh, the VAR, the video replay. Make some notes out of it, and now... Let's listen to uh, what he has uh, to say. In the meanwhile, the, the guys uh, of the first semi-final are uh, lining up. With we uh, see now on screen uh, Van Wout and uh, one of the brothers, Liu. Attention, ladies and gentlemen, this last race had a penalty for skater number 15, Aurélie Montvoisin. Penalty S2 in the straight, linking from inside to outside and thereby crossing contact. And there is also an advance for skater 31, Martina Valcepina, advance to the A-final. Just mentioned, uh, Nelson, a uh, penalty for uh, Aurélie Montvoisin, skater who uh, finished second in this race, but uh, in the straight. She uh, changed lanes from outside to inside and uh, cast the contact with Valcipina and uh, she gained an advance. So, six skaters in the, in the A, A final. final. Well, well uh, that's a traffic jam if there ever was one. Now it's time for the first semi final for the men in this A division 500 meters, including Xiao Yang Yu. He managed to skate a 40.8 in uh, his quarter final, so he was the absolute fastest in uh, his, uh, his race there, and, and a great start. Yeah, you can see now again fast, and Melle van Wout, he can follow up, and his brother Jens is uh, in third position. Again, Shinky with a slow start, but can he manage to keep up? I don't think so. 
It's going super fast now. Hogewerf in the fourth position, and maybe closing the gap. It's telling that uh, Knecht cannot get closer and closer. Liu is in the lead. Liu in the lead. What is happening behind it? Because the first two, they progress to the final. One of them is going to be the Hungarian. And we see that number 92, so that's van Melle van der Dwout, is included in that A final. And a huge roar from him because this is a big deal. This yeah, is he a needs big this. deal. This is his distance, and uh, he knows that if he can take this, uh, it, it will uh, give him uh, a lot of confidence and a good position uh, within the selection of the World Cups. And, uh, Ex he shows off to, uh, to Jeroen, uh, after his coach. Yeah. Exactly that, because uh, he has Dylan Hogewerf, he has Shinky Knecht in the same field, and Knecht a little bit disappointing here. Maybe you could tell here that uh, the, the really competitors for uh, Van Bout were uh, not was not Liu, but the other Dutch skaters, like more a race in a race. And if we look at these times, 40.7, it's quite fast uh, now, that here in Heerenveen. That's proper fast. That's uh, uh, really good. We're at sea level. It's quite normal now to skate in the 40. But uh, very impressively done by uh, Melle van Bout. It's good to see that they uh, that can is take a, a step up in the level. That's a personal best. He's really skating a personal best now. Yeah, yeah wow. because his personal best from two years ago in the World Cup in Dresden uh, was a 40.8. So it's the if the 40.7 stands, that is a personal best for Melle van Bout. Incredibly well done as we head uh, straight into the second semi-final because uh, uh, the 500 meters waits for no one and uh, that includes the field of men in the second semi-final final. Shaolin Sander Liu, John Henry Kruger, Sven Roos, Itzak De Laat and Pietro Sigel those are the men that are going to try to reach uh, the final, the A final here It's a tough race because uh, two Hungarians both on position one and two Let's see what uh, Sven Roos and uh, Itzak de Laat can do uh, to them. <laughs> and uh, as well, uh, Pietro Sigel. He, uh, he outfinished uh, in the 1500 meter today. Some of the other skaters unexpected in the, in the last lap. So, uh well, it's going to be very, very interesting. The Liu brothers look in imperious form, though the margin just now with Melle van Dwout was not imperious. Looked very comfortable. <laughs> now the second semi-final, which has uh, Shaolin Sander Liu, John Henry Kruger, and there's a little bit, uh, a little bit of pushing and shoving, and Kruger immediately goes for, uh, let's say, the pit stop. This was a good start by Sven Roos, because he uh, <laughs> made, made Kruger, uh, made it difficult for him. Immediately taking care of uh, equipment. Uh, the, the equipment here. Loosing up the bolts, as you can see here, get the tension uh, off, checking the blades. And especially on the 500 meter, this needs to be uh, spot on your uh, equipment. Definitely so. Even uh, Liu is just coming to check, even though he... Uh, wasn't involved in this. No, but he was pushed out wide yeah. because uh, Sven Roos was there and he was there with a great start and he, well, manhandled himself uh, between the two Hungarians. Yeah, just uh, waiting for um, Hen uh, John Henry Kruger's skates to uh, get the necessary attention after this uh, start. Difficult for the skaters on the ice now. Uh, all the adrenaline and a little bit of effort at the start already there. Now you have to calm down, try not to cool down too much. No, it's always hard to uh, to wait for this. Look, if there's a false start, it's easy to start again then uh, in a few seconds. But now just again a minute on the ice and maybe a minute and a half to keep yourself easy calm and not get as ready easy. for the get ready for the next start not as easy to do as it sounds 
Let's see what uh, Roos can do again. Can he manage to get into the Hungarians again? Great Roos start. Quickly. Great start again, but he can't get in amongst them. And now he's going for it. He's going for it. Long strokes and the door closed. And now he's lost a little bit of momentum there. Still now the two Hungarians in the front and the Roos loses out. He's lost momentum and he cannot regain it. Now see if uh, Itak Dalat can close the gap, but you can see the Hungarians are already on full speed, so it's really hard to close the gap. And even now in the last lap, do something, but he needs to be at first two to qualify. He can maybe can outside. try. Outside, outside inside, he's Ooh. going for oh. He tried on the inside, didn't make it in the end. So it is a, uh, well, rather quick race in the end, but a uh, tough race as well. Yeah, you see, Itzak loses his race in the, in the, in the momentum of Sven, uh, Sven Roos. He's trying to go inside and then he's uh, behind Sven, who's losing uh, speed. Needs to pass him and then uh, the both Hungarians are already gone. So it's quite strong performance by Itzak that he could manage to close the gap. But that's not enough to come to the A final now. No. As you can see that Liu... 41.0 we see here so but taken in account that we had two starts and a little bit of a delay that's definitely not bad uh, but it just puts into perspective what we've seen from Melle van het Wout yeah. so a few of the uh, let's say big names the big Dutch names do not advance to the A final here interesting so if we look to the uh, A final now, if I'm correct, we have uh, Xiaowang Liu and Melle van der Wout from the first race qualifying and in the second race Shaolin Liu and uh, John Henry Kruger. So Melle van der Wout needs to uh, do something special. Do something special. Yeah. Right, time to look at uh, the ranking finals, five races in total. with uh, the first race for Tiffany Uo, Marchand, uh, Petra Vankova, and Gina Jacobs there. Interesting races, interesting races just now. And enough to talk about later. We see some, uh, some repairs being made to the surface. It's probably from the first start. Well, Marchand, Vankova and Jacobs in this first ranking race. Let's see what uh, what this means. A false start. Seems like the gunfire wasn't really. Uh, well, we haven't. <laughs> we had uh, a moment that we didn't have a, uh, a bell, so now we didn't have the shot. So to get into these ranking finals, uh, basically you must have struggled during qualifying, in the heat. Yeah, it means you didn't uh, qualify for the quarterfinals. And again, it seems like the. Uh, Starting gun. Won't work. <laughs> Do they need to get the spare one now? It's just something new uh, every day. <laughs> <laughs> you, <l> you <laughs> see something new every day. Yeah. A little bit of commotion amongst the referees. Some issues here. And this is what Short is about as well. Y you need to, to prepare for the unexpected. This is unexpected. This is unexpected and now you need to <coughs> be relaxed and uh, make sure you're ready to race when they uh, ask you to race. Still a lot of uh, work being done. 
far end from our position. A lot of discussions going on. At least the skaters can laugh about it, which is uh, half the battle, because that way you can deal with it. Keeping warm. Yeah, that's uh, the only thing you can do now. <coughs> Gives a little bit time to, uh, it's a little bit closer, uh, closer to the races upcoming now. Not a lot of time, <laughs> as the whistle blows. That's a good sign always. Well, well three, see, uh, yeah. three times a charm. Interested to see um, the battle between uh, Daan Breusma, uh, Friso Emons and Kai Huisman. Let's see what they do. If they're going to go for a time. Yeah, maybe a fast race. Here we go. First. Oh. <laughs> and the well, it works twice now. This is difficult. This is very difficult for these women. What can you do? How can you perform at your best now? Here again, the different uh, starting positions. Pankova, <coughs> the crossover start. And finally, we're away, uh, Nelson. Finally, yeah. and Marchand takes the lead. He works for steps to get a little bit more momentum into the second corner with uh, Vankova and uh, Gina Jacobs in, in hot pursuit. But for now, it's that very uh, smallish uh, built uh, French Marchand, French woman, lightly built, especially compared to the power woman that is Vankova. Mm -hmm. You look at her. She's closing up the gap now. Let's see if she can uh, do something in this last lap. Well, Trying to go from outside to inside. She has the power. She's going to go on the outside again. So outside, outside. Here on the inside, no final push. And you need to be really strong if you want to do outside, outside in, uh, in a 500 meter. But she tried it. So that's the first of the ranking finals done and dusted. Upcoming is women's 500 meter second ranking final with Sara Luca Bakshai, Miaochi, Silechi Nemet, and Masito. Masito is the correct pronunciation, if I'm correct. Otherwise, I'm very wrong. Some extra attention to uh, the track. Time for the second ranking final. An extra race. After a difficult uh, Friday, mostly. <coughs> there we go. Off in one go. And it's the Canadian who takes the lead. Miyaki. And she tries to make hay two lengths but we see that Bashai and Silechi Nemet are closing her down can and they actually she overtake, can overtake. Yes. <laughs> yes yes there we go the answer is given immediately but maybe a counter by the Canadian Ooh, nicely oh nicely done proper nicely racing done. proper racing That's this is what we want to see in the 500 meter and still in the lead the Canadian as the bell rings now it's interesting because the speed is getting down which can do, who can do something now? Well, oh, uh, again, oh. the Canadian overtaken. And so there is the victory for uh, Sarah Luca Pashkai. 
she wins ahead of, I think, the Italian. Let's keep though. Let's see if that's correct. It seems to be the case. It was uh, evident that the Canadian was starting to lose out in terms of pace, but tried to hang on. Counted once, and she looks to have held on to second. Unofficial, of course. It was a small gap uh, going uh, into the last corner, so Baksky uh, tried it. Let's see if it's uh, a legal uh, overtake. Now looking at the ref, who is uh, just checking on the VAR video replay. As we prepare for the battle, uh, Breusma, Emons and Huisman. This is going to be very interesting, especially because we don't know what the actual uh, tactic will be. Yeah, the gap was <laughs> too small to jump into for uh, Baxkai, so she uh, received the penalty from the referees after uh, looking uh, to the VAR, the video replay. The only thing she loses out on is a little bit of uh, points for her country. Yeah. Right. Well, let's see, maybe this is a little bit a race into, into a race because you want to win from your teammates. And impress the coach. Yeah. But what to expect from a guy like Breusma here? I think Breusma needs to show a good pace of speed just because of the relay, <coughs> which is his uh, I think biggest aim for this year to be in the relay team of the Olympics. Easy uh, to the front now and building speed. Let's see. Yep. Yesterday, a penalty for Kai Huisman. This is why he's here. Let's see what Friso Emons can do. Couldn't break the 42 second uh, mark. Huisman going for it. Whoa. Whoa. And there goes Emons. This is a very interesting race. They're not uh, doing it for the lap times. This is a battle royal between uh, three of the Dutch selection. Huisman's coming back. He's looking for us. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. yeah, he can do it to second. And there it's uh, Kai, is it Kai Huisman who yep. wins it in the end? It is Huisman on the second, I believe. Yeah. And Amon's third. Not a super fast race, but exciting nonetheless. Yep. As we uh, head into the next of the uh, ranking finals with Samuel Green, uh, Jerome Courtemange, Tommaso Dotti and uh, Tristan Navarro, who we haven't seen that much of while the referees are still uh, discussing. Yeah, I think they're discussing about the move of Kai Huisman uh, inside passing uh, Daan Briosma. Was it the legal pass? Kind of the same situation as the, the race before with uh, Sarah Luka Bakskai, the Hungarian. Let's see uh, what they think about it. And in case you're hearing a lot of uh, ruckus and noise behind us, there's uh, currently a Zamboni uh, starting to do his work on the 400 meter long track. In case it's uh, being picked up by our microphones, this is what you're hearing. There is a penalty. Yes, that's correct. Penalty uh, for Kai Huisman in the straight. So there wasn't enough space to it to pass. Although, good chance to take and uh, you need to race as well. Yeah, you have to try it. There's nothing to lose here, except uh, maybe a finger. In the end, they kept it uh, nice and clean, although the referee wasn't totally impressed. Uh, uh, they tried. Right, Samuel <coughs> Green, uh, Jerome Courtemange, uh, Tommaso Dotti and uh, Tessa Navarro. Who we haven't seen much of, yeah. Navarro. Not even in the in one of the relay teams. Interesting. Oh, tries it, Navarro. Tries it with uh, Tommaso Dotti, but didn't work. So leading still, it's the two Canadians, Green and Courtemange. Courtemange in second makes the move. Taking over. Nice clean move. Proper short track. Oh, over, over the front there for Green. Green now passed by the Italian and possibly by the Frenchman. Yes, he is. Hey, there we go. The last lap. 
Let's see what uh, Tomas Dotti can do. Got Navarro ten. trying to pass inside by Dotti, second place. He's very fresh, oh. Navarro. Hasn't raised much and finishes in second, but it's Jerome Courtemange who takes uh, the victory in this one. Super clean pass by uh, Courtemange inside of, uh, of Sam Green. It's really, uh, this is really proper short track racing. This is how we like to see it. As we get ready for the final uh, of the uh, uh, ranking races with uh, Peter Giassapati, Christophe Schubert, Alexandre Minier, Minier because it's a Canadian, and uh, uh, Luca Spechenhauser, North, North uh, Italian, one would assume with his name. Right, the men are uh, are on the ice. That means we're almost ready for this uh, final uh, final ranking final. And let's be honest, the ice is screaming for a little bit of attention after all these races. We're heading up to the uh, A finals after the ice resurface. So this is the last, uh, the last ranking race. final. So still uh, good racing to come, Nelson. Definitely, uh, definitely, four finals to come in the 500 meters with uh, the big guns. Final ranking, final here. And we're off. Looks like the Canadian had a super start. Moves into second, the Minier passes uh, Schubert. Uh, Yasapati leads. Schubert hangs on. Let's see if he can build now speed. Spechenhauser is hanging on for dear life, but he can't really do anything. Still, it's the Hungarian in the lead. Canadian skater uh, Minier in second. Looks solid in second, but a little bit hip out of the corner, so no pressure on. And, and looks like he can't do any move now. Not a lot of time left, only a few meters, one corner. And so from the start, uh, Peter Yasapati takes it. Well done, Yasapati. Well done. So, yeah, felt a little bit like a formality, these ranking races, but still some good races we, uh, we saw. But highly important to the skaters themselves. Of course. But now we can move up to, uh, to the big final of this day, I believe, uh, Nelson. Yes, definitely. The A final and B final for both the, the women and the men. 500 meters, this is going to be fun. But not immediately. We'll have to wait because it's time for ice preparation and then we are going, uh, go, uh, going to go to, uh, to the A final and B finals uh, in this A division 500 meters. Ja, dames en heren, dit was het heel even voor nu. We hebben een korte ijspreparatie uh, break. Kort maar hoor, en dan zijn we weer terug. Dan gaan we kijken namelijk naar de A en B finale. Schulting er in ieder geval bij vechtend uh, om nog een uh, afstand zegen. Wat is super, super sterk. Na de break zijn we terug en dan gaan we eens uitgebreid vooruitblikken op wat er allemaal nog komt. Vier finales op de 500 meter.
gentlemen, they continue now with the final for 500 meters. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for the final flurry of this uh, fantastic Saturday of short track skating, the 500 meter finals. Uh, B final first, uh, Rianne de Vries and Michel Velzervoer, and I can almost hear you think, where are the rest of the skaters? Well, we've got six skaters in the other 500 meter A final because of two uh, advancements. So, yes, two skaters here. That means that de Vries and Velzervoer might just as well go for an ultra fast time although we've already seen ultra fast times because justin you've been analyzing especially the performance from susanna schulting and that was remarkable yeah, she was uh, i think 500 of a second uh, above her uh, personal record so 42.42 so let's see if she can maybe uh get this record in the in the, the a final the race here uh, after this but it's a really strong performance and it looks so solid, so easy how she does it. And it definitely is. But it's still isn't. special. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely special. So we'll keep an eye on her in the A final. Definitely first, Rianne de Vries and Michel Velzerboer in the B final. And we're off. Very interested to see what we can expect from these two women in this race. At least uh, it is uh, a, a straight fight between two women. It is Rianne de Vries who leads and who's got a substantial lead so far. The question is can Michel Velzerboer keep up? and close this gap. Well, looks like she can. She moves up uh, a little, the gap is closer, closer. Can she do anything in the last two laps? Rianne Maybe set up for a overtake. Rianne de Vries leading the way and uh, hearing uh, the bell first, looking uh, down slightly and still there's the move. There is a, a, a try at least from Michelle Velzerber, but you can't get through. And then it's all about uh, the time, time 44.28. This is uh, what we think is the time. We'll have to wait and see if that is the case. But Rianne de Vries wins this one. It is 43.8, so it's a little bit faster than uh, the original timing gives us. Right. The, it's time for uh, the A final. Dames en heren, tijd voor de A finale hier voor de dames. Susanne Schulting, Yara van Kerkhoff. Sandra Velzeboer, Ariana Fontenado, Olympisch kampioen, Georgie Dalrymple en Martina Valcepina. En zo bijzonder, Susanne Schulting zat een haar boven haar eigen persoonlijk record in de halve finale. Kan ze in de buurt komen bij die tijd. Time to go to the 500 meter. 500 meter final, Susanne Schulting. Uh, ahead of Yara van Kerkhoff and Sandra Velzerboer, but Ariana Fontana will be the main challenger normally, although she's in fourth starting position, will not be easy, especially considering uh, the current form of uh, this Susanne Schulting. Yes. Yeah, and she needs to outstart then uh, Xandra Velzerboer, who uh, really had some good 500 uh, meter races uh, in the semi final, quarter final. Maybe uh, not the best start, but she could easily build speed and uh, gain positions in the in the race because she can really race uh, pretty well. So this is a competitor as well for Ariana Fontana, but uh, yeah, I think uh, Susanne Schulting is a uh, top favorite uh, for this race. Six skaters in this A final. It is going to be crowded. It is going to be hectic. It is going to be very, very interesting to see who gets through the first corner without losing too much ground. And then it's so nice to be in in, uh, in first position here for Susanne Schulting, totally on the inside lane. And she's had some good starts. What is the time she uh, needs to skate here to dip below her own personal record? Yeah, she needs to skate a 42.42 below this, then uh, she will... Uh have a new personal record, so 500 of second in the uh, semi-final above her personal record. So she's able to do it. And we're off, we're off with this first big challenge on the 500 meters. Great start from Fontana. She moves into second, second. position behind oh. Schulting. That is a start worthy of an Olympic champion. Yeah, let's see if Xander Felsbroek can keep up on the third position. Really important as well. And now Susanne Schulting is going to race to put on the engine, full pull. Trying to get away from Fontana, not allowing the Italian to make a move on her. Schulting in the lead, there's half, half a length between them. And it is Fontana who has to keep the door shut because behind her it's Velsenburg trying to make a move on the outside, switching to the there inside and there she is, Velsenburg can't make the move. And Schulting leads imperiously from start to finish. And then we have to wait to see what the time is. It's difficult to gauge, it looked a little bit less quick as it was. Yeah, she yeah. says, I've done a lot of racing. 
I'm a little bit dead tonight. Some She'll misses uh, well. Some misses in the corning corner. She so can uh, go all the way. Not every push was uh, was right, but still she wins this uh, this final, uh, Nelson, and uh, quite solid as well. Let's uh, look at the time: 42.8. Yeah, that's quite uh, a little bit, of, well, a little bit <laughs> much slower than. Uh, dan de semifinal. Ja. Schulting wint deze A-finale toch wel knap. Oké, okay, Nekkie is er een beetje af, zo gaf ze aan. Want ze was uh, toch wel vaak al in actie geweest. 42-8 is flink langzamer dan in de halve finale. Niet in de buurt bij HPR. Maar ze wint wel en wordt hier natuurlijk gewoon tempo hard van. Hè. Goed begin van uh, de short track uh, wedstrijden hier uh, voor Suzanne Schulting. En dat betekent we uh, are able to now focus on the men's uh, B-final with Jens van Wout, Itzak de Laat, Dylan Hogewerf and Pietro Sigel. Very interesting. We are not seeing, um, uh, obviously, in either of the finals, Schenke Knecht. Yeah, that's correct. Um. Which means, to me, he... Oh, no, he hadn't. Uh, he was the he last was, he in, was the in the fifth. He was <laughs> yeah, he, he was in the fifth, so he hasn't yeah, qualified. He hasn't he qualified yeah. yet. In the end, we figured it out. But a uh, difficult day for Shinky Knecht. Yeah. But an interesting day for, say, Melle van het Wout, who's in the A final uh, later on. Yeah, and as well in this B final, again, a race in, in a race for the, for the Dutch skaters. She wants to win from each other in this race. Again, to show off to Jeroen uh, Otter, who is uh, leaning uh, over the boarding here to uh, watch his uh, skaters. On the inside line, Jens van het Wout, Itzak de Laat, next to him. Then in third position, Dylan Hogewerf and Pietro Sigel, the uh, lone Italian in this B final. <coughs> and we're off. Start here, and a good start by Itzak de Laat, but he cannot pass Jens van het Wout. Although on the exit, he's trying to make the move, leaning into the corner, leaning into, uh, let's say, the hip of van het Wout, but still leading this race van het Wout. Nicely done, Itzak de Laat really tried, but he couldn't find a way past. Let's see how uh, Hogewerve uh, can come up with a move now. He's fast, we know. Oh, this is a good move by Itzak de Laat. Can he hold it? Now Hogewerve is coming inside. Smart move by Itzak de Laat. Just the gap in the, in the corner. And it means Jens van het Wout is now shuffled back to fourth. With Pietro Sigel in third. Still Itzak de Laat ahead of Dylan Hogewerve. And he makes it in the end. 41-7 we think. Although it might be a little bit quicker. We'll see the official time in a bit. But Itzak de Laat with a very clever, very nimble move. He's light on his feet. But uh, uh, what will annoy him most of all is that this is in the B final. And this is good racing uh, from uh, Itzak de Laat. He was looking for the gap uh, by Van Wout. And then... Uh, Certainly on the inside there was little room, so dive into the gap. Full results, 41-319. He's uh, about half a tenth of a second ahead of Dylan Hogewerf, who had a good push to the finish, and Siegel ahead of Van het Wout, who started great, but was shuffled back. Time for the A final. Time for the A final here, 500 meters men with Xiao Yang Liu, Melle van het Wout, Shaolin Sander Liu and John Henry Kruger. Three Hungarian skaters and a lone Dutchman. Tijd voor uh, de finale, dames en heren, hier 500 meter. De laatste wedstrijd van deze tweede dag van de International Invitation Cup. Drie Hongaren met de gebroeders Liu en natuurlijk John Henry Kruger. En dan Melle van het Wout, de Nederlander in deze finale verrassend. Time to look ahead. Melle van het Wout against a threesome of Hungarians. This is going to be very, very difficult. He'll need a great start to get amongst them. But this is what he needs, these, these kind of races. Because if he will be in the World Cups, he needs this, uh, this experience and this skating level. So this is really good for him to skate against uh, such a top trio of uh, Hungarian uh, skaters. And let's not forget, 40.7 new personal best in the semi-final yeah. eh, for Melle van Wout was yeah. really strong. Which means he gets the second starting position next to Xiao Yang Yu. It's not over. He can definitely do something from there. I'm wondering if the Hungarians uh, do have a plan. Sometimes uh, the number one uh, starting position uh, starts fast to into the corner when then dropping some speed to uh, to box up uh, the uh, the opponent. In this case, uh, Melle van Wout. So he needs a really good and quick start, which he can do. He's a really 500 meter specialist. If he can outstart this Hungarian. That might be interesting, so he can take the lead and uh, really race for it. 
Shaolin Liu, Mele van het Wout, Shaolin Sander Liu, and John Henry Kruger. And we're off. Final race of this Saturday. Good start for Mele van het Wout. But, well, sliding behind Shaolin Liu into second, but he can't keep with him into this first and second quarter. This is a power explosion by Shaolin Liu. Now he needs to close up the gap to make any chance of passing. I'm coming good out of the corner. Now he is closing up the gap. It's going pretty fast now. Doing really well, Melle van het Wout. Doing really well, but he has to close the door. Where is he? He was looking. Looking as Kruger moves forward. This could help him a little bit. No, still, Melle van het Wout in second. First, it's Shaolong Yu. Is there a possibility to overtake one of the best skaters in so the world? He's going for oh, second place. He can't place. do it, but great, great skate. You can see that uh, Liu was a little bit slowing down to box up uh, Melle van het Wout. But uh, it was solid racing by him, looking behind him to try to uh, defend as well which was uh, successful. I think it's a good race for, uh, for Van Wout to, uh, to be here in the uh, with the three Hungarians. Yeah, and again, under the 41 second mark. Liu, 40.8, Van Wout, 40.9. Fantastic uh, racing and a good experience for Melle Van Wout. Yeah, geweldig schaats hoor, door Melle Van Wout, Xiaoliang Liu. Hij wint, maar Melle van het Wout houdt uh, Shaolin Sander Liu en John Henry Kruger achter zich. Sterker nog, ze hebben niet echt een, uh, een actie kunnen maken. Wat alleen maar betekent dat ze heel, heel goed uh, het geprobeerd hebben, maar dat Melle van het Wout uh, andermaal goed schaatst hier. Let's, let's have a look at the, the times again, maybe. 40.9. 40.9. Voor Melle van het Wout. So again, uh, sub 41 seconds. Here we have them on screen. With thanks to uh, the director, 40.8 for Liu, Van het Wout 40.9 and Kruger 41.0. Very good, this consistent. This is a strong time. This is really good to be uh, to be below the 41 uh, second uh, level. He needs to do it as well in into the season. He skated in the semi-final 40.7, but this is a uh, solid racing yep. uh, from him. Definitely, and he might have been even quicker had uh, Liu not uh, boxed him up at yep. the end. So, solid day, great day of uh, speed skating and uh, short track skating here, International Invitation Cup. Day two here in uh, Tialf comes to a close. Uh, it means that uh, we're done here, but tomorrow we'll be back at 9 a.m. for another day of the International Invitation Cup. We'll sh sign off in Dutch, but uh, for all of our international viewers, thank you for watching. Staying with us all day for some top level short track skating. Ja, dames en heren, daarmee zit het erop. De laatste wedstrijd en wat een finales hebben we gezien. Wat een hoop kwaliteit short track, Justin, hebben we van kunnen genieten. Ja, dit was een uh, prachtige dag en uh, denk ik ook een heel mooi begin van, uh, van dit short track seizoen. En uh, goed om te zien dat er uh, een hoog niveau is, ook bij de toekomstige jeugd. Uh, of tenminste bij de, vooral de, uh, de regionale rijders hier, de RTC rijders. Ja, goed om te zien dat, uh, dat het short track op een hoog niveau staat en uh, dat we volgens mij een hele mooie winter uh, tegemoet gaan. Absoluut. En zo de tweede dag uh, op zijn eind. Maar morgen zijn we natuurlijk op zondag er weer bij. 9 uur s ochtends op schaatsen.nl, de KNSB livestream. Dan zijn we er weer bij met een prachtige dag short track. Tot morgen. Spelers van Nederlandse Loterij, bedankt voor de ruim 168 miljoen die jullie bij elkaar hebben gespeeld. Voor sport en beweging, voor Nederland. 168 miljoen. Spelers, bedankt. Niels en Eve gaan voor een lagere energierekening. En dat begint met isoleren. Glaswol, kitten, tochtstrips, uh, andere andersom. En dicht. Zo, ja, bam. Isolatie, je krijgt er te warm van. Mijn huis duurzaam maken? Ik kan het. Gamma. Tragitol. Snelle pijnstiller bij beginnende keelpijn. Het stilt snel de pijn en doodt bacteriën en virussen die keelpijn veroorzaken. In het oranje paarse doosje.